Hi guys, I want to invite you to join the Patreon where you will get some benefits as well as audiobooks that will not be uploaded on YouTube. Chapter 1 Rain cascaded down from the charcoal sky, drenching the city streets as Hikari Toai trudged through the urban labyrinth. Each step felt heavier than the last, burdened by the weight of monotony and the chill of the downpour. Another day, another downpour, Hikari muttered to himself, his voice barely audible over the drumming of rain on pavement. Yeah, tell me about it, Kenji replied, his tone as dreary as the weather. Feels like we're stuck in a perpetual state of soggy socks and damp spirits. Hikari chuckled, a faint glimmer of amusement cutting through the gloom. You've got that right, Kenji. Sometimes I wonder if this city is just one big rain cloud with skyscrapers. Their banter was interrupted by the distant rumble of thunder, a reminder of nature's power and unpredictability. You know, Hikari, Kenji said, his tone serious now, I've been thinking. Maybe it's time for a change, you know. Shake things up a bit. Hikari raised an eyebrow, intrigued despite himself. What do you have in mind? Kenji shrugged, a wistful smile tugging at the corners of his lips. I don't know, man. Anything's better than this endless grind, right? Maybe it's time we stopped waiting for something to happen and started making things happen ourselves. Hikari nodded thoughtfully, the word striking a chord deep within him. You might be onto something, Kenji. Maybe it's time to stop dreaming and start doing. Their conversation was cut short by the sudden blare of a car horn, followed by the screech of tires on wet pavement. Hikari barely had time to react before he was knocked to the ground, pain shooting through his body as he hit the asphalt. As he lay there, his mind swimming in a haze of confusion and pain, a voice echoed in the darkness, a whisper of hope in the abyss. Do not be afraid, Hikari Toai, the voice murmured, its words like a bomb to his wounded soul. You have been chosen for a purpose far greater than you can imagine. Hikari's eyes fluttered open, searching for the source of the voice. Before him stood a figure bathed in a soft, ethereal light, its features obscured by the shadows. Who are you? Hikari asked, his voice trembling with awe and disbelief. I am the creator, the figure replied, its voice a gentle melody that seemed to resonate with the very essence of the universe. The one who shapes the destinies of all who dwell within the realms of existence. And I have come to offer you a gift, a chance to change the course of your destiny. Hikari's heart pounded in his chest as he struggled to comprehend the magnitude of what was happening. What kind of gift? He asked, his voice barely above a whisper. A wish, the creator replied. A single wish, granted to you and you alone. Use it wisely, Hikari Toai, for the fate of worlds hangs in the balance. Hikari's mind raced with possibilities. A wish? What could he possibly wish for that would make any difference in the grand tapestry of existence? And then, with a sudden clarity that cut through the fog of doubt and uncertainty, he knew. I wish for a life as a god, he declared, his voice ringing out into the void. The creator nodded, a smile playing at the corners of its lips. So be it, it said, its voice filled with a sense of finality. And with that, Hikari felt a surge of energy wash over him, lifting him up and carrying him away into the unknown. When he opened his eyes again, he found himself standing in a world unlike any he had ever seen. The air was thick with possibility, crackling with energy that danced across the sky like sparks. Around him, towering spires of imagination rose towards the heavens, their forms shifting and changing with every passing moment. As Hikari took in his surroundings, a sense of wonder washed over him. But there was no time to dwell on his newfound reality. As he looked around, Hikari noticed a flicker of movement in the distancia group of figures approaching through the mist. With a newfound sense of purpose coursing through his veins, Hikari set off to meet them, eager to discover what adventures awaited him in this strange and wondrous world. Hey who are you guys? Hikari said looking at them, all five of them looked at him before they decide to strike him, as one of them sent out a magical fireball, Hikari moved out of the way. What the hell? Hikari though he was in the Doki Doki world right. Okay what is happening? Then another man tried to attack as hilarious moves he heard the sound of Pollock as the people attack him moved away, 
seeing this Hikari went and jumped back to his room as his mind was moving around trying to figure everything out. As he then looked at the mirror as he saw it he had that of silver spiky hair with that of emerald green eyes, he liked his new looks actually he loved it. Okay but still what is happening? He questioned himself, as he heard a sound. Hikari come down are you okay there? A voice a female said as it seems to coming from the down stars. Yes mom. Hikari said with confidence in his voice as he went dome stairs, one things was clear his life in this world was getting hectic. And first he needs to figure out why magic exists in this world as well after this was the world of Doki Doki right. You now what I should go to a library or something. He said as he looked at his hand it sparked a bit as he paid no mind to it, he just walked out of his house and told his mom he is going somewhere. Chapter 2 Hikari's fingers traced the intricate patterns adorning the cover of the ancient tome, his heart racing with anticipation. The library was bathed in the soft glow of candlelight as he sat immersed in the sea of knowledge that surrounded him. Magic, Hikari whispered to himself, his voice barely audible over the rustle of pages and the flickering of candles. How did it come to be in this world? He flipped through the yellowed pages of the history book, absorbing the words and images that chronicled the origins of magic in the Doki Doki world. Each revelation sent a shiver down his spine, fueling his desire to uncover the truth. According to this, Hikari muttered, his eyes scanning the text intently, magic has always existed in this world, intertwined with the very fabric of reality itself. He paused, his mind racing with questions. How had magic manifested itself in the early days? And what role had it played in shaping the world as it was now? As he continued to read, Hikari's eyes widened with wonder and fascination. He learned of the first practitioners of magic, gifted individuals who had harnessed the power of the arcane to perform feats beyond imagination. He learned of the ancient rituals and ceremonies that had been used to channel magic's raw energy, and of the great scholars and sages who had devoted their lives to its study. But amidst the tales of triumph and discovery, there were also darker chapters in the history of magic a history stained by greed, corruption, and war. Magic has always been a double-edged sword, Hikari mused, his voice tinged with solemnity. A force of creation and destruction, bound together in a delicate balance. As he delved deeper into the annals of history, Hikari's mind buzzed with newfound knowledge. He learned of the great cataclysms that had shaped the course of civilization, and of the secret societies and cults that had sought to manipulate magic for their own nefarious purposes. But amidst the chaos and upheaval, there were also tales of heroism and sacrifice stories of ordinary people who had risen to greatness in the face of adversity, wielding magic as a tool for change and redemption. I may not have been born in this world, Hikari thought, his determination growing with each passing moment, but that doesn't mean I can't make a difference. Hikari's heart sank as he read about the Salem Witch Trials, a dark chapter in human history stained with fear, ignorance, and persecution. He had heard of the trials before, but seeing them mentioned in the context of magic sent a chill down his spine. Magic. Associated with something so terrible, Hikari murmured, his brow furrowing with concern. Does that mean? A sharp pain lanced through his head, causing him to wince and clutch at his temples. It felt as though a thousand needles were pricking at his brain, each one sending jolts of agony through his skull. What's happening to me? He thought, his vision swimming with spots of light. As he struggled to regain his composure, Hikari's gaze fell upon his arm, his emerald green eyes widening in astonishment. He watched in awe as sparks of lightning danced across his skin, illuminating the dim confines of the library with their brilliant glow. Is this my power? He wondered aloud, his voice tinged with wonder and disbelief. He reached out tentatively, his fingers tingling with electricity as he summoned the sparks to dance at his command. With a flick of his wrist, he sent a bolt of lightning arcing through the air, illuminating the darkness with its crackling energy. A sense of exhilaration coursed through him as he experimented with his newfound abilities, his doubts and fears momentarily forgotten in the thrill of discovery. I wonder what other powers I possess, Hikari mused to himself, a grin spreading across his face. It's time to find out. With newfound determination, he closed the book and rose to his feet, his heart pounding with excitement. Hikari flexed his fingers, watching the sparks of lightning dance along his arm with a mixture of awe and trepidation. 
The thought of training his newfound powers in public filled him with uncertainty. Would people react with fear and suspicion, like in the world of my hero academia, where quirks were both celebrated and feared? Or would they accept him for who he was, embracing his abilities as a gift rather than a curse? With a deep breath, Hikari made his decision. He couldn't hide forever, and he refused to let fear hold him back from embracing his true potential. Only one way to find out, he muttered to himself, stealing his resolve. Leaving the safety of the library behind, Hikari stepped out into the bustling streets of the city, his heart pounding with anticipation. He scanned the faces of the people around him, searching for any sign of recognition or fear. To his surprise, no one seemed to pay him any mind. They hurried past him, lost in their own thoughts and concerns, oblivious to the crackling energy that surrounded him. Encouraged by their indifference, Hikari extended his arm and concentrated, willing the sparks of lightning to dance along his fingertips. He began to experiment, shaping the energy into intricate patterns and shapes, each one more dazzling than the last. As he practiced, Hikari couldn't help but feel a sense of liberation wash over him. For the first time in his life, he was truly free to be himself, to embrace his powers without fear of judgment or persecution. And as he watched the awe and wonder on the faces of those around him, Hikari knew that he had made the right choice. His powers were not a burden to be hidden away, but a gift to be shared with the world. Hikari's mind raced with possibilities as he considered where he could train his powers away from prying eyes. He knew that practicing magic in public could draw unwanted attention, and he didn't want to risk causing a panic or attracting the wrong kind of attention. With a sense of determination, he decided to head home and search for a suitable training ground online. As he walked, he couldn't shake the feeling of excitement coursing through him. The thought of honing his abilities in a safe and controlled environment filled him with anticipation. As Hikari walked home, his mind churned with thoughts of finding a suitable place for real-world training. The idea of honing his powers in a natural setting appealed to him somewhere away from prying eyes, where he could unleash his abilities without fear of judgment or interference. I need to find a secluded spot where I can really push myself, he muttered, his gaze scanning the streets for inspiration. His eyes landed on a distant stretch of coastline, the crashing waves and rocky cliffs beckoning to him like a siren song. The beach, he thought, a spark of excitement igniting within him. It's perfect. With renewed determination, Hikari quickened his pace, eager to reach his destination before the sun dipped below the horizon. Arriving at the beach, he was greeted by the salty breeze and the rhythmic sound of waves crashing against the shore. The beach was deserted, save for a few scattered seagulls and the occasional crab scuttling along the sand. This will do nicely, Hikari said aloud, a sense of anticipation coursing through him. He wasted no time in getting to work, his movements fluid and deliberate as he began to summon his powers. He extended his arm, focusing his mind as tendrils of energy crackled to life around him. As he practiced, he couldn't help but feel a sense of exhilaration coursing through him. The feeling of the elements responding to his command was unlike anything he had ever experienced. This is incredible, he thought, a grin spreading across his face. I feel more alive than I ever have before. He experimented with different spells and incantations, pushing himself to his limits and reveling in the sensation of power coursing through his veins. And as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a warm glow across the beach, Hikari knew that he had found his sanctuary a place where he could train and grow stronger without fear or restraint. Chapter 3 Hikari surveyed the desolate expanse of Dagoba Beach, the once pristine shoreline now marred by piles of trash and debris. Despite its sorry state, he couldn't help but feel a sense of determination welling up within him. This may not be the idyllic training ground he had envisioned, but it was the perfect place to test his powers without attracting unwanted attention. Looks like I've got my work cut out for me, he muttered to himself, rolling up his sleeves and preparing to train. As he began to practice his spells and incantations, Hikari couldn't shake the feeling of Dej Vu. The name Dagoba sounded familiar to him, triggering memories of another world a world where heroes and villains clashed in battles of epic proportions. Dagoba. Where have I heard that name before? He wondered aloud, his thoughts drifting back to the world of my hero academia. It's just a coincidence, he told himself, shaking off the feeling of unease. There's no way this beach has anything to do with that world. 
But deep down, a nagging sense of doubt lingered in the back of his mind. What if there was more to this place than met the eye? What if there were other connections to the multiverse that he had yet to discover? As he continued to train, Hikari pushed aside his doubts and focused on honing his skills. He summoned balls of fire, conjured gusts of wind, and even experimented with manipulating the elements around him. With each passing moment, he could feel his powers growing stronger, his control more precise. The trash-strewn beach faded into the background as he lost himself in the exhilaration of mastering his abilities. And as the sun began to set on the horizon, casting a warm glow across the sand, Hikari knew that he had made the right choice coming here. Despite its humble surroundings, Dagoba Beach had become his sanctuary a place where he could train and grow stronger, far away from the prying eyes of the world. As Hikari unleashed a burst of lightning, the crackling energy surged through the air, illuminating the trash-strewn beach with its brilliant glow. With a sense of exhilaration coursing through him, he watched as the lightning arced through the air, leaving a smoking crater in its wake. Lightning powers. Neat, he remarked to himself, a grin spreading across his face. But Hikari wasn't content to stop there. With a flick of his wrist, he summoned a ball of fire, the flames dancing and flickering in the breeze. He directed the fire towards a pile of trash, watching as it ignited with a satisfying whoosh. Fire as well, he marveled, impressed by the range of abilities at his disposal. As he continued to experiment with his powers, Hikari couldn't help but wonder what other abilities lay dormant within him. He closed his eyes, focusing his mind as he reached out with his senses, probing for any hint of untapped potential. And then, it happened a surge of energy pulsed through him, sending shivers down his spine. He opened his eyes to see the air around him shimmering with an ethereal glow. What? What is this? He whispered, his voice barely audible over the crackling of flames and the roar of the ocean. With a sense of trepidation, Hikari extended his hand, reaching out towards the shimmering energy. To his amazement, he felt a connection forming a bond between himself and the very fabric of reality. And then, without warning, he felt himself being pulled into the void, his surroundings melting away into a swirling vortex of light and color. What? Where am I? He gasped, his heart racing with a mixture of fear and excitement. But before he could make sense of his surroundings, a voice echoed in the darkness. A voice that sent shivers down his spine and filled him with a sense of foreboding. Welcome, Hikari Toai, the voice intoned, its words echoing through the void. Welcome to the Nexus the gateway between worlds. Hikari's eyes widened in astonishment as he gazed at the swirling vortex of light and color before him. The Nexus the gateway between worlds loomed ominously in the darkness, its presence both mesmerizing and terrifying. What? What is this place? Hikari whispered, his voice barely above a whisper. But before he could ponder the question further, the voice echoed once again, filling the void with its otherworldly resonance. I am the guardian of the Nexus, the voice intoned, its words resonating within Hikari's very soul. I am the keeper of secrets and the guardian of destinies. Hikari's heart pounded in his chest as he struggled to comprehend the magnitude of what he was witnessing. The Nexus was not just a place it was a doorway to other worlds, a gateway to realms beyond his wildest imagination. And you, Hikari Toai, the guardian continued, its voice echoing with a sense of purpose, you have been chosen to wield the power of the Nexus to travel between worlds and shape the course of destiny itself. Hikari's mind reeled with the implications of what he was hearing. He had always dreamed of adventure and excitement, but he never imagined that his journey would lead him to a place like these a place where the boundaries of reality blurred and the possibilities were endless. But why me? He asked, his voice tinged with uncertainty. The Guardian's response was cryptic, its words laden with meaning. You possess a rare gift, Hikari Toei a gift that few mortals can comprehend. With your power and determination, you have the potential to become a force for change in the multiverse. Hikari's mind raced with questions, but before he could voice them, the Guardian spoke once again. Choose wisely, Hikari Toai, it said, its voice fading into the darkness. For the fate of worlds hangs in the balance. And with that, the swirling vortex began to fade, its colors blending into the darkness until all that remained was the sound of Hikari's heartbeat echoing in the void.
Another reason is because you just became the god at this world a world that didn't had a god since the creator left it, I mens did you question out of all the world's descent why he sent you here. The nexus Garen spoke as he looked at Hikari, Hikari already knew that he wished to be a god and was Esnet but didn't knew anything else. Hikari's mind whirled with the weight of the guardian's words. The revelation that he had become the god of a world that had long been without divine guidance sent a chill down his spine. Why had he been chosen for such a monumental task? What did he have to offer that others did not? I don't know, Hikari admitted, his voice tinged with uncertainty. I wish to be a god, but I never imagined it would lead me here. The guardian regarded him with a knowing gaze, its eyes filled with ancient wisdom. The creator saw potential in you, Hikari Toai, it explained, its voice gentle yet firm. He saw a spark within you a spark of determination and resilience that few possess. And now, it falls to you to fulfill your destiny and bring balance to this world. Hikari nodded, a sense of resolve settling over him. He may not have asked for this responsibility, but he was determined to rise to the challenge. I won't let you down, he vowed, his voice steady with determination. The guardian smiled, a flicker of pride shining in its eyes. I know you won't, Hikari Toai, it said. For you are more than just a god you are a beacon of hope in a world shrouded in darkness. And with your guidance, this world will flourish once again. And with that, the guardian faded into the darkness, leaving Hikari alone with his thoughts. As he stood in the void, surrounded by the echoes of the nexus, Hikari knew that his journey was far from over. But with the guidance of the guardian and the power of the nexus at his command, he was ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Hikari's eyes widened in astonishment as the guardian presented him with the weapon a scythe forged of gleaming silver, its blade shimmering with otherworldly energy. A scythe? Hikari asked, his voice filled with wonder. What am I supposed to do with this? The guardian regarded him with a knowing gaze, its expression inscrutable. This is no ordinary weapon, Hikari Toai, it explained, its voice carrying the weight of centuries. It is a tool of divine power a conduit for your godly abilities. With it, you will be able to channel and control the vast energies that flow through you. Hikari reached out tentatively, his fingers brushing against the cool metal of the scythe's handle. As he gripped it, he felt a surge of power coursing through him, filling him with a sense of strength and purpose. It's... It's like Thor's hammer in the MCU, he murmured, marveling at the weapon's craftsmanship. The Guardian nodded, a smile playing at the corners of its lips. In a way, yes, it agreed. But remember, Hikari Toai, true power comes not from the weapon itself, but from within. It is your strength of will and determination that will guide you on your journey. Hikari nodded, his grip tightening on the scythe's handle. I understand, he said, his voice filled with determination. I will use this weapon wisely, and I will not let you down. And with that, he turned to face the challenges that lay ahead, his newfound weapon held aloft as a symbol of his resolve. Hikari returned to the garbage-covered beach, the weight of the scythe turned necklace hanging around his neck like a talisman of power. Despite the desolation of his surroundings, he felt a sense of purpose stirring within Hima determination to fulfill his role as the god of this world and bring about positive change. With a flick of his wrist, he transformed the scythe back into its necklace form, the silver chain glinting in the sunlight. He tucked it beneath his shirt, keeping it close at hand in case he needed its power. All right, he said to himself, his voice resolute. Time to get to work. With that, he set about cleaning up the beach, gathering trash and debris with a newfound sense of purpose. Each piece he collected felt like a step towards restoring the beauty of this place, a symbol of his commitment to making a difference in the world. As he worked, Hikari couldn't help but feel a sense of satisfaction wash over him. It wasn't glamorous or exciting, but it was important a small act of kindness in a world that desperately needed it. And as the sun began to set on the horizon, casting a warm glow across the beach, Hikari knew that he had made a difference even if it was just a small one. Hikari worked to clean up the beach, he utilized his newfound powers with precision and care. With a wave of his hand, he lifted large pieces of debris into the air, effortlessly maneuvering them into piles for disposal. Others he sliced into smaller, more manageable pieces with a flick of his wrist, the air itself acting as his blade. 
Will wishing to be a god grant me powers as well, I guess, Hikari mused to himself, his thoughts drifting as he worked. With a deep breath, he focused his energy, channeling it into a new ability the power to manipulate time itself. With a gentle gesture, he slowed the passage of time around him, causing the trash to decay and disintegrate before his eyes. As he watched the debris crumble into sand, Hikari couldn't help but marvel at the extent of his powers. With each passing moment, he was discovering new abilities and unlocking hidden potentials within himself. But amidst the excitement of his newfound powers, a sense of responsibility weighed heavily on Hikari's mind. He had wished to be a god, but now that he had been granted that wish, he realized the true weight of his decision. I have the power to make a difference, he thought, his voice filled with determination. And I won't waste it. With renewed resolve, Hikari continued his work, knowing that with each piece of trash he cleared away, he was one step closer to fulfilling his destiny as the god of this world. As Hikari heard the approaching footsteps, he quickly activated one of his newfound powers turning himself invisible. It was a skill he had only recently discovered, but one that he knew could be invaluable in situations like this. With a silent exhale, he faded from view, blending seamlessly into his surroundings as the group of people drew nearer. Among them, he recognized the familiar figure of Monica, her presence sending a shiver down his spine. Hikari muttered to himself, his heart pounding in his chest. He had encountered Monica before, and her powers over the game world were not to be underestimated. As the group passed by, oblivious to his presence, Hikari remained hidden, waiting until they were out of sight before allowing himself to relax. That was close, he thought, relief flooding through him. I need to be more careful from now on. With a newfound sense of caution, Hikari continued his work, knowing that the dangers of this world were far from over. But with his powers at his disposal, he felt confident that he could handle whatever challenges lay ahead. I wonder if that Monica is the same one from the game, he mused to himself, his mind racing with possibilities. If she is, then she might be the closest thing to a god this world knows well, that is, before I came here. The idea of facing off against someone with Monica's level of power was daunting, to say the least. But Hikari knew that he couldn't let fear hold him back. If he was going to fulfill his role as the god of this world, he would need to confront any challenges head-on, no matter how daunting they may seem. But for now, he pushed the thought of Monica to the back of his mind, focusing instead on the task at hand cleaning up the beach and preparing for whatever challenges lay ahead. As Hikari returned home, his mother greeted him with a curious look. Hikari, where have you been? She asked, concern etched into her features. Hikari hesitated for a moment, unsure of how to explain his absence. I was. Out for a walk, he replied vaguely, hoping to avoid any further questions. His mother's brow furrowed in suspicion. A walk. She repeated, her tone skeptical. It's late, Hikari. You shouldn't be wandering around by yourself. I know, Mom, Hikari said, offering her a reassuring smile. I just needed some fresh air, that's all. His mother studied him for a moment, her gaze searching his face for any signs of deception. Finally, she sighed and nodded. All right, just be careful, okay? There are strange things happening lately, and I don't want you getting mixed up in anything dangerous. I will, Mom, Hikari promised, grateful for her concern. I'll be sure to stay safe. With that, he bid his mother goodnight and retreated to his room, his mind swirling with thoughts of the day's events. As he settled into bed, he knew that he would need to be extra careful from now on. The world was full of mysteries and dangers, and he couldn't afford to let his guard down, especially with someone like Monica out there. But despite the uncertainty of what lay ahead, Hikari felt a sense of excitement building within him. He may have been thrust into a world of gods and magic, but he was determined to make the most of it and carve out his own destiny. As Hikari settled into bed, he reached for a notebook tucked away in his bedside drawer. Flipping it open, he took a pen and began to write, his mind focused on the task at hand. Let's see. The names of the four main girls of Doki Doki, he muttered to himself, trying to recall the details from memory. Despite his reluctance to dwell on his experiences with the game, he knew that understanding its characters could prove to be invaluable in navigating this new world. Monica, 
he wrote first, his hand hesitating slightly as he remembered the fear she had instilled in him during his time playing the game. Scary, but powerful. Next, he wrote down the names of the other girls Sayori, Natsuki, and Yuri each name sparking a memory of their unique personalities and struggles within the game. Sayori. Cheerful and kind-hearted, he murmured, a pang of sadness tugging at his heart as he recalled her tragic fate. Natsuki. Feisty and determined, he continued, smiling faintly at the thought of her spunky attitude. And Yuri. Mysterious and introspective, he finished, remembering the unsettling atmosphere that surrounded her character in the game. As he wrote, Hikari couldn't help but feel a sense of connection to these fictional characters, despite the fact that they were nothing more than lines of code in a computer program. They had become a part of his life in a way he never expected, and now, they were guiding him through this strange and unpredictable world. Closing the notebook, Hikari set it aside and allowed himself to drift off to sleep, his dreams filled with visions of gods and magic, and the mysteries that awaited him in the days to come. Chapter 4 Natsuki glanced around the cluttered kitchen, a sense of frustration gnawing at her insides. It seemed like no matter how hard she tried, she could never keep the place clean. With a sigh, she turned back to the task at hand, determined to finish baking the cupcakes before her dad got home. As she mixed the batter, her mind wandered, thoughts drifting to the strange occurrences that had been happening lately. Ever since Hikari arrived in their world, things had been different. She couldn't quite put her finger on it, but there was an energy in the air, a sense of anticipation that left her on edge. Stupid Hikari, she muttered under her breath, her hands moving mechanically as she filled the cupcake liners. Thinks he's so special just because he's a god now. But even as she grumbled to herself, a small part of Natsuki couldn't help but feel a twinge of jealousy. After all, who wouldn't want to have godlike powers? To be able to do whatever you wanted, whenever you wanted it was a tempting thought, to say the least. With a shake of her head, Natsuki pushed aside her thoughts and focused on finishing the cupcakes. She didn't have time to worry about Hikari and his powers not when there were more important things to deal with, like her dad's temper and the constant struggle to make ends meet. As she slid the tray of cupcakes into the oven, Natsuki couldn't help but wonder what the future held. With Hikari's presence looming over their world like a shadow, anything seemed possible. But one thing was for certain whatever challenges lay ahead, she would face them head on, just like she always did. Natsuki groaned as she woke up, her frustration evident in her voice. But why did I have to be the one to wake up to all this information? It's not like I even know him. Her words echoed in the silence of her room, the weight of the situation pressing down on her. She couldn't understand why she felt so connected to someone she had never even met. With a sigh, Natsuki pushed herself out of bed and got ready for the day ahead. As she gathered her things for school, her mind kept drifting back to the mysterious Hikari in his strange powers. As she headed out the door, she muttered to herself, I just hope I can avoid him today. The last thing I need is more drama in my life. Natsuki grumbled under her breath as she made her way to school. I don't want to deal with this, she muttered, frustration evident in her voice. I haven't even met the boy, and now I have to deal with magical powers and who knows what else. She sighed and shook her head, trying to push aside her worries. And I still need to figure out how to control these stupid powers, she added, irritation creeping into her tone. Not to mention avoiding my dad. Maybe I can stay in the club longer today, just to get away from everything. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, she thought to herself, a small glimmer of hope flickering in her chest. At least then I won't have to deal with all this nonsense for a little while. Natsuki's footsteps echoed down the school hallway, her expression hardened with determination. Ever since she was a kid, her magical powers had been unstable, a fact that had made her an easy target for bullies. This, coupled with the abuse she suffered at home, had shaped her into what many people might call a tsundra. As she made her way to her locker, memories of past taunts and cruel remarks flooded her mind, a surge of anger rising within her. She clenched her fists, her nails digging into her palms as she fought to keep her emotions in check. I won't let them get to me, she muttered to herself, her voice laced with defiance. I'm stronger than they'll ever be. With a determined set to her jaw, Natsuki continued on her way, her eyes fixed on the classroom door. Today would be different. 
Today, she would show everyone that she was not to be underestimated. Natsuki sighed as she entered the empty classroom, her shoulders slumping with exhaustion. School was always a challenge, but today felt particularly draining. Between the stress of her classes and the constant fear of what awaited her at home, she felt like she was at her breaking point. She glanced around the room, grateful for the momentary respite from the chaos of her life. For a brief moment, she allowed herself to relax, sinking into her seat with a weary sigh. If only things could be normal for once, she thought to herself, her voice tinged with bitterness. But no, I had to go and get all this information dumped on me. With a shake of her head, Natsuki forced herself to focus on the task at hand. She pulled out her textbooks and began to review her notes, determined to make the most of the time she had before the rest of the class arrived. The classroom fell silent as the teacher entered, all eyes turning to him expectantly. Natsuki listened intently as he addressed the class, her curiosity piqued by his words. Students, as you know, our school is a great magical school, the teacher began, his voice projecting confidently across the room. And due to that, not many are fortunate enough to gain admission. Natsuki's enthusiasm waned as the teacher's words echoed in her ears. She had heard this spiel countless times before, and today was no different. Magic or not, school was still school, and she couldn't shake the feeling of boredom that settled over her. Her attention drifted as the teacher continued to speak, her mind wandering to more pressing matters. She glanced around the room, her gaze landing on the new student who had just entered. And today, we have a new student. Why don't you introduce yourself? The teacher prompted, gesturing for the newcomer to speak. Natsuki's interest peaked slightly at the prospect of meeting someone new, but she couldn't shake the feeling of apathy that lingered in the back of her mind. After all, what difference would one more student make in the grand scheme of things? She settled back in her seat, resigned to another day of monotony, her thoughts drifting back to the mysteries that still remained unsolved. As the new student walked into the classroom, Natsuki's eyes widened in shock. It was Hikari the same boy who had mysteriously appeared in their world with godlike powers. Her mind raced with questions, her thoughts a jumbled mess as she tried to make sense of what was happening. Her heart pounded in her chest as she realized the significance of this moment. Even on a normal day like today, fate had a way of throwing curveballs her way. But why now? Why in her class? She could feel the eyes of her classmates on her, their whispers buzzing in the air like static. But she hardly noticed, her attention fixed solely on Hikari as he made his way to an empty seat. As he settled into his desk, Natsuki couldn't help but feel a sense of unease settle over her. What did his presence here mean? And more importantly, what did it mean for her? Um, may I help you? Hikari asked, his gaze meeting Natsuki's. He couldn't help but notice the intensity of her stare, and he wondered what could be going through her mind. Natsuki blinked, startled by his question. She hadn't realized she had been staring so openly. Oh, uh, sorry, she stammered, her cheeks flushing with embarrassment. I was just surprised to see you here, that's all. Hikari nodded, a faint smile playing at the corners of his lips. Yeah, I guess it's a bit unexpected, he replied, his voice casual. I'm Hikari, by the way. Nice to meet you. Natsuki hesitated for a moment before extending her hand. I'm Natsuki, she said, trying to sound composed despite the whirlwind of emotions swirling inside her. Nice to meet you too. As their hands met, Natsuki couldn't help but feel a strange sense of connection to Hikari a feeling that she couldn't quite explain. Natsuki's heart raced as she shook Hikari's hand, her mind screaming in turmoil. Meeting someone she knew was literally a god, and possibly the only other person besides him who knew, was overwhelming. The weight of the information she had been given felt like a crushing burden, and she couldn't shake the urge to escape, to run away from it all. Her mind raced with a million questions, but she couldn't bring herself to voice them. Instead, she forced a smile, hoping to hide the turmoil inside. Nice to meet you, she said, her voice trembling slightly. As Hikari returned the smile, Natsuki felt a wave of relief wash over her. Maybe he didn't know the truth about her, maybe she could pretend like everything was normal. But deep down, she knew that nothing would ever be the same again. Natsuki dashed to the rooftop as soon as the class ended, 
her footsteps echoing in the empty stairwell. As she reached the top, she collapsed against the door, her breath coming in ragged gasps. She muttered, her hands shaking as she held her head in despair. I thought he would be in another school, not mine. Why is this happening? Tears welled up in Natsuki's eyes as she struggled to make sense of the chaos unfolding around her. She had never asked for any of Thisto be thrust into a world of gods and magic, to bear the weight of secrets she never asked to know. But here she was, alone on the rooftop, grappling with the overwhelming reality of it all. Natsuki's heart sank as she gazed down at the ground below, the urge to end her suffering becoming almost overwhelming. Should I just... Game end myself? She whispered, her voice barely audible over the sound of her racing heartbeat. The thought of escaping from the pain and confusion threatened to consume her, to pull her over the edge and into the void below. But even as the darkness beckoned, a small voice in the back of her mind urged her to hold on, to cling to the hope that things could get better. Trembling, Natsuki took a step back from the edge, her hands clenching into fists as she fought to push aside the despair that threatened to engulf her. Natsuki's heart pounded in her chest as she stood on the rooftop, teetering on the edge of despair. The urge to end her suffering grew stronger with each passing moment, until finally, she could resist it no longer. With a sense of resignation, she closed her eyes and let herself fall forward, the wind whipping past her as she plummeted towards the ground below. But then, just as suddenly as she had jumped, time seemed to freeze around her. Natsuki found herself back on the rooftop, her feet firmly planted on solid ground. Confusion and disbelief flooded her mind as she realized what had just happened. She had jumped. And yet, here she was, back where she started. With a sinking feeling in the pit of her stomach, Natsuki tried again, and again, and again. Five times she repeated the same motion, each time ending up back on the rooftop, no closer to escaping the pain that consumed her. Finally, with a heavy heart, she realized that it was no use. No matter how many times she tried to escape, she would always end up back where she started. Defeated, Natsuki sank to her knees, tears streaming down her face as she faced the harsh reality of her situation. She was trapped, both by her circumstances and by her own mind, with no way out in sight. Natsuki's voice trembled with emotion as she cried out to the empty sky, her words a desperate plea for answers. Does the universe hate me? She whispered, her voice raw with anguish. First, I have unstable magic, unlike everyone else. Then, I have an abusive dad, friends that make a fool of me, and now, a god gets reborn in my world. Why, god, why? Her cries echoed off the empty rooftop, the silence of the universe offering no solace to her pain. Tears streamed down her face as she wrestled with the unfairness of it all, the weight of her burdens threatening to crush her beneath their weight. Why? She sobbed, her voice breaking with each word. Why do I have to suffer like this? What did I do to deserve this? But there were no answers, only the cold indifference of the universe, a cruel reminder of the harsh reality she faced. After a while Natsuki went back to her class, as school ended, as he head was on her desk she was approached by Yuri. Natsuki looked up as Yuri approached, her eyes red-rimmed from crying. She tried to force a smile, but it faltered as she met Yuri's concerned gaze. Are you okay, Natsuki? Yuri asked, her voice gentle. Natsuki swallowed hard, the lump in her throat making it difficult to speak. I'm fine, she managed to choke out, her voice barely above a whisper. Yuri didn't seem convinced, her expression filled with sympathy. You don't seem fine, she said softly. Is there anything I can do to help? Natsuki hesitated, unsure of how to respond. She didn't want to burden Yuri with her problems, but at the same time, she couldn't bear to keep them bottled up inside. She began, her voice trailing off as tears welled up in her eyes once more. I don't know what to do. Everything feels so hopeless. Yuri reached out and gently squeezed Natsuki's hand, offering her silent support. You're not alone, Natsuki, she said reassuringly. We're here for you, no matter what. Natsuki nodded, grateful for Yuri's kindness. Maybe, just maybe, she didn't have to face her struggles alone after all. Natsuki took a deep breath, steeling herself for what she was about to say. Tell the rest that I'm not coming to the club today, okay Yuri? 
she said, her voice firm despite the tremble in her hands. I need to get my head clear. Yuri nodded understandingly, her eyes filled with concern. Of course, Natsuki, she replied softly. Take all the time you need. We'll be here for you when you're ready. With a grateful smile, Natsuki turned and walked away, her heart heavy with the weight of her emotions. But as she left the classroom behind, she felt a glimmer of hope flicker in the darkness a reminder that even in her darkest moments, she was not alone. As she went to a place she knew she will stay at, after all she didn't want to go home. I am here. She said as she arrived at Dagoba Beach. As she walked along the sandy shore, the cool breeze ruffling her hair, Natsuki felt a sense of peace wash over her. Here, surrounded by the vast expanse of the ocean, she could finally breathe, free from the suffocating weight of her worries. She found a secluded spot nestled among the rocks, hidden from prying eyes, and sank down onto the soft sand. Closing her eyes, she listened to the rhythmic sound of the waves, letting their gentle cadence lull her into a state of calm. For a while, she simply sat there, lost in thought, allowing herself to be enveloped in the quiet beach. Chapter 5 Natsuki's moment of tranquility was shattered as she glanced around the beach, her eyes falling upon the sea of trash that littered the sand. The sight filled her with a surge of anger and frustration. I like it here, but then again. She muttered, her voice trailing off as she surveyed the mess. I hate this. The pristine beauty of Dagoba Beach had been marred by the careless actions of others, and Natsuki couldn't help but feel a sense of indignation at the sight. It was a stark reminder of the disregard for nature that seemed all too prevalent in the world. With a heavy sigh, Natsuki rose to her feet, determined to do something about the mess. She began to gather up the litter, her hands moving methodically as she worked to restore the beach to its former glory. As she worked, a sense of purpose filled her, pushing aside the turmoil in her heart. It felt good to make a difference, no matter how small, and with each piece of trash she picked up, she felt a renewed sense of hope. And as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a warm glow across the beach, Natsuki stood back to admire her handiwork. The beach may not have been perfect, but it was a little bit cleaner, thanks to her efforts. With a smile, she turned and made her way home, her heart a little lighter than it had been before. Having unstable magic means one of two things either you have zero control over your magic and cannot fully use it and does you sucked. Or two your magic was way to power so power you can eliminate someone without your knowing and for Natsuki it was the too powerful part for her, as she clears a whole area. Natsuki's heart pounded with excitement as she focused her magic, feeling the raw power coursing through her veins. With a determined expression, she extended her arm, channeling her unstable magic with precision. In an instant, the area around her cleared, the debris and trash vanishing as if by magic. Natsuki marveled at the sight, a sense of pride swelling within her chest. Despite the challenges she faced, she had managed to harness her magic and wield it with purpose. Now to make myself a small shelter, Natsuki said with a smile, her confidence growing with each passing moment. With a flick of her wrist, she conjured a small hut made of sand and driftwood, its simple yet sturdy design providing her with a sense of comfort and security. As she stepped inside her makeshift shelter, Natsuki couldn't help but feel a sense of accomplishment. Despite the chaos that surrounded her, she had found a moment of peace, a sanctuary amidst the storm. With a contented sigh, she settled down for the night, the gentle lullaby of the waves lulling her into a restful sleep. Natsuki's eyes snapped open as she was jolted awake by a sound echoing across the beach. Rubbing the sleep from her eyes, she glanced around and realized that it was already night, the darkness enveloping the world around her. As she placed her bag down and put her head down falling asleep. As she strained to see through the dim light, her gaze fell upon Hikari in the distance, his figure illuminated by the faint glow of his powers as he trained on the beach. Panic gripped her heart as she remembered one crucial piece of information she had forgotten, this beach was Hikari's training spot at night. Oh, she muttered under her breath, her mind racing with a thousand thoughts. Should she approach him and risk revealing herself? Or should she stay hidden and hope he didn't notice her? As she debated her options, Natsuki felt a sense of unease settle over her. Whatever she decided, she knew that her encounter with Hikari would change everything. I know you're there. Hikari said. 
Natsuki froze, her breath catching in her throat as she heard Hikari's voice calling out to her. She hadn't expected him to notice her presence, and now she was faced with a decision, to reveal herself or to stay hidden. After a moment of hesitation, she stepped out from the shadows, her heart pounding in her chest. H how did you know I was here? She stammered, her voice betraying her nervousness. Hikari turned to face her, a knowing smile playing at the corners of his lips. I could sense your magic, he explained, his gaze steady as he looked at her. It's different from the others, unique in its own way. Natsuki felt a shiver run down her spine at his words. Here she was, face to face with the very person she had been trying to avoid. Sorry for intruding, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. I'll just. Go. But before she could turn and leave, Hikari reached out and gently touched her arm, his touch sending a jolt of electricity through her veins. Wait, he said softly, his eyes searching hers. You don't have to leave your welcome here. Natsuki's heart skipped a beat at his words, a warmth spreading through her chest. Despite her fears and doubts, she couldn't help but feel a glimmer of hope at the possibility of connection in this strange, new world. Hikari's gaze softened as he studied Natsuki, a sense of understanding dawning in his eyes. He could sense the turmoil within her, the weight of her struggles pressing down on her shoulders. But he could also see something else, something that set her apart from the others, the immense power of her magic, pulsating beneath the surface like a dormant volcano waiting to erupt. So, what brings you here? He asked gently, his voice a soothing melody in the stillness of the night. Natsuki hesitated, unsure of how much to reveal. But there was something about Hikari's presence that made her want to open up, to share her burdens with someone who might understand. I needed to get away, she admitted, her voice barely above a whisper. Things have been difficult lately, and I just needed some space to clear my head. Hikari nodded sympathetically, his eyes filled with empathy. I understand, he said softly. Sometimes, the weight of the world can be too much to bear. But you don't have to face it alone. Natsuki felt a lump form in her throat at his words, a swell of emotion threatening to overwhelm her. For the first time in a long while, she felt seen, understood, and accepted. Thank you, she whispered, her voice choked with emotion. Thank you for being here. And as they stood together on the deserted beach, surrounded by the gentle whisper of the waves, Natsuki knew that she had found a friend in the most unlikely of places. You know it is late in night why don't you come to my place to stay my sister will probably give you some clothes to wear. Hikari said he already felt bad for Natsuki but one more thing some who has so much magical power scares him but not as much as Monika did but that was due to the game. After all he checked Monika was close to a god SJE would be called a demigod in some places, but for Natsuki, she was close to her power but it was well unstable. Natsuki blinked in surprise at Hikari's offer, her mind reeling with disbelief. She had expected him to dismiss her, to send her away like everyone else had done before. But here he was, extending a hand of friendship in her darkest hour. I don't know, she stammered, torn between gratitude and hesitation. I wouldn't want to impose. Hikari shook his head, a reassuring smile on his lips. It's no imposition, he insisted. I want to help. And besides, it's not safe for you to be out here alone at night. Natsuki bit her lip, her heart pounding in her chest. She knew he was right, that it would be foolish to refuse his offer. But there was still a part of her that hesitated, that feared what might happen if she let her guard down. But as she looked into Hikari's eyes, she saw nothing but sincerity and kindness shining back at her. And in that moment, she made a decision. Okay, she said softly, her voice barely audible above the sound of the waves. I'll come with you. And as they made their way back to Hikari's home, Natsuki couldn't help but feel a glimmer of hope stir within her. Maybe, just maybe, things would finally start to look up. As they walked through the quiet streets, Natsuki couldn't shake the feeling of apprehension that lingered in the pit of her stomach. Despite Hikari's reassuring presence beside her, she couldn't help but wonder what awaited her at his home. But as they arrived at Hikari's doorstep, any lingering doubts were quickly dispelled by the warm welcome they received from Hikari's sister. She greeted them with a smile, ushering them inside and offering Natsuki a change of clothes. Thank you, Natsuki murmured gratefully, 
accepting the clothes with a sense of relief. It felt good to be clean and dry after her ordeal on the beach, and she couldn't help but feel a sense of gratitude towards Hikari and his sister for their kindness. As she changed into the fresh clothes, Natsuki couldn't help but marvel at the simple comforts of Hikari's home. It was a far cry from the cold, empty house she had grown accustomed to, and she found herself relaxing in the warmth of their hospitality. Once she was dressed, Hikari's sister led them to a cozy guest room where Natsuki could spend the night. With a grateful smile, Natsuki sank down onto the soft bed, her exhaustion finally catching up with her. As she drifted off to sleep, she couldn't help but feel a sense of peace wash over her. For the first time in a long while, she felt safe, surrounded by the warmth and kindness of her newfound friends. And as she slipped into the realm of dreams, Natsuki knew that no matter what challenges lay ahead, she would face them with courage and determination, knowing that she was not alone. Hikari sat alone in his room, the soft glow of lamplight casting shadows across the pages of his book. With a heavy sigh, he reached for a pen and crossed out Natsuki's name from the list he had been compiling. Weird to think she has so much magical power, he mused to himself, his brow furrowing in thought. He had sensed the immense potential within Natsuki, a power unlike any he had encountered before. But there was something else about her, something that tugged at the corners of his mind. He couldn't quite put his finger on it, but there was a sense of familiarity in her presence, as if they were connected by something deeper than mere coincidence. As he pondered the mysteries of Natsuki's magic, Hikari couldn't shake the feeling that their paths were destined to cross again. And as he drifted off to sleep, his dreams were filled with visions of a world where gods and mortals walked hand in hand, united by the bonds of fate. Natsuki blinked the sleep from her eyes, her mind still foggy from the remnants of her dream. As she stretched and yawned, the memories of the previous night came flooding back to her. That was a weird dream, she murmured to herself, shaking her head to clear away the lingering images. Despite the oddness of her dream, she couldn't shake the feeling of warmth and comfort that had surrounded her in Hikari's home. With a sigh, she pushed aside the thoughts of her dream and focused on the day ahead. Natsuki's eyes widened in realization as she stepped out of the guest room and surveyed her surroundings. The events of yesterday came rushing back to her with startling clarity she wasn't at her own house she was in Hikari's house, the new god of this world. A mixture of disbelief and awe washed over her as she took in the unfamiliar surroundings. Everything seemed to shimmer with an otherworldly glow, as if touched by the hand of magic itself. It was a stark reminder of the new reality she found herself in, a reality where gods walked among mortals and anything was possible. With a shaky breath, Natsuki steadied herself and made her way through the house, her heart pounding in her chest. She couldn't shake the feeling of trepidation that gripped her, the weight of her newfound knowledge pressing down on her shoulders like a heavy burden. But as she approached the kitchen, the sound of laughter and chatter reached her ears, dispelling the darkness that threatened to consume her. With a sense of determination, she pushed open the door and stepped inside, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Oh good morning. Hikari mother said. Good morning, Mrs. Hikari, Natsuki said, looking at Hikari mother. So what makes you wake up so early especially since it is not a school day? Akari said to Natsuki. Natsuki paused for a moment, considering her response. She wanted to give Hikari's mother a truthful answer without revealing too much about her own struggles. I guess I just wanted to make the most of the day, Natsuki replied with a small shrug, offering a faint smile. It's not often that I get to experience something new, so I wanted to seize the opportunity. Akari nodded understandingly, her warm gaze filled with empathy. Well, you're always welcome here, dear, she said kindly. If there's anything you need, just let me know. Thank you, Mrs. Akari, Natsuki said gratefully, feeling a sense of gratitude wash over her. It was a small gesture, but it meant the world to her to know that she had someone looking out for her in this unfamiliar world. As time passes and Akari told Natsuki to wake up her son. Natsuki's heart skipped a beat as Akari mentioned waking up her son. A wave of nervousness washed over her at the thought of facing Hikari so early in the morning. She wasn't sure if she was ready to confront the reality of their newfound connection, especially after the events of yesterday. Sure, she managed to say, forcing a smile despite the turmoil swirling inside her. She didn't want to disappoint Akari or cause any trouble, 
but the prospect of facing Hikari filled her with a sense of dread. As she made her way to Hikari's room, her mind raced with a thousand thoughts. What would she say to him? How would he react to seeing her again so soon? And most importantly, how would she handle being in the presence of a god? Taking a deep breath to steady her nerves, Natsuki knocked softly on Hikari's door and waited for him to respond. She braced herself for whatever lay ahead, determined to face it with courage and resilience. As she opens the door to see Hikari on the bed asleep, he seems to peacefully sleeping. Oh God he is so cute. She thought to herself. As she moved her arm to touch him as then his arm grabbed her pushing in the bed. Natsuki's breath caught in her throat as Hikari's arm suddenly shot out, grabbing her and pulling her onto the bed. She let out a startled gasp as she tumbled forward, landing on the soft mattress beside him. For a moment, they lay there in stunned silence, the air thick with tension and uncertainty. Natsuki's heart raced in her chest as she tried to make sense of what had just happened. She had only meant to wake him up, not invade his personal space. Hikari stirred beside her, his eyes fluttering open as he slowly became aware of her presence. He blinked sleepily, confusion flickering in his gaze as he looked at her lying beside him. Natsuki. He murmured, his voice heavy with sleep. What are you doing here? Natsuki felt a blush creep up her cheeks as she realized the awkwardness of the situation. I, I was just trying to wake you up, she stammered, her words tumbling out in a rush. I didn't mean to intrude or anything. I'll just. Go. But before she could move, Hikari's grip tightened on her arm, holding her in place. No, wait, he said softly, his gaze searching hers. You don't have to leave you can stay. If you want. Natsuki's heart skipped a beat at his words, a warmth spreading through her chest. Despite the awkwardness of the situation, she couldn't deny the flutter of excitement that bubbled within her. Maybe, just maybe, this unexpected encounter could be the start of something new. Chapter 6 Hikari watched in confusion as Natsuki bolted from the room, leaving him bewildered and alone in his bed. He frowned, his mind racing with questions as he tried to make sense of her sudden departure. What just happened? He muttered to himself, running a hand through his tousled hair. He couldn't shake the feeling of unease that settled over him, wondering if he had said or done something to upset her. But as he lay there in the silence of his room, a small smile tugged at the corners of his lips. Despite the awkwardness of the situation, he couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement stirring within him. Maybe Natsuki's hasty exit was just the beginning of a new adventure, one filled with unexpected twists and turns. With a shrug, Hikari settled back against the pillows, his thoughts drifting as he allowed himself to savor the lingering warmth of their brief encounter. Whatever the future held, he was ready to face it head-on, eager to see where this newfound connection might lead. Hikari descended the stairs, the faint aroma of cooking wafting through the air as he reached the kitchen. His mother and Natsuki were already busy at work, their heads bent over the stove as they prepared lunch for the day. Morning, Hikari greeted them with a smile, taking in the sight of the two women working side by side. There was a sense of warmth and camaraderie in the air, a feeling of belonging that filled him with a sense of contentment. Morning, Hikari, his mother replied, returning his smile with one of her own. We thought we'd make something special for lunch today since you don't have school. Natsuki nodded in agreement, her expression focused as she chopped vegetables with practiced ease. Yeah, we figured we could use the extra time to make something delicious, she chimed in, a hint of excitement in her voice. Hikari couldn't help but admire the way Natsuki seemed to fit right in with his family, her presence bringing a sense of vibrancy to their home. Despite the awkwardness of their earlier encounter, he found himself growing more and more drawn to her with each passing moment. As they worked together to prepare lunch, Hikari felt a sense of gratitude wash over him. In this moment, surrounded by the people he cared about, he knew that he was exactly where he was meant to be. Here let me help you guys. Hikari said with a smile. Hikari chuckled softly as he moved to stand beside Natsuki, eager to lend a hand in the kitchen. As he reached for a spatula, his fingers brushed against hers, sending a jolt of electricity racing through him. He couldn't help but notice the way her cheeks flushed pink at their close proximity, a sight that made his heart skip a beat. But before he could dwell on the moment any longer, disaster struck. 
A glob of batter went flying through the air, splattering across his face in a messy explosion of dough and eggs. Natsuki gasped in horror as she watched the scene unfold, her eyes widening in dismay. Oh no, I'm so sorry. She exclaimed, reaching for a napkin to help clean up the mess. Hikari wiped the batter from his face with a sheepish grin, his laughter echoing through the kitchen. It's okay, accidents happen, he reassured her, his tone lighthearted despite the sticky mess coating his skin. As they worked together to clean up the kitchen, Hikari couldn't shake the feeling of warmth that filled him. Despite the mishap, there was a sense of camaraderie between them that made him feel closer to Natsuki than ever before. And as they sat down to enjoy their meal together, Hikari couldn't help but feel grateful for the unexpected moments of connection that brought them together, turning an ordinary day into something truly extraordinary. Hikari chuckled as he watched Natsuki pile her plate high with food, her appetite seemingly insatiable. Wow, you eat a lot, he remarked, teasingly raising an eyebrow at her. Natsuki shot him a glare, her cheeks flushing with embarrassment at his comment. Yeah, so what? She retorted, her tone defensive as she defended her hearty appetite. Hikari held up his hands in surrender, a mischievous twinkle in his eyes. Hey, no judgment here, he said with a laugh. I just hope you save some room for dessert. Natsuki rolled her eyes but couldn't help but smile at his playful banter. Despite the teasing, she appreciated the easy camaraderie between them, the sense of familiarity that seemed to grow stronger with each passing moment. As they continued to enjoy their meal together, Hikari couldn't help but feel grateful for the unexpected bond that had formed between them. In Natsuki, he had found a friend and confidant, someone who understood him in a way that no one else ever had. And as they shared stories and laughter around the table, Hikari knew that he had found something truly special in Natsuki a connection that transcended the boundaries of time and space, bringing them closer together with each passing day. Thanks for having me but I gotta go home. Natsuki said lying. Hikari nodded, a hint of disappointment flickering in his eyes as he watched Natsuki gather her things. Thanks for coming over, he said, his voice tinged with sincerity. It was nice having you here. Natsuki smiled, her expression warm despite the lie she was about to tell. Yeah, it was fun, she replied, her tone gentle as she tried to hide the turmoil swirling within her. As she made her way to the door, Hikari couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. He wanted to reach out, to ask her what was wrong, but he knew that she wasn't ready to open up yet. Take care, Natsuki, he said softly, watching as she disappeared out the door and into the night. Alone once again, Hikari couldn't help but feel a sense of longing wash over him. He knew that Natsuki was hiding something from him, something important, and he was determined to uncover the truth. But for now, all he could do was wait and hope that Natsuki would find the courage to confide in him when she was ready. As after a while Natsuki arrived back home, Natsuki stepped into her room, the familiar surroundings offering a sense of comfort after the whirlwind of emotions she had experienced at Hikari's house. She closed the door behind her and took a moment to survey her surroundings, her eyes scanning the room for any signs of disturbance. Everything seemed to be in its rightful place, just as she had left it. Her collection of manga and novels lined the shelves, each one a cherished escape from the trials of daily life. Her desk was cluttered with art supplies and half-finished sketches, a testament to her passion for creativity. Satisfied that all was as it should be, Natsuki let out a sigh of relief and flopped down onto her bed, exhaustion weighing heavily on her shoulders. The events of the day had taken their toll on her, leaving her feeling drained and overwhelmed. But as she lay there in the quiet of her room, her mind began to wander back to Hikari and the strange connection she felt with him. Despite her efforts to push him away, she couldn't deny the pull he had on her, the way he seemed to understand her in a way that no one else ever had. With a weary smile, Natsuki closed her eyes and let herself drift off to sleep, the memory of Hikari's laughter echoing in her mind as she surrendered to the sweet embrace of dreams. Natsuki's heart raced with uncertainty as she made her decision. With a determined expression on her face, she grabbed two bags and began to pack her essentials. Clothes, toiletries, and a few personal items were quickly thrown into the bags, the urgency of her departure spurring her into action. As she zipped up the bags and slung them over her shoulders, Natsuki felt a surge of determination wash over her. She was ready to face whatever the future held, 
ready to stand by Hikari's side as they embarked on this new journey together. With one last glance around her room, Natsuki took a deep breath and steeled herself for what was to come. She knew that leaving her old life behind would be difficult, but she also knew that she couldn't let fear hold her back any longer. With resolve in her heart, Natsuki made her way out of her room and out of her house, ready to face whatever challenges awaited her in this new chapter of her life. Natsuki stood before Hikari's front door, her heart pounding in her chest as she raised her hand to knock. Before she could make contact, the door swung open, revealing Hikari's mother standing in the doorway with a warm smile. Hikari mentioned that you might be staying with us for a while, she said kindly, stepping aside to allow Natsuki inside. You're more than welcome here, dear. Make yourself at home. Natsuki's cheeks flushed with relief as she stepped into the familiar surroundings of Hikari's house. Thank you, she murmured, a hint of gratitude in her voice. I really appreciate it. Hikari's mother nodded, her eyes twinkling with understanding. Of course, dear. You're always welcome here. As Natsuki followed her inside, she couldn't help but feel a sense of gratitude wash over her. With Hikari and his family by her side, she knew that she would be able to face whatever challenges lay ahead with courage and determination. As Natsuki settled into her new surroundings, her thoughts were consumed by the enigma that was Hikari. She couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to him than met the eye, that perhaps his abilities went beyond the realm of mortal comprehension. As she glanced over at Hikari, who was engrossed in conversation with his mother, a flicker of curiosity danced in her eyes. What kind of powers did he possess? And how had he come to wield them with such ease? Lost in her thoughts, Natsuki barely noticed when Hikari turned to look at her, a knowing smile playing at the corners of his lips. It was as if he could sense her inner turmoil, her questions and doubts laid bare before him. But instead of offering answers, Hikari simply winked at her, his gaze filled with a sense of mystery and intrigue. And in that moment, Natsuki knew that she was in for an adventure unlike any other. As Hikari sat at the kitchen table, his mind whirled with confusion and uncertainty. He couldn't shake the feeling that Natsuki's sudden arrival had been anything but a coincidence, that perhaps there was a greater force at play orchestrating events behind the scenes. But try as he might, Hikari couldn't make sense of the situation. He had only mentioned the possibility of Natsuki staying with them in passing, never expecting it to actually come to fruition. And yet, here she was, a living, breathing enigma standing before him. As he pondered the mysteries of fate and destiny, Hikari couldn't help but feel a twinge of anxiety gnawing at his insides. What did Natsuki's presence mean for him and his family? And what role did he play in the grand tapestry of events unfolding around him? Lost in his thoughts, Hikari barely noticed when his mother called his name, snapping him out of his reverie. With a sigh, he pushed aside his worries for the time being, knowing that answers would come in due time. But until then, all he could do was embrace the uncertainty and trust that everything would unfold as it was meant to. I am going to my room mom call me if you need a anything just call me. Hikari said going to his room. Sure thing, Hikari, his mother replied with a nod, her eyes filled with warmth and understanding. As Hikari disappeared down the hallway, Natsuki couldn't help but feel a pang of loneliness wash over her. She wished she had someone she could confide in, someone who understood the turmoil swirling within her. But as she glanced around the room, she realized that she wasn't alone. Hikari's family had welcomed her with open arms, offering her a safe haven in her time of need. With a grateful smile, Natsuki made her way to her room, her heart a little lighter knowing that she wasn't facing the challenges ahead alone. Hikari settled into his desk chair, the soft glow of his computer screen casting a warm light across his face. He opened up his browser, his fingers tapping away at the keyboard as he navigated through various websites and forums. As he delved deeper into the intricacies of the magical world he now found himself in, Hikari couldn't help but marvel at its similarities to the worlds of his favorite manga and novels. The idea of a mage school, where students honed their magical abilities and trained to become powerful sorcerers, felt like something straight out of a fantasy story. But as he read more about the structure of the magical society and the various magical creatures that inhabited the world, Hikari couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to this world than met the eye. It was as if there were secrets lurking just beneath the surface, waiting to be uncovered. 
Lost in thought, Hikari leaned back in his chair and stared up at the ceiling, his mind buzzing with possibilities. He knew that he had a lot to learn about this new world he found himself in, but he was eager to embrace the challenges that lay ahead. This world is more different than I thought but still. As then he pulled out a comic which said the Iron Beetle with on the cover was a fusion of Iron Man and the second Blue Beetle. Why must DC and Marvel fused in this universe? Iron Man is not the only one there is Wonder Thunder Wonder Woman and Thor fusion, damages Hulk, a fusion of damagers and Hulk, DR Strange fate, a conversation of Doctor Strange and DR fate what made this conversation. He said. As then he heard his mom call him. Coming mom. Hikari said. Hikari chuckled to himself as he closed the comic and set it aside, the vivid images still lingering in his mind. I'll come back to this later, he thought, making a mental note to bookmark the page where he left off. Coming, mom, he called out as he stood up from his desk and headed out of his room. He found his mother in the kitchen, busy preparing lunch. What's up, mom? Hikari asked, leaning against the doorframe. Just wanted to see if you were hungry, his mother replied, glancing over at him with a warm smile. Lunch will be ready soon. Sounds good, Hikari said, feeling his stomach rumble at the thought of food. I'll be down in a minute. His mother nodded and returned to her cooking, leaving Hikari to make his way downstairs. Also call Natsuki I can tell she is going through a lot. Hikari mother said said. After all I have seen it before. Hikari's mother paused her cooking, a concerned expression crossing her face. You stay here, dear. I'll check on Natsuki and see how she's doing. She made her way to Natsuki's room and knocked gently on the door before entering. Natsuki, dear, are you all right? Hikari's mother asked, her voice filled with genuine concern. Natsuki looked up from her spot on the bed, her eyes betraying the turmoil within. I'm. I'm okay, I guess, she replied hesitantly. Hikari's mother took a seat beside her, placing a comforting hand on her shoulder. You don't seem okay, sweetheart. Is there something on your mind? Natsuki hesitated for a moment before opening up to Hikari's mother about the struggles she had been facing lately the unstable magic, the abusive home life, and now, the sudden appearance of Hikari, a godlike figure, in her world. Hikari's mother listened attentively, offering words of comfort and understanding. I'm so sorry you're going through all of this, Natsuki. But please remember, you're not alone. You have us here to support you. A small smile tugged at the corners of Natsuki's lips as she felt the warmth of Hikari's family's support. Thank you, she whispered, feeling a glimmer of hope in the midst of her struggles. Also what is this god-like figure? Hikari mother asked. Natsuki though. Noting just a slip of words. Natsuki's heart skipped a beat as she struggled to come up with a convincing answer. Um, well. Hikari just has this. Aura about him, you know. She stammered, her mind racing to find the right words. Hikari's mother arched an eyebrow, her gaze piercing. Aura. What do you mean by that, dear? Natsuki's palms grew clammy as she searched for a suitable explanation. I, I mean, he's really smart and confident, and. And he's always there to help out, she replied, her voice faltering slightly. Hikari's mother studied her for a moment before nodding slowly. I see. Well, if you ever need anything, Natsuki, don't hesitate to ask. We're here for you. Natsuki let out a silent sigh of relief, grateful that she had managed to dodge the questions for now, at least. As her door opens with Hikari waking in as he closed the door and pinned her to the wall as Natsuki then blush. How do you know? Hikari asked. Natsuki's heart raced as Hikari's sudden presence caught her off guard. She found herself pressed against the wall, her breath hitching as she tried to compose herself. How do you know? Hikari demanded, his voice firm but tinged with curiosity. I, I don't know what you're talking about, Natsuki stammered, her cheeks flushing crimson. Hikari's gaze bore into hers, intense and searching. Don't play dumb with me, Natsuki, he said, his tone insistent. How did you know about my abilities? Natsuki swallowed hard, her mind racing for an explanation. I, I saw things, she replied, 
her voice barely above a whisper. In my dreams. Hikari's expression softened slightly, a flicker of understanding crossing his features. Dreams? He echoed, his voice softer now. What kind of dreams? Natsuki hesitated, unsure of how much to reveal. I saw you, she admitted, her gaze dropping to the floor. Using your powers. There was a moment of silence as Hikari processed her words, his expression unreadable. Then, with a sigh, he released her from his grip and took a step back. I see, he said quietly, his eyes searching hers. Well, just. Be careful, okay? It's not safe to meddle with things you don't understand. Natsuki nodded, relief flooding through her at his surprisingly gentle response. I will, she promised, her voice barely above a whisper. So the food is ready, do you want to eat? Hikari asked, his tone casual as he glanced at Natsuki. Natsuki hesitated for a moment, her mind still reeling from the unexpected encounter with Hikari. Um, yeah, sure, she replied, trying to sound nonchalant despite the flurry of thoughts racing through her mind. Hikari nodded, gesturing for her to follow him downstairs to the dining area. As they sat down at the table, Natsuki couldn't help but steal glances at Hikari, her curiosity piqued by his seemingly endless reserves of power. So, uh, Hikari, she began, fidgeting with her utensils, what's it like being? Well, you know, a god. Hikari chuckled, a hint of amusement dancing in his emerald green eyes. It's definitely different, that's for sure. But honestly, I'm still trying to figure it all out myself. Natsuki nodded, her expression thoughtful. Yeah, I can imagine. Must be a lot to take in. As they ate, the conversation flowed effortlessly between them, the tension from earlier gradually dissipating. Natsuki found herself opening up to Hikari, sharing stories from her past and her hopes for the future. As Hikari's sister comes down. So who is this cutie bro, is she your girlfriend? She asked Hikari. Natsuki blushed furiously, feeling her cheeks grow warm under Hikari's sister's gaze. Hikari chuckled, shaking his head. No, she's not my girlfriend, sis. This is Natsuki, she's just a friend. Hikari's sister raised an eyebrow, a mischievous twinkle in her eye. Just a friend, huh? Well, she's welcome to stay here anytime. Natsuki managed a weak smile, grateful for the offer but still feeling flustered by the unexpected attention. Thanks, she mumbled, her voice barely above a whisper. Hikari's sister grinned, patting Natsuki on the shoulder before heading back upstairs. As the sound of her footsteps faded away, Natsuki let out a sigh of relief, grateful for the brief respite from the awkwardness of the situation. I mean if you want you can be my girlfriend I don't mind kinda find you cute as well. Hikari said to Natsuki. Natsuki's eyes widened in surprise, her cheeks flushing an even deeper shade of red. She struggled to find the right words, her heart racing at Hikari's unexpected confession. Hikari, I. I don't know what to say, she stammered, her voice barely above a whisper. I mean, we barely know each other, and. And I'm not sure if I'm ready for. Her voice trailed off as she struggled to articulate her thoughts, her mind spinning with uncertainty. On one hand, she felt a flutter of excitement at the idea of being with Hikari, but on the other hand, she couldn't shake the lingering doubts and insecurities that had plagued her for so long. Hikari reached out, gently taking her hand in his. I understand, Natsuki, he said softly. I didn't mean to put you on the spot like that. I just wanted you to know how I feel. Natsuki felt a wave of warmth wash over her at Hikari's words, a sense of comfort and reassurance filling her heart. Despite the uncertainty of their situation, she couldn't deny the spark of connection she felt with him, the growing sense of trust and understanding that had blossomed between them. Thank you, Hikari, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. I appreciate your honesty. And. And I think I'd like to get to know you better too. Hikari smiled, squeezing her hand gently. I'd like that too, Natsuki, he said softly. Let's take things one step at a time, okay? Natsuki nodded, a small smile playing at the corners of her lips. Okay, she said, her heart fluttering with anticipation. One step at a time. 
Natsuki's mind raced as she considered Hikari's confession and his genuine sincerity. She couldn't help but feel a glimmer of hope amidst the uncertainty, a sense of possibility that she hadn't dared to entertain before. I appreciate your honesty, Hikari, she said finally, mustering a small smile. And. I'd like to get to know you better too. Hikari's smile widened, and Natsuki felt a flutter of excitement in her chest as she realized that she wasn't alone in this journey. Together, they would navigate the challenges and uncertainties of their new world, supporting each other every step of the way. As they sat down to eat, Natsuki couldn't help but feel a sense of gratitude for the unexpected bond that had formed between them. Despite the trials and tribulations that lay ahead, she knew that with Hikari by her side, she would never have to face them alone. As then they bought here a click they turned their head to see it was Hikari's sister. And saved. She says as she puts a camera away. Natsuki couldn't help but feel a surge of embarrassment as she realized they had been caught in a vulnerable moment. She glanced nervously at Hikari, unsure of how he would react to his sister's intrusion. Hikari, however, seemed unfazed, offering his sister a playful grin. You couldn't resist spying on us, could you? His sister laughed, shrugging nonchalantly. Hey, I couldn't resist the opportunity for some good blackmail material. Natsuki's cheeks burned with embarrassment, but she couldn't help but chuckle at the exchange. It was clear that Hikari and his sister shared a close bond, and she felt grateful to be welcomed into their family, even if it came with a few embarrassing moments along the way. As they continued their meal, Natsuki couldn't shake the feeling of warmth and acceptance that surrounded her. Despite the challenges that lay ahead, she knew that with Hikari and his family by her side, she would always have a home to return to, no matter what. Chapter 7 Hikari groaned as he woke up, rubbing his eyes to clear the sleep away. His gaze fell upon Natsuki, who was curled up in his bed once again. I've grabbed you again, haven't I? Hikari said with a wry smile. Natsuki stirred, blinking sleepily. Yeah, seems like it. Hikari chuckled and stretched, then glanced at the clock. Well, we better get going. It's time to meet the other members of the Doki Doki Literature Club and MC. Natsuki nodded, yawning as she sat up. Right. Let's get this over with. They headed downstairs together, where Hikari's family was already busy with breakfast. His mother greeted them warmly, while his sister shot them a mischievous grin. So, who's the lucky girl, bro? She teased, nudging Hikari. Hikari rolled his eyes. She's just a friend, sis. Natsuki blushed slightly at the exchange, but didn't say anything. You have met her already sis why are you acting like this is the first time you two have meet. Hikari said to his sister. Huh, I know, Hikari's sister chuckled. I was just teasing. It's not every day we have a cute girl in your room, you know. Hikari rolled his eyes. Yeah, yeah, just give us some privacy, will you? All right, all right, she said, leaving the room with a playful grin. Natsuki smiles. As she looks at Hikari. Are you sure you want to meet my friend? Natsuki said to Hikari. Yeah, I think it'll be good to meet your friend, Hikari replied with a reassuring smile. Besides, I want to make sure you're not getting into any trouble with your magical adventures. Natsuki's smile widened. Thanks, Hikari. I appreciate it. Together, they made their way out of the room, ready to face whatever challenges awaited them. As they bought arrived to their school walking in Hikari saw many girls were looking at him. Um, Natsuki, why are all these girls looking at me? Hikari asked, feeling a bit uncomfortable under the sudden attention. Natsuki smirked, enjoying the momentary discomfort of Hikari. Well, you are the new guy in town, and you do have that mysterious aura around you, she teased. Hikari rolled his eyes, but couldn't help but feel a bit self-conscious under the scrutiny of the other students. He followed Natsuki through the hallway, trying to ignore the curious glances directed his way. As they walked, Natsuki couldn't shake off the feeling of jealousy creeping up inside her. It wasn't like her to feel this way, but seeing the other girls look at Hikari with admiration stirred something within her. Humph, they're just curious because he's new, Natsuki muttered under her breath, trying to brush off her feelings. But no matter how hard she tried to ignore it, the jealousy lingered, gnawing at her insides. 
Natsuki clenched her fists, feeling a surge of possessiveness over Hikari. She wanted to shout out, he's mine. But managed to keep her thoughts to herself, knowing it was irrational to feel that way. Still, the thought lingered in her mind as they made their way through the school halls. As they walked into their classroom as the teacher greeted them warmly as they entered the classroom, and Natsuki forced herself to focus on the lesson, pushing aside her jealous thoughts about Hikari. As you know our annual sport competition is coming you students better focused on your magic more and learn new. Teacher said to the whole class. Natsuki nodded along with the teacher's words, though her mind was still preoccupied with thoughts of Hikari and the other girls in the class. She knew she needed to focus on improving her magic skills for the upcoming competition, but it was hard to concentrate with so much swirling in her mind. As then she turned her head and saw one of the girls she knew had a crush on Hikari was just looking at him, seeing this she sent a small magic making her chair break. Natsuki watched as the girl's chair suddenly collapsed beneath her, causing her to fall to the ground with a surprised yelp. Although she felt a pang of guilt for using her magic in such a way, she couldn't help but feel a sense of satisfaction at seeing the girl's embarrassment. Survived you right for looking at my man. What why I am thinking this Natsuki said to herself. Natsuki's heart raced as she realized the implications of her thoughts. She shook her head, trying to push away the irrational jealousy that had overtaken her. What's wrong with me? She muttered under her breath, feeling conflicted about her unexpected feelings towards Hikari. As class ended the teacher looked at Hikari. You know if you don't have a club active you need to go home Hikari. The teacher said to Hikari looking directly at him. Hikari nodded, acknowledging the teacher's words. I'll keep that in mind, thank you, he replied politely, gathering his things before heading out of the classroom. Natsuki led Hikari through the bustling halls of the school, weaving through clusters of students and ducking into a quieter corridor. Eventually, they arrived at a classroom with a sign hanging on the door that read Literature Club. This is it, Natsuki said, pushing open the door and stepping inside. Hey, everyone, look who I brought. The room was filled with the sound of chatter and laughter as Hikari followed Natsuki inside. He scanned the faces of the other students, noticing a mix of curiosity and surprise as they looked at him. Hey, guys, Natsuki continued, gesturing to Hikari. This is Hikari. He's new here, so be nice. The other students smiled and waved, offering greetings and introductions as Hikari took a seat beside Natsuki. He felt a wave of warmth and acceptance wash over him, grateful for the opportunity to make new friends in this unfamiliar world. Hikari, huh? Monica said, her gaze lingering on him with a curious intensity. It's a pleasure to meet you. Hikari nodded, offering a polite smile in return. There was something about Monica's demeanor that put him on edge, a subtle undercurrent of power and confidence that he couldn't quite place. He was also not trying to be afraid of her. It's nice to meet you too, he replied, trying to keep his tone casual despite the sense of unease gnawing at him. Natsuki shot Monica a warning glance, sensing the tension in the air. Yeah, we're just here to hang out and have a good time, she said, steering the conversation back to safer ground. Monica nodded, her smile widening slightly. Of course, of course. Well, I'm sure we'll all get along just fine. But as Hikari settled into his seat, he couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to Monica than met the eye. Something about her seemed off. Sorry I am late. As walking in was someone everyone knew and as Hikari called him MC. As MC looked at Hikari as he goes to him. So you're the new student nice to meet you MC said. Oh let me introduce myself my full name is Meiji Chizu but call me MC that is why Sayori calls me. MC said to Hikari. Yes people he has a name and yes this is his canon name. Hikari's curiosity peaked as he pondered why Sayori wasn't part of the club despite her close friendship with MC. He decided to ask MC about it, hoping to gain some insight into the situation. Hey, MC, Hikari began, I noticed that Sayori isn't part of the club. Is there a reason for that? MC's expression faltered slightly before he replied, Yeah, Sayori used to be in the club with us, but she had to leave for personal reasons. Natsuki glanced over, concern evident in her eyes. Is she okay? She asked. MC nodded. 
Yeah, she's doing better now. But she's been focusing on other things lately. Hikari nodded, understanding. I see. Well, I hope she's doing well. MC smiled gratefully. Thanks. She'll appreciate that. As they continued to chat, Hikari couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to Sayori's absence than met the eye. He resolved to learn more about her and offer his support however he could. As Hikari's thoughts drifted to the events of the game, he couldn't help but feel a sense of unease. The memory of Sayori's fate weighed heavily on his mind, and he hoped that history wouldn't repeat itself in this new reality. The thought of losing someone he had just met filled him with a mixture of fear and determination. Natsuki noticed the change in Hikari's demeanor and placed a comforting hand on his shoulder. Hey, are you okay? She asked softly. Hikari forced a small smile. Yeah, just thinking about things, he replied, his voice tinged with uncertainty. MC glanced over, sensing the tension in the air. If there's anything on your mind, you can talk to us about it, he offered. Hikari nodded, grateful for their concern. Thanks, he said, his voice quiet but sincere. As they continued their conversation, Hikari made a silent vow to himself, he would do whatever it took to prevent tragedy from befriending them again. With his newfound powers and the support of his friends, he hoped to rewrite their story for the better. As Monica walked out of the room as she goes to open her book. This is odd my future sight never told me about him. Monica said as she thought about Hikari. Monica furrowed her brow in confusion as she pondered the mysterious newcomer, Hikari. Despite her ability to peer into the future, she found herself unable to foresee his presence in their lives. It was a puzzling anomaly that left her feeling unsettled. She flipped through the pages of her book, searching for any hint or clue that might shed light on Hikari's sudden appearance. But try as she might, she couldn't find any mention of him in the pages of her future predictions. This is odd, Monica muttered to herself, frustration evident in her voice. My future sight never told me about him. Her mind raced with questions and theories, each more perplexing than the last. Was Hikari somehow immune to her powers? Or was there something about him that defied even her understanding of the universe? Determined to unravel the mystery, Monica resolved to keep a close eye on Hikari in his actions. Perhaps in observing him closely, she could uncover the truth behind his enigmatic presence in their world. Monica's mind buzzed with questions as she mulled over the implications of Hikari's sudden appearance. Her ability to see into the future had always been a source of comfort and control for her, allowing her to navigate life with a sense of certainty and assurance. But now, with Hikari's arrival disrupting the carefully laid out path she had foreseen, she felt a gnawing sense of unease creeping into her thoughts. She couldn't shake the feeling that Hikari's presence was somehow connected to the changes she had noticed in her future predictions. It was as if he had inserted himself into their world with deliberate intent, disrupting the flow of events and casting a shadow of uncertainty over everything she thought she knew. Determined to unravel the mystery, Monica delved deeper into her powers, focusing her mind on the task of uncovering the truth behind Hikari's arrival. She sifted through the strands of time, searching for any clues or anomalies that might shed light on his enigmatic presence. But as she probed the depths of her future sight, she encountered only darkness and uncertainty. It was as if Hikari existed outside the bounds of her powers, a mysterious figure whose true nature eluded her grasp. Frustration gnawed at Monica's resolve as she grappled with the unsettling realization that her powers were no match for whatever force had brought Hikari into their world. But she refused to be deterred. Armed with determination and a fierce curiosity, she vowed to uncover the truth behind Hikari's arrival, no matter the cost. Meanwhile back in the club he saw Monica going away. Natsuki don't go near her okay. Hikari said in a whisper he didn't want her to get deleted like in the games. Natsuki nodded, a sense of unease prickling at the edges of her mind. She couldn't shake the feeling that something was off about Monica's sudden departure, but she trusted Hikari's instincts. Yeah, sure, Natsuki replied, her voice tinged with uncertainty. I'll stay away. As Hikari's gaze followed Monica's retreating figure, he couldn't help but feel a twinge of concern. There was an air of tension surrounding Monica, a sense that she was grappling with something far beyond their understanding. I just hope everything's okay, Hikari murmured, 
his brow furrowed with worry. With a nod of agreement, Natsuki cast one last glance in Monica's direction before turning her attention back to the clubroom. But even as she tried to focus on the task at hand, her thoughts lingered on the enigmatic figure of Monica, her mind awash with unanswered questions and unspoken fears. Chapter 8 So what is your magic MC? Hikari said to MC as he wanted to know what MC has. MC smiled, his eyes alight with enthusiasm. I specialize in elemental magic, he replied. Fire, water, earth, and air I can manipulate them all to some extent. It's nothing too flashy, but it gets the job done. Hikari nodded, impressed by MC's straightforward approach to magic. Elemental manipulation was a versatile skill, one that could be useful in a variety of situations. That sounds pretty cool, Hikari remarked. I've always been drawn to lightning magic myself. There's something exhilarating about harnessing the power of a thunderstorm. As they continued to chat, Hikari couldn't help but feel a sense of camaraderie building between them. Despite their differences, they shared a common bond as fellow magic users, united by their shared experiences and shared challenges. And I can control the four elements and even time. Hikari said looking at MC ready for his reaction. So what do you think? He said. MC's eyes widened in surprise. Time manipulation. That's incredible, he exclaimed. I've heard of mages who can control the elements, but manipulating time thats on a whole other level. How did you discover you had that ability? Hikari shrugged, a hint of uncertainty in his expression. It's complicated, he admitted. I didn't even know I had that power until recently. It just sort of manifested. So there is more people with time power than just me. Yuri said. Sorry if the writing style changes here I was trying something new. Hikari nodded, a thoughtful expression crossing his face. It seems that way, he replied. Time manipulation is a rare ability, but it appears there are others who possess it in this world. It's intriguing, to say the least. Yuri furrowed her brow, her curiosity peaked. Do you think there's a connection between all of us who have this power? She asked. Hikari shrugged, considering the question. It's possible, he conceded. But I think we'll need more information before we can draw any conclusions. For now, let's focus on honing our abilities and supporting each other as we navigate this new world. With that, the club members turned their attention back to their activities, their minds buzzing with questions and possibilities. As Hikari felt it something changed as he say Sayori name was back on the board. Did reality just changed? He thought to himself as saw the name that was erased was now back. As Monica walked in with Sayori next to her as Sayori looked sad. Hey, Sayori, what's wrong? Hikari asked, noticing her downcast expression. Sayori forced a smile, but it didn't quite reach her eyes. Oh, it's nothing, Hikari, she replied her voice lacking its usual cheerfulness. Just feeling a little tired today, that's all. Monica shot Hikari a knowing look, but remained silent, observing the interaction. Hikari furrowed his brow, unconvinced by Sayori's explanation. Are you sure you're okay? He pressed gently. You can talk to me if something's bothering you. Sayori's smile faltered, and she glanced at Monica for a moment before turning back to Hikari. I appreciate it. Hikari, she murmured. But really, I'm fine. Let's just focus on the club activities for now, okay? Hikari nodded, though a lingering concern gnawed at him. He made a mental note to check in on Sayori later, determined to get to the bottom of whatever was troubling her. Hikari met Monika's gaze with a steady resolve, his earlier apprehension giving way to a newfound determination. Monika, he began, his voice firm but calm, we need to talk. Monica raised an eyebrow, her expression unreadable. About what, exactly? She asked, her tone neutral. About the changes in this world, Hikari replied, his gaze unwavering. About how you seem to be the only one aware of them, and about your intentions regarding me and the others. A flicker of surprise crossed Monica's features before she schooled her expression into one of cool composure. I'm not sure what you're implying, Hikari, she said smoothly, though there was a hint of tension in her voice. 
I'm just as surprised by these changes as you are. As for my intentions, they remain the same as they've always been, to lead the literature club and support my friends. Hikari narrowed his eyes, sensing the underlying subtext in Monica's words. Is that so? He replied, his voice tinged with skepticism. Well, forgive me if I find that hard to believe. But regardless, I won't let anyone manipulate or harm my friends, no matter who they are. Monica's facade slipped for a moment, revealing a glimpse of frustration before she quickly regained her composure. Of course, Hikari, she said smoothly, her smile returning, though it didn't quite reach her eyes. I would expect nothing less from someone like you. With that, she turned and walked away, leaving Hikari to ponder the implications of their conversation. Also you already consigned us friend even do we have met Ho Nice. Monica said. Hikari nodded, a small smile playing at the corners of his lips. Of course, he replied. In this world, it seems we're all connected in ways we can't fully understand. And if we're going to navigate through these challenges together, we might as well consider each other friends. Monica's expression softened, a genuine warmth replacing the previous tension. I suppose you're right, she said, her voice holding a note of sincerity. In that case, I'm glad to have you as a friend, Hikari. Hikari returned the sentiment with a nod. Likewise, Monica, he said. Let's do our best to support each other and the rest of the club. With that, they shared a brief but meaningful smile before turning their attention back to the tasks at hand, united in their newfound camaraderie. As they all started to go home as each of the club member left Hikari grabbed Natsuki pulling her away. Hikari, what's going on? Natsuki asked, her voice tinged with curiosity and a hint of concern as Hikari pulled her aside. I just wanted to talk to you for a moment, Hikari replied, his expression serious yet gentle. I know things have been a bit hectic lately, but I wanted to make sure you're okay. Natsuki's gaze softened, and she offered him a small smile. I appreciate your concern, Hikari, she said. I've just been dealing with some personal stuff, but I'll be fine. Hikari nodded, a flicker of understanding in his eyes. If you ever need someone to talk to or if there's anything I can do to help, just let me know, he said earnestly. I'm here for you. Natsuki's smile widened, touched by his sincerity. Thank you, Hikari, she said, her voice soft. That means a lot to me. With a nod of mutual understanding, they parted ways, each feeling a sense of reassurance in the bond they shared. You already know I am God so you should know this as well. Hikari said. Yeah what is it? Natsuki said looking at Hikari as blush came up her face. Hikari chuckled, seeing Natsuki's blush. It's about Monica, he said, his tone serious. I need you to be careful around her. There's something. Off about her. Natsuki nodded, her expression turning solemn. I'll be careful, don't worry. But what do you mean by, off? Is there something we should be concerned about? She asked, her voice tinged with worry. Hikari sighed, running a hand through his hair. It's hard to explain, he admitted. But things feel. Different lately. I can't quite put my finger on it, but I sense a shift in the balance of things. Maybe it's just my imagination, but I can't shake this feeling of unease. Natsuki furrowed her brow, her concern deepening. I see, she said softly. Well, whatever it is, we'll face it together. You're not alone in this, Hikari. A small smile tugged at the corners of Hikari's lips as he looked at Natsuki. Thanks, Natsuki. I'm glad you're here with me, he said sincerely. Now, let's head home. We can talk more about it there. With a nod, Natsuki fell into step beside Hikari as they made their way out of the clubroom, their bond growing stronger with each passing moment. As then they bought felt something. A demon. Hayakir said. Natsuki's eyes widened in alarm. A demon? Here. She exclaimed, her voice tinged with fear. The reason that Natsuki knows about this is because of a simple reason. She has a lot of power. It means she's a supernatural magnet as well. And Hikaru is a literal god. Knowing about demons entering his world is kind of a thing. You stay here, Hikari said to Natsuki firmly. 
but I wanna help, Natsuki protested as Hikari teleported her back to his house. Why are you like this? She muttered to herself, finding herself back in her room at Hikari's house. As Hikari jumped away seeing Shadow in Sayori he then punched as weird looking creator which can only be called a demon comes out. What what is that and how did you get here Hikari? Sayori said looking at Hikari. Hikari stood back, his eyes narrowed as he assessed the strange creature before him. Its twisted form seemed to flicker in and out of existence, as if it didn't truly belong in their world. It is a demon, Hikari replied, his voice steady despite the uncertainty gnawing at him. But it's definitely not something we want here. Sayori's eyes widened in shock as she took in the sight before her. She had never seen anything like it, and the fear in her voice was palpable. What do we do? Sayori asked, her voice trembling slightly. Hikari's mind raced as he searched for a solution. He knew they couldn't let this creature roam freely in their world, but he also knew that fighting it would be dangerous. We need to get rid of it, Hikari said, his tone firm. But we need to be careful. This thing is powerful. As they prepared to face the creature head on, Hikari couldn't shake the feeling that things were about to get a lot more complicated. You have to be kidding me I was going to eat. The demon said looking at Hikari. Yeah not going to happen demon. Hikari said back as his fist was on fire red to fight. The demon chuckled darkly, its twisted form contorting with amusement. Eating. In this world. It sneered. There are far more interesting things to do than feast on mere mortals. Hikari's eyes narrowed, his determination solidifying into resolve. He wouldn't let this creature threaten his world or the people in it. Whatever your plans are, they end here, Hikari declared, his voice steady despite the adrenaline coursing through his veins. I won't let you harm anyone. With a flick of his wrist, Hikari unleashed a torrent of flames, his magic igniting with ferocious intensity. The demon's laughter turned to a snarl as it lunged forward, its claws poised to strike. As time froze around them, Hikari's concentration intensified, channeling his power to manipulate the very fabric of reality itself. With a swift motion, he conjured a blade of shimmering ice, its edges gleaming with an otherworldly light. In a single fluid motion, Hikari surged forward, the blade slicing through the air with lethal precision. With a resounding clash, the sword met the demon's neck, cleaving through flesh and bone with chilling efficiency. As the demon's head tumbled to the ground, a stunned silence fell over the battlefield. Time resumed its normal flow, the world awakening from its frozen state as if nothing had happened. Breathing heavily, Hikari surveyed the aftermath of his victory, his eyes burning with determination. The threat had been vanquished, but he knew that more challenges lay ahead. Sayori's voice trembled with fear as she surveyed the scene before her, her eyes wide with disbelief. The sudden appearance of a demon in Hikari's swift, decisive action had left her shaken to the core. I don't know what's going on, Sayori stammered, her voice barely above a whisper. But. But I feel like I've walked into something big. Something. Dangerous. Hikari's gaze softened as he turned to face Sayori, his expression filled with concern. I'm sorry you had to see that, Sayori, he said gently. But don't worry, you're safe now. We'll figure this out together. Sayori nodded weakly, her mind still reeling from the shock of the encounter. As she looked around at her friends, she knew that they would need to stick together if they were going to unravel the mysteries that lay ahead. Hey I feel happier and don't feel like to eliminate myself. Sayori said with a smile. Sayori's words brought a sense of relief to the group, their worries momentarily forgotten as they basked in the warmth of her smile. That's wonderful to hear, Sayori, Natsuki said, returning the smile. We're here for you, no matter what. Hikari nodded in agreement. You're not alone, Sayori, he said, his voice filled with reassurance. We'll always be here to support you. As the tension of the moment began to dissipate, Sayori felt a weight lifted from her shoulders. With her friends by her side, she knew that she could face whatever challenges lay ahead, her newfound happiness lighting the path forward. As then Hikari looked at Natsuki. How did you get back here is sent out home. Hikari said looking at Natsuki. Natsuki glanced away, a hint of guilt flashing across her features. I used my magic to come back, she admitted, 
her voice barely above a whisper. I just couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. Hikari's expression softened as he reached out to gently touch her shoulder. I understand, he said softly. But next time, please listen to me. I don't want you to put yourself in danger. Natsuki nodded, grateful for his concern. I will, she promised, a sense of relief washing over her at his understanding. With their bond strengthened by the events of the day, Natsuki and Hikari shared a moment of quiet understanding, their connection stronger than ever before. Natsuki blushed, caught off guard by Sayori's question. She glanced at Hikari, who also seemed surprised by the sudden inquiry. We're. Ah. Uh. Natsuki stumbled over her words, unsure how to respond. Hikari chuckled softly, breaking the tension. We're not dating, he said, giving Natsuki a reassuring smile. We're just friends. Natsuki nodded in agreement, relieved that Hikari had clarified the situation. Yeah, just friends, she echoed, grateful for his support. Sayori smiled warmly at them, her eyes sparkling with mischief. Well, you make a cute couple, she teased, earning an embarrassed laugh from Natsuki and a sheepish grin from Hikari. As they continued their conversation, Natsuki felt a sense of warmth and camaraderie fill the room, grateful for the friendship she had formed with both Hikari and Sayori. Wait does that mean you don't like MC anymore? Sayori said to Natsuki. Natsuki's cheeks flushed pink as Sayori's question caught her off guard. She glanced at Hikari, then back at Sayori, unsure how to respond. Uh, well. Natsuki stammered, searching for the right words. I mean, MC and I are still friends, but... Hikari chuckled softly, sensing Natsuki's uncertainty. It's okay, Sayori, he interjected. Natsuki and I are just friends. That's all. Sayori nodded understandingly, her expression softening. Got it, she said with a smile. Well, as long as you're happy, that's all that matters. Natsuki sighed with relief, grateful for Sayori's understanding. Thanks, Sayori, she said, returning the smile. And don't worry, MC and I are still friends too. With that, the tension eased, and the three friends settled into a comfortable conversation, enjoying each other's company as they spent the rest of the afternoon together. Chapter 9 As Hikari and Natsuki returned back to his house. That was something. Natsuki said remembering the day's event. I mean a demon after one of my friends game. Hikari nodded, his expression serious. Yeah, it was unexpected. But there's something important I need to tell you, Natsuki. He paused, choosing his words carefully. The truth is, our world isn't entirely real. It's part of a game, a visual novel called Doki Doki Literature Club. You and the other girls, Sayori, Yuri, and Monika, you're all characters in this game. Natsuki's eyes widened in disbelief. What do you mean, a game? Like a video game? Hikari nodded. Exactly. We're all part of a game created by someone from another world. I'm not originally from this world either. I'm a player who got trapped here, and now I'm trying to find a way to get back to my own world. Natsuki struggled to process this revelation. So. Everything we've experienced, our memories, our feelings. They're all part of this game. Hikari sighed. Yes, but that doesn't mean they're not real to us. We've formed bonds, shared experiences, and felt emotions just like any other person. But we're also bound by the rules of the game, and that's why strange things like demons can appear. Natsuki frowned, her mind racing with questions. But why are you telling me this now? And what does it mean for us? Hikari hesitated, unsure of how Natsuki would react. I'm telling you because I trust you, Natsuki. And as for what it means. I'm not entirely sure yet. But I promise, I'll do everything I can to keep you safe and find a way out of this game. Natsuki nodded slowly, her expression serious. Okay. I trust you, Hikari. But what do we do now? Hikari smiled reassuringly. For now, we continue living our lives as best as we can. But we'll also keep an eye out for anything strange or out of the ordinary. And if we ever need to, we'll face whatever challenges come our way together. With that, 
the two of them settled into a companionable silence, knowing that their journey was far from over. But I am not sure if this world is a game. This is not the canon game world. Hikari's words hung in the air, casting a shadow of doubt over their understanding of their reality. Natsuki furrowed her brow, her mind racing with new questions. What do you mean, it's not the canon game world? How can you be sure? Hikari sighed, running a hand through his hair in frustration. I can't say for certain. But there are inconsistencies, things that don't quite match up with what I remember from the game. It's like we're in a parallel universe, similar to the game but not quite the same. Natsuki's eyes widened with realization. So, if this world isn't the same as the game world, does that mean there's no way for us to return to our original world? Hikari hesitated, the weight of the possibility settling heavily on his shoulders. I don't know, Natsuki. But I won't give up hope. We'll keep searching for answers, exploring this world, and doing everything we can to find a way back home. Natsuki nodded, determination shining in her eyes. Right. We'll figure this out together, Hikari. No matter what. With renewed resolve, they continued their conversation, determined to uncover the truth behind their existence in this mysterious world. But in all honesty I don't want to return back to my real world, that world can burn for all I care. He says with an angry voice. I hated my original world. Hikari's declaration hung in the air, his words heavy with emotion. Natsuki could sense the pain and resentment in his voice, and it gave her pause. I understand, she said softly, placing a comforting hand on his shoulder. But we can't let our anger consume us. Even if we don't want to return to our original world, we still need to find a way to make sense of this one. Hikari nodded, his anger slowly subsiding as he met Natsuki's gaze. You're right. We have each other, and that's what matters most right now. Together, they resolved to embrace their new reality, facing whatever challenges came their way with strength and determination. And as they continued to navigate this unfamiliar world, they knew that their bond would be their greatest strength. Wait can you not just use your god power and check if this world is a game like the canon Doki Doki world? Natsuki said. I mean what kind of god are you if you can't do that? Hikari paused, considering Natsuki's suggestion. You're right, he admitted. I should be able to use my powers to discern the truth about this world. Closing his eyes, Hikari concentrated, tapping into the vast reservoir of magic within him. With a surge of energy, he reached out, probing the fabric of reality itself in search of answers. After a moment, his eyes snapped open, a look of realization dawning on his face. It's not a game, he said with certainty. This world is real, just like ours was. But there's something different about it. Something I can't quite put my finger on. Natsuki nodded, her mind racing with possibilities. If this world wasn't a game, then what was it? And what secrets did it hold? As they pondered the implications of Hikari's revelation, they knew that they were only beginning to scratch the surface of the mysteries that lay before them. But with their newfound determination and Hikari's godlike abilities at their disposal, they were ready to face whatever challenges came their way. I have some that can answer us. As Hikari holds his scythe necklace. He may be able to help. Natsuki looked at the scythe necklace with curiosity, sensing its significance. What's that? She asked, her interest piqued. Hikari held the necklace up, examining it thoughtfully. This is a relic from my past, he explained. It holds the essence of someone who once guided me, someone who may have the answers we seek. With a sense of determination, Hikari closed his eyes once more, focusing his energy on the necklace. A soft glow emanated from the pendant as he reached out with his mind, seeking guidance from the spirit contained within. After a moment, Hikari opened his eyes, a look of determination on his face. He's ready to speak with us, he said to Natsuki. Let's see what he has to say. As then the necklace turned into a real scythe as he cuts a portal as he jumped into the void as he pulled Natsuki with him. Natsuki gasped as she was suddenly pulled into the swirling void alongside Hikari. The sensation was disorienting, like being caught in a whirlwind of colors and shapes. As they emerged on the other side, Natsuki found herself standing in a vast, ethereal realm. The air crackled with energy, 
and strange symbols glowed faintly in the distance. Hikari stood beside her, his expression serious as he gripped the scythe tightly. This is the realm of the spirits, he explained. We'll find the answers we seek here. With determination, Hikari led the way through the otherworldly landscape, his eyes scanning the surroundings for any signs of their guide. Natsuki followed closely behind, her heart pounding with anticipation. As then the Void Guardian came. Hikari it has been a while what brings you here? The Guardian said. We seek answers, Hikari replied, his voice steady. We need to know if this world is real or merely a construct. The Void Guardian nodded solemnly, its form shimmering with otherworldly energy. I understand your concerns, it said. Come, follow me. With a wave of its hand, the Guardian beckoned Hikari and Natsuki to follow as it led them deeper into the realm of the spirits. Along the way, they passed through shimmering portals and traversed vast expanses of swirling energy. Eventually, they arrived at a place of profound stillness, where the fabric of reality seemed to ripple and shift. The Void Guardian turned to face them, its eyes glowing with ancient wisdom. To know the truth, you must look within, it intoned. Seek the answers in your hearts, for they hold the key to understanding. Hikari and Natsuki exchanged a glance, then closed their eyes and focused on their innermost thoughts and feelings. In that moment of quiet reflection, they searched for the truth that had eluded them for so long. Just tell I am not dealing with this today. Natsuki said frustrated. The Void Guardian regarded Natsuki with a sense of empathy, understanding the weight of her frustration. Sometimes, the answers we seek are not easily found, it said gently. But fear not, for the truth has a way of revealing itself in due time. Hikari nodded in agreement, placing a reassuring hand on Natsuki's shoulder. We may not have all the answers now, he said, but we will continue to search until we find the truth. With renewed determination, Hikari and Natsuki prepared to face whatever challenges lay ahead, knowing that together, they could overcome any obstacle in their path. But yes this world of the Doki Doki multiverse is real. The Guardian said. That settles it then, Hikari said with a sense of relief. We're not in a game world we're in a real, albeit extraordinary, universe. Natsuki's expression softened, a mix of surprise and acceptance crossing her features. So, what now? She asked, turning to Hikari. Now, Hikari replied, we continue to navigate this world, facing whatever challenges come our way, and protecting those we care about. With a newfound sense of clarity and purpose, Hikari and Natsuki stepped forward, ready to embrace the adventures that awaited them in the Doki Doki multiverse. As Hikari then opens a portal back to his room. Hikari and Natsuki step through the portal, returning to Hikari's room in his house. Well, that was enlightening, Natsuki remarked, glancing around the familiar surroundings. Yeah, Hikari agreed, nodding thoughtfully. At least now we know where we stand. With a shared understanding, they settled back into the comfort of Hikari's room, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead in their newfound reality. So Natsuki is Yuri a lesbian because you know her name is Yuri. As he says to Natsuki says. Well, just because her name is Yuri doesn't necessarily mean she's a lesbian, Natsuki replied, shaking her head. It's just a name, after all. People have all sorts of names regardless of their orientation. Yeah, you're right, Hikari nodded. Sorry for jumping to conclusions. It's just that sometimes things seem too coincidental. Natsuki shrugged. Yeah, I get it. But let's not assume things about people without knowing for sure. Agreed, Hikari said with a smile. Let's focus on getting to know them better instead. Anyway let go and train Natsuki you still need to get your magic under control. And after that we will get ice cream. Sounds like a plan, Natsuki grinned. I could use some ice cream after a tough training session. With renewed determination, they set off to hone Natsuki's magical abilities, ready to face whatever challenges awaited them. As then went to Dagoba Beach their place to train. Ah, uh, got it. In that case. Dagoba Beach again, Natsuki remarked as they arrived, her tone nonchalant as if it was a routine they were accustomed to. Yeah, our usual spot for training, Hikari replied, nodding in agreement. They wasted no time and delved straight into their training session, 
their movements fluid and synchronized as they practiced various spells and techniques. Natsuki's determination was evident as she pushed herself to improve with each repetition. After a rigorous training session, they took a moment to catch their breath, the familiar surroundings offering a sense of calm and tranquility. You're really making progress, Natsuki. Your control is getting better every time we come here, Hikari remarked, impressed by her dedication. Thanks, Hikari. I'm glad it's paying off, Natsuki replied, a hint of pride in her voice. With the sun beginning to set, they decided to head back, looking forward to their usual post-training ice cream treat. As they arrived in ice shop they found none other than MC who was being dragged by Sayori. Hey, look who's here, Hikari remarked, spotting MC in Sayori. MC. Sayori. Natsuki called out, waving enthusiastically. MC glanced over and grinned when he saw them approaching. Hey, Hikari. Natsuki. What's up? He greeted them. Sayori, who was dragging MC along, beamed at them. Hiya. We were just grabbing some ice cream. You two wanna join us? She offered. Hikari and Natsuki exchanged a glance before nodding in agreement. Sure, why not? Ice cream sounds great, Hikari replied, a smile tugging at his lips. They joined MC and Sayori at the counter, chatting and laughing as they enjoyed their sweet treats, the warmth of friendship filling the air. Are two on a date? Sayori said to Hikari and Natsuki. If so congratulations. Hikari chuckled, shaking his head. No, we're not on a date. Just hanging out, he clarified. Yeah, just friends, Natsuki added, blushing slightly at the misunderstanding. Sayori's eyes widened in surprise. Oh. Sorry, I just assumed. She trailed off, looking a bit embarrassed. It's okay, Sayori, MC reassured her with a grin. Let's just enjoy our ice cream, okay? With that, they continued chatting and enjoying their time together, the camaraderie between them evident in their laughter and smiles. All right then here is this are you and MC on a date. He said ready for his revenge. I mean you to look like it. Yes, no. Sayori and MC said together. Hikari chuckled, seeing the opportunity to tease them back. Oh, really? Well, you two certainly look like a cute couple, he teased, grinning mischievously. Natsuki couldn't help but giggle at the exchange. Yeah, you do make a good pair, she added playfully, joining in on the fun. Sayori and MC exchanged amused glances before both bursting into laughter. Okay, okay, you got us, MC admitted, still chuckling. But no, we're just friends too. Sayori nodded in agreement. Yep, just friends enjoying some ice cream together, she confirmed with a smile. As they left the ice cream shop MC just looked at the group. Still why did it feel like a double ice cream date? MC said. Hikari laughed. Maybe because we all got ice cream at the same time. He suggested jokingly. But seriously, we're all just hanging out as friends. Nothing wrong with that, right? Natsuki nodded in agreement. Yeah, just a fun outing with friends, she chimed in, smiling. MC shrugged, accepting their explanation. Yeah, you're right. Just a fun day out, he agreed, smiling back at them. As they walked along the street, enjoying their ice cream, Hikari couldn't shake off the feeling that something was off. He glanced at Natsuki, who seemed lost in thought, her brow furrowed in concentration. You okay? Hikari asked, nudging her gently. Natsuki looked up, startled out of her reverie. Huh? Oh, yeah, I'm fine, she replied, forcing a smile. But Hikari could tell that something was bothering her. He made a mental note to talk to her later when they were alone. For now, he decided to focus on enjoying their time together with their friends. As Sayori and MC left and Hikari and Natsuki returned to Hayakir house, they saw Hikari's sister. So back from your ice cream date little bro. Hikari's sister said. Hikari chuckled, shaking his head. It wasn't a date, sis. Just hanging out with friends. His sister raised an eyebrow skeptically. Sure, sure. 
whatever you say, little bro. But you two do make a cute couple, she teased, grinning mischievously. Natsuki blushed and looked away, while Hikari rolled his eyes, unable to suppress a smile. It seemed like his sister was determined to keep teasing them about it. As they returned back to Hikari room, Hikari said something. I should probably take you out on real date someday. Hayakir said with a smirk. I mean you could have called today a date. Natsuki's cheeks flushed a deeper shade of red as she looked up at Hikari, a mixture of surprise and delight in her eyes. I id like that, she stammered, a shy smile tugging at the corners of her lips. And. Yeah, maybe today was kind of like a date, she admitted, her heart fluttering at the thought. Chapter 10 As Hikari woke up feeling groggy, he rubbed his eyes and stretched his arms, trying to shake off the lingering drowsiness. He glanced at the clock and realized it was time to start planning for the upcoming sports tournament at school. Hikari dragged himself out of bed and made his way to the kitchen, where he found his mother preparing breakfast. Good morning, Hikari, she greeted him with a warm smile. Are you ready for the tournament planning today? Hikari nodded, trying to muster up some enthusiasm. Yeah, I guess so. It's just. I feel like I could use a few more hours of sleep. His mother chuckled sympathetically. I know how you feel. But once you get going, I'm sure you'll feel more awake. As they sat down for breakfast, Hikari's mind began to shift gears, focusing on the tasks ahead. He knew he had to put his best foot forward to help organize the tournament smoothly. As then coming downstairs was Natsuki she also looked tired. Morning, Natsuki, Hikari greeted her, noticing her tired expression. Did you have trouble sleeping too? Natsuki yawned and nodded. Yeah, I couldn't seem to get comfortable last night. But I'll survive. Hikari chuckled sympathetically. I feel you. Hopefully, some breakfast will help wake us up. They all sat down to eat, exchanging small talk about their plans for the day and the upcoming tournament. Despite their fatigue, they were determined to make the most of the day ahead. You two didn't have sex yesterday did I mean your bot woke up tired? Hikari mom said in joking voice. If you did hope you use protection. Hikari and Natsuki blushed furiously, taken aback by the unexpected comment from Hikari's mom. And no, mom, it's not like that. Hikari stammered, his face turning bright red. Natsuki buried her face in her hands, embarrassed beyond belief. Yeah, definitely not, she mumbled, trying to hide her embarrassment. Hikari's mom laughed at their reactions, clearly enjoying teasing them. Well, just remember to be responsible, okay? The awkward moment passed, but Hikari and Natsuki couldn't shake off their embarrassment as they finished their breakfast. So Natsuki do you know what type of matches will be held this year for out school sport tournament? Hayakir says talking a bite out of his food. Because if so that will be great if not what are the thing held before? Natsuki shook her head, taking a sip of her juice before responding. I'm not sure, Hikari. I think they usually have a variety of events like relay races, obstacle courses, and maybe even some magic duels. It's been a while since I've been to one, though. Hikari nodded, swallowing his food before replying. Yeah, that sounds about right. I guess we'll find out once they announce the details. As they finished their breakfast, they both looked forward to the upcoming tournament, eager to see what challenges awaited them. After breakfast, Hikari and Natsuki headed out to school together, chatting about their plans for the day. I think we should practice some magic after school today, Hikari suggested. Especially since the tournament is coming up. We need to be prepared. Natsuki nodded in agreement. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I could use some more practice with my spells. As they approached the school gates, they noticed a group of students gathered around a notice board, reading the announcement for the upcoming tournament. Looks like they've posted the details, Hikari said, walking over to join the crowd. Natsuki followed him, peering over his shoulder to read the announcement. It says here that they're hosting a variety of events, including magic duels, obstacle courses, and even a scavenger hunt. Hikari's eyes lit up with excitement. That sounds awesome. We definitely need to start training right away. Natsuki grinned, feeling a surge of determination. 
Yeah, let's give it our all and show everyone what we're capable of. With renewed energy and determination, they headed into the school, ready to tackle the challenges that lay ahead in the upcoming tournament. Oh here is another what is a Quidditch. Natsuki said confused. If mean I guess it is different and seems new. Yeah it is new never heard of it. Another student said. Hikari overheard the conversation and chimed in, eager to share his knowledge. Quidditch is a sport from the Harry Potter series. It's played on flying broomsticks, and the objective is to score points by throwing a ball called the quaffle through hoops at either end of the field. There are also players called seekers who try to catch a small, golden ball called the golden snitch, which ends the game and earns their team a large number of points. Or that what Hikari wanted to say after all in this world Jerry Potter didn't exist so to them this is a whole new game or so he thought. As they enter their classroom ready to finish the day in school. Hikari and Natsuki entered their classroom, greeted by the usual buzz of students chatting and shuffling into their seats. Hikari couldn't help but feel a sense of familiarity mixed with the excitement of exploring this new world. Morning, Hikari said to a few classmates as they found their seats. Natsuki nodded in greeting, her eyes scanning the room curiously. So, what's on the agenda for today? She whispered to Hikari. Hikari shrugged. Not entirely sure. But I guess we'll find out soon enough. Just then, the teacher entered the room, signaling the start of another day of learning and discovery in their magical school. All right many of you may want to know what this Quidditch is correct I was told to explain to my class as well as the other teachers so let's start. The teacher said. Hikari's ears perked up at the mention of Quidditch. He glanced at Natsuki, a knowing smile playing on his lips. It seemed they were about to learn more about this intriguing sport. Quidditch is a fascinating sport, the teacher began, gesturing to a holographic display projected at the front of the classroom. It originated in the wizarding world and involves two teams of seven players each, flying on broomsticks. Natsuki leaned forward in her seat, her curiosity peaked. Flying on broomsticks. That sounds. Interesting, she whispered to Hikari. Hikari nodded, his attention fully captured by the teacher's explanation. He listened intently as the teacher described the various positions, rules, and objectives of Quidditch, feeling a growing excitement about the prospect of trying out this new sport. After the lesson, Hikari turned to Natsuki with a grin. Looks like we're in for some fun. What do you say we give Quidditch a try? He suggested. Natsuki returned his smile, her eyes sparkling with enthusiasm. Count me in. Let's see what this Quidditch is all about. Also be ready for our order event especially the magical duel. The teacher says. Also we need you Al to sigh some paper. Hikari exchanged a quick glance with Natsuki, their interest piqued by the mention of the magical duel. It sounded like an exciting opportunity to showcase their skills. As the teacher handed out the papers, Hikari took one and scanned through it, noting the details of the upcoming events and the requirements for participation. He quickly filled out the necessary information, his anticipation growing with each stroke of the pen. Natsuki sat beside him, her expression a mix of excitement and determination as she carefully read through the document and signed her name. Looks like we're all set, Hikari said handing the paper back to the teacher with a confident smile. Natsuki nodded, her eyes shining with anticipation. Can't wait to see what the magical duel has in store for us, she said, her voice brimming with excitement. With their names officially entered into the event, Hikari and Natsuki exchanged a determined glance, ready to give it their all when the time came. As the class ended and they went to the meet-up with the other in the literature club. Hikari and Natsuki made their way to the literature club, eager to share their experiences from the day and discuss the upcoming events. As they entered the club room, they were greeted by the familiar faces of their fellow club members. Sayori waved enthusiastically from her usual spot, while MC sat nearby, looking engrossed in a book. Hey, you too! Sayori exclaimed, her smile infectious. How was school today? Hikari grinned, excited to share the news. It was great. We learned about this new sport called Quidditch. Have you guys heard of it? MC looked up from his book, intrigued. Quidditch? That sounds interesting. What's it like? 
Natsuki chimed in, eager to share what she had learned. It's a game from a book series called Harry Potter. You fly on broomsticks and try to score points by throwing a ball through hoops. It sounds really fun. Sayori's eyes lit up with excitement. Wow, that sounds amazing. I'd love to try it sometime. As then Hikari mind then turned he then thought to himself. Harry Potter exists in this world how and why. He can't get his mind about a story or magic in a magical world being popular. Hikari's thoughts raced as he pondered the existence of Harry Potter in their world. How could a fictional story from his previous world exist here? It didn't make sense to him that a tale of magic could be popular in a world where magic was a reality. Lost in his thoughts, he glanced around the club room, wondering if anyone else shared his confusion. But the expressions on his friends' faces showed only curiosity and excitement about the prospect of trying out Quidditch. Shaking his head slightly, Hikari pushed aside his questions for the moment. Perhaps there was a logical explanation, or maybe it was simply a coincidence. Either way, he decided to focus on enjoying the new experiences and challenges that their magical world had to offer. After all, with friends like these by his side, anything was possible. So there is what six of us in this club we just need another member and we can be team for Quidditch. Hikari said looking at everyone. If that is okay. That sounds like a plan, Monica said, nodding in agreement. Having a full team would give us a better chance of success in the Quidditch tournament. Plus, it'll be fun to compete together. She glanced around the room, meeting the eyes of each club member in turn. Does anyone have any ideas on who we could recruit as our sixth member? Sayori raised her hand eagerly. I have a friend from my old school who might be interested. His name is Alex, and he's really into sports. I think he'd love to join us. Hikari smiled at Sayori's suggestion. Great idea, Sayori. Let's reach out to Alex and see if he's up for joining our Quidditch team. The more, the merrier. But don't we need someone from this school? MC said. I mean it is our tournament. Natsuki nodded in agreement. Yeah, it makes sense to have someone from our school on the team. Maybe we can ask around and see if anyone else is interested in joining. Hikari considered their options. You're right, MC. It would be ideal to have someone from our school on the team as well. Let's ask around and see if there's anyone who's up for it. I have some in mind his name is Alastor maybe I can ask him. Monica said, as the temperature in the room just went down a few meters. Hikari glanced at Monica, impressed by her suggestion. Alastor sounds like a good candidate. Let's see if he's interested in joining the team. It would be great to have him on board. As Monica left to talk to Alastor, the rest of the group discussed their strategy for the upcoming Quidditch tournament. I think we should focus on our individual strengths and try to coordinate our efforts during the matches, Hikari suggested. We each have unique abilities, so if we play to our strengths, we'll have a better chance of success. Yeah, I think that's a good approach. We can also practice specific plays and strategies to improve our teamwork. The others agreed, and they spent the rest of the meeting planning their training sessions and discussing potential tactics for the tournament. Let's see with the six member of the Our Club with this friend of Monica we have a full Quidditch team. Yuri says. Let's just home he agrees. As they waited for Monica to return with Alastor, the group couldn't help but feel a mix of excitement and nervousness. Having a full Quidditch team would greatly increase their chances of success in the tournament. I hope he agrees to join us, Sayori said, her eyes reflecting her optimism. It would be so much fun to play Quidditch together. Hikari nodded, a determined look on his face. Yeah, having Alastor on our team would definitely give us an edge. Let's just hope Monica can convince him. After a few tense moments, Monica returned with Alastor in tow. She wore a satisfied smile, indicating that her persuasive skills had been successful. Everyone, this is Alastor, Monica announced. He's agreed to join our Quidditch team. The group erupted into cheers and applause, relieved and excited that they now had a full team ready to compete. As Alastor entered the room, an unexpected but fitting soundtrack seemed to accompany his presence, filling the air with the eerie yet captivating melody of Insane from Hasbin Hotel. The group couldn't help but feel a mix of fascination and apprehension at the strange phenomenon. 
Pleasure to meet you too, Alastor, Hikari said, offering a handshake. We're really glad you've decided to join our Quidditch team. Alastor's smile widened as he shook Hikari's hand firmly. The pleasure is all mine. I've heard great things about your group, and I'm looking forward to being a part of it. With Alastor officially on board, the team felt more confident than ever about their chances in the upcoming tournament. Little did they know, their journey was about to become even more thrilling and unpredictable. So what type of magic do you use Alastor? MC asked. Alastor chuckled softly, his gaze shifting to MC. Ah, a curious inquiry indeed. I specialize in illusion magic, my dear fellow. It's a craft that allows me to manipulate perceptions and create fantastical scenes from the depths of the mind. His explanation intrigued the group, eliciting nods of understanding and fascination. Sounds like a valuable skill to have on our team, Sayori remarked, impressed by Alastor's magical expertise. With each member bringing their unique abilities to the table, the Literature Club's Quidditch team was shaping up to be a formidable force in the upcoming tournament. He's lying. Hikari said to Natsuki. He's lying about his magic. He says in whisper to her. Why is he lying then? Natsuki said to Hikari. Hikari shrugged slightly, keeping his voice low. Not sure, but we should be cautious. It could be for any number of reasons. Let's just keep an eye on him and see how things unfold. Pulso the music insane started to play the moment he walked in and his name Alastor at the same as the radio demon from Hasbin Hotel. Natsuki nodded, her eyes narrowing slightly. That's a bit suspicious, isn't it? We should definitely keep an eye on him. I hope you don't mind but I can I sing all of you a song. Alastor said. After all I am kinda a musician myself. He said as he was glaring at Hikari. Hikari felt a chill run down his spine as Alastor's gaze locked onto him. Uh, sure, I guess, he replied, trying to maintain his composure despite the uneasy feeling in the pit of his stomach. As everyone else also agrees, as Alastor started to sing the song in Zine from Hasbin Hotel, using his magic to give it a demonic and evil turn and creating images for it. Monica applauded enthusiastically, impressed by Alastor's performance. That was amazing. You have such a captivating presence and a powerful voice, she exclaimed, unable to contain her excitement. Yuri, taken aback by the dark and haunting lyrics, found herself drawn to the eerie atmosphere Alastor created. Your performance was intriguing. It's clear you have a talent for storytelling, she commented, her voice filled with curiosity. Sayori, though slightly unnerved by the sinister undertones of the song, couldn't help but admire Alastor's charisma and stage presence. Wow, that was intense. You really know how to command a room, she said, her eyes wide with awe. MC, impressed by Alastor's musical abilities, nodded in approval. That was quite the performance. You definitely have a unique style, he remarked, his tone respectful yet cautious. Natsuki, still skeptical of Alastor's intentions, couldn't deny the impact of his performance. I have to admit, that was pretty impressive. You definitely know how to captivate an audience, she said, her voice tinged with begrudging admiration. As Natsuki looked at Hikari he was scared. He looked at me all the time his eyes didn't even move from me. I have a bad feeling about him. He says to Natsuki loud enough only she can hear. Natsuki nodded in understanding, sharing Hikari's unease. Yeah, there's something off about him. We should keep an eye on him, she whispered back, her voice filled with concern. Let's stay cautious and see how things play out. Chapter 11 He 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 scares me, Alastor sacred me Natsuki. Hikari says in most sacred voice ever. Natsuki glanced at Hikari, noting the fear etched in his expression. I know, Hikari, she whispered back, her voice trembling slightly. There's something about him. Something unsettling. Hikari nodded, his gaze never leaving Natsuki, he was in his room hugging her tightly, he was not sacred behind anything. We need to be careful, Hikari said quietly. I don't trust him. I agree, Natsuki replied, her eyes darting around the room nervously. We can't let our guard down around him. Together, they silently resolved to keep a close watch on Alastor, 
determined to uncover the truth behind his mysterious aura. Still how are you this sacred you're a god? Natsuki said. This shouldn't scare you. It's not about being a god, Hikari replied, his voice barely above a whisper. It's about knowing when to be cautious. Even gods can face threats they don't fully understand. Natsuki nodded, understanding the gravity of the situation. I get it, she said softly. But we can't let fear control us. We have to figure out what Alaster's up to. With a determined nod, Hikari agreed. We'll stay vigilant, he said. And we'll protect our friends, no matter what. As they shared a solemn glance, a sense of resolve filled the air, driving them to confront the looming shadow of uncertainty that Alaster had cast over their world. Let tell you something the song he sang he was looking at me I can feel bloodlust and it was targeted all at me. Hikare said. He sacred me almost like how predator looks at its prey. That's unsettling, Natsuki said, her voice tinged with concern. We need to be careful around him. If he's targeting you, we have to figure out why and how to protect you. Hikari nodded grimly. Agreed. We'll have to keep a close eye on him and watch our backs. But we can't let fear consume us. We'll face this challenge together. As they exchanged determined looks, they both knew that the road ahead would be fraught with danger. But with their resolve strengthened, they were ready to confront whatever threats lay in their path. Can I keep hugging you I am still scared? Hikari said to Natsuki. Of course, Natsuki replied softly, wrapping her arms around Hikari. I'll stay with you. We'll get through this together. They held each other close, finding solace in each other's presence amidst the uncertainty and fear that lingered in the air. As they stood together, Natsuki gently stroked Hikari's back, trying to provide comfort. We'll figure this out, Hikari. Whatever it is, we'll face it together, she reassured him, her voice steady despite the unease she felt. Hikari nodded, his grip on Natsuki tightening slightly. Thanks, Natsuki. I don't know what I'd do without you, he admitted, his voice tinged with vulnerability. In that moment, they found strength in each other, a bond forged through shared fear and uncertainty. Though the presence of Alaster loomed ominously in their minds, they drew courage from the knowledge that they weren't alone. As they held each other, the minutes passed, and gradually, the tension began to ease. With a deep breath, Hikari pulled away slightly, his expression still serious but no longer overwhelmed by fear. Let's focus on finding out more about Alaster. We need to know what we're dealing with, he suggested, determination flickering in his eyes. Natsuki nodded in agreement, her resolve matching his. We'll be okay, Hikari. We'll face whatever comes our way, she affirmed, a sense of determination echoing in her voice. With newfound determination, they set out to uncover the truth behind Alaster and the ominous presence he brought with him. Though the path ahead was uncertain, they knew they would face it together, drawing strength from each other every step of the way. He scared me more than the first time I meet Monica, well Monica looks like you don't scare me anymore. Hikari though to himself. Hikari's thoughts raced as he grappled with the unsettling encounter with Alaster. Despite his previous fears of Monica, he now found himself comparing her to the chilling presence of the new arrival. It was a stark realization that shook him to his core. As he reflected on his past encounters, Hikari couldn't help but feel a sense of unease. While Monica had once instilled fear in him, her actions paled in comparison to the ominous aura emanating from Alaster. The prospect of facing such malevolence filled him with a deep-seated dread that he struggled to shake off. Yet, amidst the fear and uncertainty, Hikari found a glimmer of resilience. He refused to be paralyzed by his apprehensions, determined to confront whatever challenges lay ahead. With Natsuki by his side, he drew strength from their shared resolve, knowing that together, they could overcome even the most formidable adversaries. As he steeled himself for the trials to come, Hikari silently vowed to confront his fears head-on, refusing to be cowed by the darkness that lurked within the shadows. Meanwhile in a different place Alaster was with five other people in hoods. Alaster stood at the center of a dimly lit chamber, surrounded by five figures cloaked in shadow. Their hoods obscured their faces, lending an air of mystery to the clandestine gathering. Welcome, my esteemed colleagues, Alaster began, his voice carrying a sinister edge. 
Our plans are proceeding smoothly, thanks to your unwavering dedication and loyalty. The figures nodded in silent acknowledgement, their presence a testament to the formidable power they wielded. Our newest recruit shows promise, Alastair continued, a predatory gleam in his eyes. His potential for chaos and destruction knows no bounds. A low murmur rippled through the group, a mixture of anticipation and apprehension. Very soon, our influence will extend beyond the confines of this realm, Alastair declared, his voice resonating with authority. Together, we will reshape the fabric of reality itself, ushering in a new era of darkness and despair. With a chilling smile, Alastair raised his hand, signaling the beginning of their nefarious schemes. As the shadows closed in around them, the group dissolved into the darkness, their sinister intentions shrouded in secrecy. Don't speak like you're in the top Allah. One of the shadowy figures spoke seeming to be the leader. Alastair's smile faltered slightly at the challenge, but he quickly regained his composure, his demeanor oozing confidence. My apologies if I gave the impression of overstepping, Alastair replied smoothly, his tone dripping with charm. I assure you, I am well aware of our collective goals and the importance of each member's contribution. The leader's hooded gaze bore into Alastair, assessing his sincerity. After a tense moment, the figure inclined their head in acknowledgement. Very well, the leader conceded. Let us proceed with caution and ensure that our plans unfold according to our design. With a nod of agreement, Alastair and the other figures dispersed into the shadows, their alliance strengthened by the understanding that their ultimate objective lay just within reach. So how has the search for the one the Creator put in this world is going? Another of them spoke. It progresses, Alastair replied, his crimson eyes gleaming with anticipation. The pieces are falling into place, and soon, we shall unveil the truth behind this world and its enigmatic inhabitants. His companions nodded in silent agreement, their determination fueling their resolve to uncover the secrets that lay hidden within their reality. But if you want to know I found his name is Hikari and I'm pretty sure he already knows that he is a god. Alistair said. And I'm sure he doesn't have full mastery of his powers yet. Interesting, the leader mused, their voice shrouded in mystery. Keep a close eye on him. We cannot afford any missteps. The fate of our world depends on it. Alastair nodded in acknowledgement, his gaze unwavering as he prepared to delve deeper into the mysteries surrounding Hikari and his newfound powers. As the group of hooded figures dispersed, Alastair remained deep in thought, contemplating the implications of their conversation. He knew that Hikari held the key to unlocking a greater understanding of their world, and perhaps even altering its course. Back at Hikari's house, the atmosphere remained tense as Hikari and Natsuki grappled with the unsettling encounter with Alastair. Despite his fears, Hikari was determined to unravel the mysteries surrounding their enigmatic visitor and his connection to the world they inhabited. What do you think he is? Natsuki said. Is he another demon? She asked Hikari. Hikari pondered Natsuki's question for a moment, considering the possibilities. I'm not entirely sure, he admitted, his voice tinged with uncertainty. But there's definitely something. Off about him. His presence, his aura. It feels unlike anything I've encountered before. The best I can say he is he fells draconic. He says. Natsuki raised an eyebrow, intrigued by Hikari's observation. Draconic? Like a dragon? She asked, trying to grasp the concept. What makes you think that? Or he is someone that uses dragon magic. And for why I have no idea. It's like we're in the middle of some big mystery, Natsuki said, her voice tinged with both curiosity and unease. But I don't like being a part of it. It's too dangerous. But I will help in any way. She says. Pusu you're an idiot who got yourself into this. Natsuki says to Hikari. Hikari sighed, feeling both grateful and guilty for dragging Natsuki into this situation. I'm sorry for getting you involved, he said earnestly. But thank you for sticking by my side. We'll figure this out together. But of anything you're my idiot. Natsuki says that last part in her head. Hikari smiled softly at Natsuki's words, appreciating her unwavering support. Let's be each other's idiots then, he replied warmly, a sense of reassurance washing over him. Wait did I said that out loud? Natsuki said flustered. 
Hikari chuckled softly, shaking his head. No, you didn't. But I heard it loud and clear, he said, flashing a gentle smile at Natsuki. Natsuki's cheeks flushed even more as she realized Hikari had heard her thoughts. I I. Um, sorry, she stammered, feeling embarrassed. Don't worry about it, Hikari reassured her, placing a comforting hand on her shoulder. Let's just focus on figuring out what's going on with Alastor and those mysterious figures. Natsuki nodded, grateful for Hikari's understanding. Yeah, you're right, she said, mustering up her resolve. We'll figure this out together. As their lips met, a sense of warmth and reassurance washed over them both. In that moment, any fear or uncertainty seemed to melt away, replaced by a comforting connection between the two. It was a silent promise of support and solidarity as they faced the challenges ahead together. I love you Hikari. I love you too, Natsuki, Hikari whispered softly, his voice filled with genuine affection and warmth. They held each other tightly, finding solace in each other's embrace. They stayed locked in their embrace for a while, the world outside fading away as they cherished the moment together. Eventually, they pulled back slightly, their eyes meeting in a silent exchange of love and understanding. With a smile, Hikari gently brushed a strand of hair away from Natsuki's face. We'll figure this out together, Natsuki. Whatever challenges come our way, we'll face them together, he reassured her. Natsuki nodded, a sense of determination shining in her eyes as she squeezed his hand. Together, she echoed, her voice filled with unwavering resolve. Um did I interrupt? As they turned their head to see Hikari's sister. Bikas if so sorry. It's okay, sis, Hikari said, offering a reassuring smile. We were just. Talking. His sister chuckled knowingly. Well, make sure you don't talk all day. You've got things to do, right? She teased before leaving them alone again. Hikari and Natsuki exchanged a sheepish glance before sharing a laugh. Guess we should get going then, Hikari said, taking Natsuki's hand as they headed out, ready to face whatever challenges awaited them, together. As they walked together, Natsuki squeezed Hikari's hand gently, feeling a sense of comfort and reassurance. I'm glad we have each other, she said softly. Hikari smiled at her, his eyes reflecting warmth and affection. Me too, he replied, giving her hand a reassuring squeeze in return. With their bond growing stronger, they faced the uncertainties of the world with courage and determination, knowing that together, they could overcome any obstacle. Can we go somewhere? I want to visit someone. Natsuki finished what she had said. As they seemed to be next to a grave. Hi mother, it has been a while. Sorry for not visiting sooner. Hikari stood beside Natsuki silently, offering her support as she visited her mother's grave. Oh right, meet my boyfriend Hikari. She said. Hikari nodded respectfully, acknowledging Natsuki's introduction to her mother. Then they saw a spirit of Natsuki mother as she has a smile. Natsuki's heart swelled with a mix of emotions at the sight of her mother's spirit, but she couldn't help but smile back. Mom, this is Hikari, Natsuki introduced. He's been there for me through everything. Hikari nodded respectfully, feeling a sense of honor being introduced to Natsuki's mother, even in her spiritual form. Natsuki continued, her voice softer now, he's helped me find strength and happiness, even in the toughest times. The spirit of Natsuki's mother smiled warmly, her presence emanating a sense of comfort and understanding. As they stood by the grave, a gentle breeze rustled the leaves, as if in response to the mother's ethereal presence. Natsuki reached out, her fingers brushing against the air where her mother's form shimmered. I miss you, Natsuki whispered, her voice barely audible. But I know you're always with me, guiding me through life's challenges. Hikari placed a hand on Natsuki's shoulder, offering silent support as she communed with her mother's spirit. It was a solemn moment, filled with unspoken emotions and a sense of closure. As then they got up ready to they saw someone it was MC. MC approached them with a soft smile, sensing the somber atmosphere. Hey, I hope I'm not intruding. I just wanted to check on you both, he said gently. Natsuki looked up, her eyes glistening with unshed tears. No, you're not intruding, she replied, offering a small smile in return. Thank you for being here. 
MC nodded understandingly. Anytime. We're all here for each other, right? He said, his tone comforting. Hikari nodded, grateful for MC's presence. Yeah, that's right, he said, feeling a sense of camaraderie in their shared moment of remembrance. Plush, I have here to visit someone else well. As he goes to another grave this is my sister she died in 2008 her body was never found. Natsuki and Hikari exchanged solemn glances, understanding the weight of MC's loss. I'm so sorry to hear that, Natsuki said softly, her voice filled with empathy. Hikari nodded in agreement. Losing a loved one is never easy, he added, offering a supportive hand on MC's shoulder. MC managed a small smile, appreciating their understanding. Thank you, he said, his voice tinged with sadness. It means a lot to have friends who understand. Together, they stood in silence, each lost in their own thoughts, but finding solace in each other's company. Is it weird to think she is still alive even do it has been missing for so many years? MC says as tears coming out. I mean her body was never found. It's not weird at all, Natsuki replied gently, placing a comforting hand on MC's arm. Sometimes, hope is all we have to hold on to, even when the odds seem impossible. It's okay to keep hoping and believing, even in the face of uncertainty. Hikari nodded in agreement, understanding the power of hope in the darkest of times. As long as you hold on to that hope, she'll always be alive in your heart and memories, he reassured MC. Together, they stood by the graves, offering silent support to one another as they honored the memories of their lost loved ones. Chapter 12 Hikari and Natsuki returned home after visiting the graves, feeling a mix of emotions from their encounter with the spirits and the somber atmosphere of the cemetery. As they entered the house, they found Hikari's sister in the living room. Back so soon. Hikari's sister asked, noticing their return. Yeah, we just went to pay respects, Hikari replied, his thoughts still lingering on the encounter. Natsuki nodded silently, her mind still processing the experience. As they settled in, Hikari suggested, let's get ready for Quidditch training tomorrow. We need to be prepared for the tournament. Natsuki agreed, eager to focus on something positive after their visit to the cemetery. They spent the rest of the evening discussing strategies and practicing spells for the upcoming matches. The next day, they headed to Dagoba Beach, their usual training ground. The sun was shining brightly, casting a warm glow over the sandy terrain. We need to work on our teamwork and coordination, Hikari said, addressing the group. We can't afford any missteps during the tournament. The team nodded in agreement, ready to put in the effort to succeed. They spent hours practicing their flying skills, passing the quaffle, and perfecting their defensive and offensive maneuvers. Despite the intense training session, they enjoyed each other's company, laughing and encouraging one another along the way. As the sun began to set, they wrapped up their practice, feeling confident and prepared for the upcoming tournament. Great job, everyone, Hikari said, clapping his teammates on the back. Let's bring home the victory. Of all the places to train you guys chose this place. Monica said catching her breath. I mean the school allows us to train there. Monica's voice carried a tone of mild exasperation as she caught her breath from the training session. Yeah, but this place has a certain charm to it, don't you think? Hikari replied with a grin, gesturing to the open expanse of Dagoba Beach. Plus, it's quieter here. Fewer distractions, more focus, she added, wiping sweat from her brow. It's like our little slice of paradise, MC chimed in, taking a moment to appreciate the serene surroundings. Monica chuckled, acknowledging their points. Fair enough. Let's just hope all this hard work pays off in the tournament, she said, looking out at the horizon with determination in her eyes. With renewed determination, they resumed their training, each member of the team pushing themselves to their limits in preparation for the challenges ahead. Still, it is full with trash everywhere if this paradise I don't want to know what hell is like for you guys. Yuri says covering up her nose. I mean what can be worse than this? Yuri's observation about the trash strewn across the beach prompted a few nods of agreement from the group. Well, at least we're not training in an actual landfill, Hikari quipped, trying to lighten the mood. Natsuki wrinkled her nose in distaste. Let's just focus on the training and ignore the garbage. 
We have bigger things to worry about, like mastering our moves and strategies, she said, determinately picking up a quaffle to resume their practice. Despite the less than ideal conditions, they pressed on, their dedication to the sport outweighing any discomfort caused by the surroundings. With each pass, tackle, and maneuver, they honed their skills, preparing themselves to represent their school with pride in the upcoming tournament. Haha this is still fun. Alastor said. After all what fun will it be if not? Alastor's comment drew a few chuckles from the group, momentarily easing the tension. Right, we might as well make the best of it, Hikari agreed, flashing a grin. Besides, a little challenge never hurt anyone. With renewed energy, they continued their training, pushing themselves to improve with each passing minute. Despite the initial discomfort, the camaraderie and shared goal of victory strengthened their resolve, turning the beach into a place of determination and teamwork. Even though Hikari was still scared of Alastor, he tried his best not to show it. He focused on his training, channeling his fear into determination and pushing himself to excel. Deep down, though, the unease lingered, a constant reminder of the mysterious figure's unsettling presence. Alastor created opticals for us. Monica said. So far we have been doing flying training no more. That's impressive, Hikari remarked, trying to sound composed despite his lingering apprehension. Flying training sounds like a good start. We'll need to be agile and coordinated for the Quidditch tournament. As they continued their training, Hikari couldn't shake off the feeling of unease around Alastor. Despite his charming demeanor, there was something unsettling about him that Hikari couldn't quite put his finger on. Nevertheless, he remained focused on the task at hand, determined to improve their skills for the upcoming tournament. As they practiced flying and honed their Quidditch skills, Hikari couldn't help but notice Alastor's exceptional abilities. His maneuvers were precise, and he seemed to have a natural talent for the sport. However, Hikari remained wary of him, unable to shake the feeling that there was more to Alastor than met the eye. Meanwhile, Natsuki showed remarkable progress in controlling her magic, her spells becoming more precise and powerful with each attempt. She was determined to prove herself on the Quidditch field, eager to contribute to their team's success. Despite their initial apprehensions, the group began to bond over their shared goal of winning the tournament. They encouraged each other, offering support and guidance as they worked tirelessly to perfect their skills. As the day drew to a close, they left the training grounds feeling exhausted but satisfied with their progress. With the tournament fast approaching, they knew they had to continue training hard if they hoped to emerge victorious. Hey everyone I created a new magic wanna see it MC says. I would like to show everyone. As MC unveiled their new magic, the group gathered around, intrigued by what they were about to witness. With a wave of their hand, MC summoned a shimmering ball of light, which hovered in the air before them. This is my latest creation, MC explained. It's called Light Orb Magic. With it, I can illuminate dark spaces, blind opponents, and even create dazzling displays of light to dazzle and distract. The group watched in awe as MC manipulated the light, shaping it into intricate patterns and sending it dancing through the air. They applauded their friend's ingenuity and skill, impressed by the versatility of their new magic. Wow, that's amazing! Natsuki exclaimed, her eyes shining with admiration. I've never seen anything like it. Impressive indeed, Hikari remarked, nodding in approval. Your creativity knows no bounds, MC. With their new magic showcased and their bond strengthened, the group felt more confident than ever as they prepared for the upcoming Quidditch tournament. They knew that with their combined skills and determination, they stood a chance of emerging victorious. Also, there is another one. MC said. I call this hollow purple. MC said as in one arm fire magic came and the other water magic both combined. As MC unleashed their new magic, the group watched in astonishment as a swirling vortex of purple energy emerged from their outstretched hands. The hollow purple, as MC called it, crackled with power, emanating an otherworldly glow that illuminated the beach. With a focused expression, MC directed the energy towards the accumulated trash, and to everyone's amazement, the hollow purple began to disintegrate the litter with ease. Piece by piece, the garbage vanished, leaving behind a clean and pristine stretch of sand in its wake. Whoa, that's incredible! exclaimed Sayori, 
clapping her hands in excitement. You're like a one-person cleanup crew. That's so useful. Added Yuri, marveling at the efficiency of MC's magic. It's like having a magic vacuum cleaner. Natsuki nodded in agreement, impressed by the sheer power and utility of the hollow purple. That's definitely going to come in handy, she remarked. No more worrying about litter ruining our training sessions. Hikari observed the display with keen interest, noting the potential applications of MC's new magic. You've certainly outdone yourself, MC, he said with a smile. It's clear that your creativity knows no bounds. With the beach now pristine and their spirits lifted, the group resumed their training with renewed determination, confident in their abilities and united in their goal of victory in the upcoming Quidditch tournament. Meanwhile, Alastair was shocked. That spell if used against someone will probably eliminate them in one attack I need to tell the other. Alastair thought to himself. As Alastair observed MC's display of magic, a sense of unease settled over him. The sheer destructive potential of the hollow purple spell was evident, and he couldn't shake the feeling that such power wielded without caution could lead to disastrous consequences. Quietly excusing himself from the group, Alastair retreated to a secluded spot on the beach, his mind racing with thoughts. If MC were to use that spell against an opponent in the Quidditch tournament, the results could be catastrophic. It was imperative that he inform the others of the potential danger. Gathering his resolve, Alastair summoned a shimmering portal and stepped through, intent on finding the rest of the group and conveying his concerns before it was too late. With the fate of the tournament hanging in the balance, there was no time to waste. Not just that his shadow team need to know about this after MC can put a big problem in their plans. I definitely need to tell the group and leader about this. He said. I don't want our mission to get destroyed that easily. With a sense of urgency driving him forward, Alastair set off through the shadowy realm, his mind focused on the task at hand. As he traversed the darkened landscape, he couldn't shake the feeling of foreboding that clung to him like a shadow. Upon reaching the hidden stronghold of his shadow team, Alastair wasted no time in seeking out the leader, a figure shrouded in mystery and power. With measured words, he relayed his discovery of MC's potent new magic, emphasizing the threat it posed to their plans. The leader listened intently, their expression unreadable beneath the hood of their cloak. After a moment of contemplation, they nodded in acknowledgement, understanding the gravity of the situation. We must proceed with caution, the leader declared, their voice resonating with authority. The emergence of such a powerful spell changes the landscape of our mission. We cannot afford to underestimate our adversaries. With a renewed sense of purpose, Alastair and the Shadow Team began to strategize, devising contingency plans to counteract MC's formidable magic. In the looming shadows of uncertainty, they knew that their resolve would be tested like never before. But with unity and determination, they were prepared to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Meanwhile back with the Doki Doki group Hikari thought of something. Makes sense that the guy that has the nickname MC has such a powerful magic. He wonder and thought of something. Wait did he take the name form JJK wait does it exist in this world? I um MC I don't think you should use that magic in the tournament. Sayori said. I mean look what it did to the trash imagine what will do to a person. Sayori's concern resonated with Hikari as he glanced at MC, his thoughts aligning with hers. Yeah, she's right, he chimed in. That magic seems pretty intense. We wouldn't want anyone to get hurt during the tournament. MC nodded in understanding, recognizing the gravity of the situation. You're both right, he conceded. I'll stick to safer spells for the tournament. We don't want to cause any unnecessary harm. Harm no you will probably eliminate someone by that. Monica said. And if they didn't die will good by arms and legs. Monica's words echoed with gravity, further emphasizing the potential danger of MC's magic. She's right, Hikari added, his tone serious. We need to be careful not to cause any serious harm. It's a tournament, not a battlefield. MC nodded in agreement, a solemn expression crossing his face. You're both right, he admitted. I'll refrain from using that spell altogether during the tournament. We'll stick to safer techniques and strategies. With their decision made, the group resumed their training their focus now tempered by the need to prioritize safety and responsibility in their magical endeavors. 
Am I the only one who notices the similarities between the spell and something that someone with white hair and blue eyes will use? Yuri said. What why was that the first thing that came to mind? Yuri's observation prompted a moment of contemplation among the group. You're right, it does resemble some techniques used by certain characters, Hikari acknowledged, his mind flashing with images from various fictional worlds. But let's not dwell on that. Our priority is to refine our own skills and prepare for the tournament ahead. Yeah, let's focus on what we can control and leave the rest to fate, she suggested, eager to steer the conversation back to their training. With renewed determination, they continued their practice, determined to hone their abilities and work together as a cohesive team. JJK and Gojo. That why it looks like I have seen it before. Ah, that makes sense, Hikari nodded, acknowledging Natsuki's observation. It's like a homage to those characters' abilities. The mention of Jujutsu Kaisen sparked a brief discussion among them, with each member sharing their thoughts on the series and its impact on popular culture. Afterward, they returned their focus to their training, determined to make the most of their time before the tournament. As Alastair came back as Hikari saw him. Where have you been? You have been gone for ten minutes. I just had to attend to something, Alastair replied smoothly, concealing his true purpose. Don't worry about it. As they walked away ready to train Natsuki and Hikari looked at him. He is hiding something, isn't he? I mean who leaves like that? You're right. Hikari says. We still need to keep an eye on him. Yeah, we can't let our guard down, Hikari agreed, nodding. Let's stay alert. As training ended Hikari went to MC. So MC how did you create hollow purple did you just combine fire and water magic? Hayakir said. Or are there more to it? MC grinned, pleased to explain. It's a bit more than just combining fire and water magic. I had to infuse my own energy into the mix to create that unique effect. It's a technique I've been working on for a while. I see, Hikari nodded, intrigued. That's quite impressive. Just be careful with it, especially in the tournament. We don't want any accidents to happen. As then Hikari tried what MC said and instead, he created a white orb similar to that of hollow purple, purple orb. Hikari looked at the orb in surprise. Whoa, this is amazing, he exclaimed. Thanks for the tip, MC. Looks like we both have some powerful tricks up our sleeves for the tournament. As he then sent it out unlike destroyed trash like hollow purple it sucked it in like black or white hole in this case. That's incredible, MC exclaimed, watching the white orb in awe. It's like a vacuum spell. That could definitely come in handy during the tournament. That's amazing. Sayori chimed in, her eyes wide with excitement. With these new spells, we'll be unstoppable in the tournament. Yuri nodded in agreement. Indeed, these abilities will give us a significant advantage. We must continue to refine and master them before the competition. Monica added, yes, but let's make sure to use them responsibly. We don't want to cause any unnecessary harm to our opponents. Natsuki, looking impressed, said, I didn't know our magic could be so versatile. This opens up a whole new range of possibilities for us. Alastair, who had been observing quietly, simply nodded in approval. How about Void Sphere? Suggested MC. It captures the essence of its power to consume and nullify everything in its path. Yeah, that sounds cool and fitting. Hikari smiled. Void Sphere it is then. Thanks for the suggestion, MC. Chapter 13 Hikari and Natsuki were coming home from another day of training as rain was falling on them. Today was something. I men's who expected to start it to rain. As they walked, Hikari glanced at Natsuki, a smile tugging at the corner of his lips despite the rain soaking through his clothes. Yeah, unexpected, but kind of refreshing, don't you think? Adds a bit of adventure to the day. Yeah, it does, Natsuki agreed, brushing a stray strand of wet hair from her face. But I can't wait to get home and dry off. Maybe make some hot cocoa or something. Sounds like a plan, Hikari replied with a smile, pulling his jacket tighter around himself. Hot cocoa sounds perfect for a rainy day. As they approached their house, they noticed a small, 
drenched kitten huddled near the doorstep, mewing softly. Hikari and Natsuki exchanged glances, both immediately feeling a sense of concern for the tiny creature. Without hesitation, they hurried over to the kitten and scooped it up gently, shielding it from the rain with their jackets. Poor thing, it must be freezing, Natsuki said, her heart melting at the sight of the shivering kitten. Yeah, we can't just leave it out here, Hikari agreed, his voice filled with compassion as he stroked the kitten's wet fur. They brought the kitten inside and set it down on a towel to dry off. As it began to warm up, the kitten's mews turned into contented purrs, and it nuzzled against their hands gratefully. We can't keep it, right? Natsuki asked, torn between her desire to help the kitten and the practical considerations of their situation. Hikari hesitated, his gaze softening as he looked at the kitten. I don't know, Natsuki. It seems like it needs a home, and we have plenty of space here. Natsuki's eyes widened in surprise. Wait, you want to keep it? Hikari shrugged, a faint smile playing on his lips. Why not? It could be nice to have a pet around the house. Natsuki's heart swelled with warmth at Hikari's suggestion. Yeah, I guess you're right. Plus, it'll be fun to take care of it together. They shared a smile as they watched the kitten curl up in a cozy corner, already looking more comfortable and at home. I think we just adopted a new family member, Hikari said, his voice tinged with happiness. Natsuki nodded, feeling a surge of affection for both the kitten and Hikari. Yeah, and I think it's going to be the start of something wonderful. In the days that followed, Hikari and Natsuki doted on their new pet, whom they named Luna. They took turns feeding her, playing with her, and ensuring she had everything she needed to thrive. Luna seems to be settling in well, Natsuki observed one evening as Luna purred contentedly in her lap. Yeah, she's definitely made herself at home, Hikari agreed, smiling fondly at the playful kitten. Their bond with Luna only grew stronger with each passing day, and soon, she became an integral part of their lives. Whether they were studying, practicing magic, or simply relaxing at home, Luna was always there, bringing joy and warmth to their hearts. I'm glad we decided to keep her, Natsuki said one night as they cuddled on the couch, Luna nestled between them. Me too, Hikari replied, pressing a kiss to Natsuki's forehead. She's brought so much happiness into our lives. As they watched Luna drift off to sleep, her tiny chest rising and falling in a peaceful rhythm, Hikari and Natsuki knew that they had made the right decision. With Luna by their side, their home was filled with love, laughter, and endless possibilities. But she is more like you pet. Hayakir said it Natsuki. I mean she likes you more than me. Hey, Luna loves both of us equally, Natsuki protested, running her fingers through Luna's fur. She's just a little shy around you, that's all. Hikari chuckled, gently scratching behind Luna's ears. Maybe she just needs some time to warm up to me, he mused. But regardless, she's part of our family now, and that's all that matters. With Luna purring contentedly between them, Hikari and Natsuki shared a warm smile, grateful for the love and companionship their furry friend brought into their lives. All right let's talk about it. He moves his finger to Luna. You have noticed that this cat has magic which makes clones to magical animal a low level but a magical animal nonetheless. Natsuki nodded, intrigued. Yeah, I've noticed. It's like she's got some sort of duplication ability, but only with other magical creatures. It's pretty fascinating, actually. Hikari leaned in closer, his eyes gleaming with curiosity. Do you think she was born with it, or did something happen to her to give her this power? Natsuki shrugged. Hard to say. Maybe she's just special like that. But it does make her even more unique and lovable, doesn't it? Hikari smiled, reaching out to stroke Luna's soft fur. Definitely. She's our little magical mystery. So, um, how many days until the sport tournament? I kinda forgotten. It's in three days, Hikari replied, checking his calendar on his phone. Plenty of time for us to get ready and maybe even train Luna to join us in some way. As then Hikari checked the date again. Wait no it is next week. That is good for the team and us. Definitely, Hikari agreed, feeling the weight lift off his shoulders. We can use the extra time to fine-tune our strategies and make sure we're fully prepared for the tournament. 
He glanced at Natsuki with a playful grin. And maybe we can squeeze in some relaxation time too. Natsuki chuckled. Relaxation sounds good to me, she replied, leaning against Ikari. But first, let's focus on getting Luna settled in. She's going to need a cozy spot to call her own. Hikari nodded in agreement. You're right. Let's find her a comfortable spot, he said, scanning the room for the perfect place for Luna to rest. After some searching, they found a cozy corner near the window where Luna could bask in the sunlight. As Luna settled into her new spot, Natsuki fetched a soft blanket to make it even more comfortable. There you go, Luna, she said, gently arranging the blanket around the cat. I hope you like it here. Hikari watched with a smile as Natsuki pampered Luna. She seems to be enjoying it already, he remarked, admiring the bond between Natsuki and the magical cat. Yeah, she's like a little ray of sunshine, Natsuki replied, stroking Luna's fur affectionately. I'm glad we found her. With Luna settled in, Hikari and Natsuki spent the rest of the evening relaxing together, enjoying each other's company in the gentle sound of rain outside. As the next day arrives they seem to be in school, as the teacher walked in. As you know today is pet summoning day today you get to make a pack with magical anime. The teacher said. Remember the animal will match your personality students. Excitement rippled through the classroom as the students eagerly anticipated summoning their magical animal companions. Hikari and Natsuki exchanged glances, both curious about what creature would be drawn to them. The teacher distributed enchanted scrolls to each student, containing instructions for the summoning ritual. Remember to focus your intentions and let your magic guide you, she instructed before stepping back to observe. Hikari unfurled his scroll, his mind buzzing with anticipation. He closed his eyes, centering himself, and began the summoning chant written on the parchment. As he spoke the ancient words, a soft glow enveloped him, and a spectral form materialized before him. Natsuki, meanwhile, approached the summoning circle with a mix of excitement and nervousness. She followed the instructions carefully, channeling her magic into the ritual. With a flourish, she completed the chant, and a shimmering light appeared, gradually taking shape into a creature that seemed to radiate warmth and affection. As the classroom filled with the presence of magical animals, Hikari and Natsuki exchanged looks, eager to meet their new companions. As Natsuki opened her eyes she saw it was Luna. Natsuki's heart skipped a beat as she locked eyes with Luna, her beloved cat. A rush of emotion flooded her, filling her with warmth and comfort. Luna, with her sleek black fur and mesmerizing green eyes, purred softly as she padded towards Natsuki, rubbing against her leg affectionately. Tears of joy welled up in Natsuki's eyes as she knelt down to greet Luna, wrapping her arms around the feline. Luna, it's really you, she whispered, overcome with emotion. I've missed you so much. Luna nuzzled against Natsuki's cheek, emitting a soothing purr that seemed to convey understanding and reassurance. In that moment, Natsuki felt an unbreakable bond between them, stronger than ever before. With Luna by her side, Natsuki knew she would face any challenge with courage and determination. Together, they would conquer whatever lay ahead, united in their unwavering companionship. Um everyone looks at Hikari. As one of the students says. As the students look at him, as they saw next to Hikari was baby Hydra, each of his head a different color like that if the elements. The classroom fell silent as everyone's attention shifted to Hikari and the baby Hydra by his side. The tiny creature blinked its eyes innocently, its colorful head swaying gently as it regarded the curious students with interest. Hikari smiled proudly, reaching out to gently stroke the Hydra's scales. Meet Hydra, he introduced, his voice filled with warmth and affection. Each of its heads represents a different element, fire, water, earth, and air. The students exchanged excited whispers, marveling at the unique creature before them. Some leaned forward in their seats, eager to get a closer look, while others gasped in awe at the sight. Wow, that's amazing! One student exclaimed, his eyes wide with wonder. I've never seen anything like it. Hikari nodded, his expression reflecting the pride he felt for his unusual companion. Hydra is more than just a pet, he explained. It's a symbol of balance and harmony, embodying the elements in perfect unity. 
As the classroom buzzed with excitement, Hikari couldn't help but feel a sense of satisfaction. With Hydra by his side, he knew he was ready to face whatever challenges awaited him, confident in the bond they shared. That's so amazing. Also look who I got Hikari. As Hikari turned to see, he found Natsuki standing beside him with Luna, her magical cat companion. Luna purred contentedly as she rubbed against Natsuki's leg, her vibrant eyes gleaming with intelligence and affection. Wow, Luna! Hikari exclaimed, smiling as he reached out to pet the elegant feline. She's perfect for you, Natsuki. Just like you, she's full of energy and spunk. Natsuki beamed with pride, her eyes sparkling with happiness. Thanks, Hikari. She replied, her voice filled with gratitude. I knew Luna was the one as soon as I saw her. The other students gathered around, eager to admire Luna and Hydra up close. Some reached out to stroke Luna's soft fur, while others marveled at the sight of Hydra's colorful heads. It's like we have our own magical menagerie. One student exclaimed, grinning from ear to ear. Hikari nodded in agreement, his heart swelling with pride. With Luna and Hydra by their side, he knew that together, they were unstoppable. Wow really a cat? A random girl said. I mean you got a cat and Hikari got a dragon you really are weak Natsuki. Natsuki bristled at the girl's comment, her eyes narrowing with irritation. Hey, Luna may be small, but she's fierce, she retorted, her voice tinged with defiance. And besides, having a magical cat is way cooler than some oversized lizard. Luna let out a soft meow, as if echoing Natsuki's sentiment, and rubbed against her leg affectionately. Hikari stepped in, placing a reassuring hand on Natsuki's shoulder. Don't listen to her, Natsuki, he said, offering her a supportive smile. Luna is amazing, just like you. Natsuki's expression softened as she glanced at Hikari, gratitude shining in her eyes. Thanks, Hikari, she said, her voice filled with appreciation. The other students exchanged uneasy glances, sensing the tension in the air. Some murmured words of encouragement to Natsuki, while others simply nodded in agreement with Hikari's defense. With Hydra and Luna by their side, Hikari and Natsuki stood tall, unyielding in the face of doubt. They may have been an unlikely pair, but together, they were a force to be reckoned with. Uh, why do you stay with all the time? The same girl says again. Why does the school heartthrob stay with a weak girl like you Natsuki? As her friend and few students took her side, she was one of the popular girl and hated Hikari spending so much time with Natsuki. Natsuki's cheeks flushed with a mixture of embarrassment and anger at the girl's words. She opened her mouth to retort, but Hikari spoke before she could. Hikari stays with me because he's a good friend, Natsuki said firmly, her voice steady despite the turmoil within her. And I don't need anyone's approval to know my worth. Hikari nodded in agreement, his expression resolute as he stood beside Natsuki. Natsuki is one of the strongest people I know, he said, his voice unwavering. She's compassionate, talented, and fiercely independent. And I'm proud to call her my friend. The support from Hikari bolstered Natsuki's confidence, and she squared her shoulders, meeting the girl's gaze with determination. Despite the girl's attempts to undermine her, Natsuki refused to let her words break her spirit. The other students looked on, impressed by Natsuki's resilience and Hikari's unwavering support. Some whispered words of encouragement, while others simply nodded in silent agreement, recognizing the strength of their bond. And other students just agreed with the girl, these were just other girls or students who want to be close to the popular girl. Despite the murmurs of agreement from some students, Natsuki held her ground, refusing to let their opinions shake her resolve. She glanced at Hikari, finding reassurance in his supportive presence, and then turned back to the girl who had spoken. I don't need validation from anyone who judges others based on their popularity, Natsuki said, her voice steady despite the turmoil within her. True strength comes from kindness, empathy, and standing up for what's right. With those words, Natsuki and Hikari turned away, their heads held high as they walked confidently out of the classroom. Though the whispers continued behind them, they remained undeterred, knowing that their friendship and inner strength were more valuable than any fleeting popularity. Chapter 14 You know if that continued I think you would have told them our secret. Hayakir said. 
That one that we were dating but if did I wouldn't care. Hikari's words brought a small smile to Natsuki's face, grateful for his unwavering support. I wouldn't have let their words get to me, she replied. But it's nice to know that you wouldn't have minded if they found out. As they walked together, the weight of the confrontation lifted from their shoulders, replaced by a renewed sense of camaraderie and solidarity. They were ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead, strengthened by their bond and mutual trust. As they enter the club room need a place to cool off, as they found Yuri with her magical creator there. Hikari and Natsuki entered the club room, seeking refuge from the tension outside. Their eyes fell upon Yuri, engaged in conversation with her magical creature, a serene atmosphere enveloping them. Hey, Yuri, Hikari greeted, offering a warm smile. What's going on? Yuri glanced up, a gentle smile gracing her lips. Oh, we were just discussing some new spells, she replied, gesturing towards her magical companion. This little guy has been quite helpful. Natsuki nodded in acknowledgement, feeling a sense of calm wash over her in Yuri's presence. That's nice, she said softly. Mind if we hang out here for a bit? Yuri shook her head, motioning for them to take a seat. Of course not. You're always welcome here. As they settled into the familiar surroundings of the clubroom, the tension of the outside world faded away, replaced by a sense of peace and camaraderie among friends. So what is your magical creator? Yuri said. Let me introduce mine first. Natsuki nodded, intrigued by the conversation. Sure, go ahead, Yuri, she said, gesturing for her to continue. Yuri smiled warmly, her eyes alight with enthusiasm. This is Lumina, she said, indicating the ethereal being beside her. She's a manifestation of light magic, and she's been guiding me in honing my magical abilities. Lumina shimmered softly, emitting a gentle glow that bathed the room in a warm, comforting light. Natsuki couldn't help but feel a sense of wonder at the sight. That's amazing, Yuri, Hikari chimed in, his eyes sparkling with curiosity. I've never seen anything like it. Yuri nodded, a proud smile gracing her features. She's been a constant source of support and inspiration, she said. I couldn't have come this far without her. As they exchanged stories about their magical companions, the club room buzzed with excitement, each member sharing their unique experiences and forging deeper bonds of friendship in the process. So what is the name of your magical pets? Yuri said point at Luna and the baby Hydra. You did give them name right. Natsuki nodded, smiling proudly. Yes, this is Luna, she said, gesturing to the elegant black cat perched on her shoulder. And Hikari's Hydra is named Prism. Prism let out a playful chirp, its heads bobbing eagerly as if in greeting. Luna and Prism, Yuri repeated, a thoughtful expression on her face. Those are wonderful names. They suit them perfectly. Natsuki beamed at the compliment, feeling a swell of pride at the bond she shared with her magical companion. Luna purred contentedly, her tail flicking in response to the positive energy in the room. As they continued their conversation, the club members exchanged stories about their pets, sharing anecdotes and quirks that made each magical creature unique. In that moment, surrounded by friends and magical companions alike, Natsuki couldn't help but feel a sense of belonging and joy. So I am not the only with dragon. MC came in as he had a white dragon. I mean it would weird. That's amazing. Natsuki exclaimed, her eyes widening with excitement as she admired the elegant creature perched on MC's shoulder. Your dragon is beautiful. Prism let out a curious chirp, its heads tilting slightly as it examined the newcomer and his companion. It seems we have quite the collection of magical creatures in our club, Monica remarked, a smile playing on her lips. It's like our own little menagerie. As they chatted and admired each other's pets, the club members felt a sense of camaraderie and unity, bound together by their shared experiences and the magical beings that now graced their lives. Well looks like you love you to your nickname MC. Kadi said. First hollow purple and no a dragon after all a dragon is atlet seven layer higher and rare to get than Hydra. MC chuckled, scratching the scales of his dragon companion affectionately. I guess you could say that. But I think Luna here has already stolen Natsuki's heart. Natsuki blushed slightly, gently petting Luna as the cat purred contentedly. 
Yeah, she's my little companion now. Yuri smiled, her eyes gleaming with admiration. It's wonderful to see how everyone has formed bonds with their magical creatures. It's a testament to the strength of our connections. As they continued to converse, the atmosphere in the club room was filled with warmth and companionship, the presence of their magical pets adding an extra layer of enchantment to their shared experiences. So what did you guys get? Sayori said as she had a pet as well as it was Fox. His name is Sunny. As they all admired each other's magical pets, they couldn't help but feel a sense of unity among them. Each creature reflected its owner's personality, forging a deeper connection within the group. With the sport tournament approaching, they felt more prepared than ever, both magically and emotionally. Little did they know, challenges lay ahead that would test their bonds and abilities in ways they never imagined. As they discussed strategies for the upcoming tournament, Natsuki couldn't shake off the hurtful words from the popular girl earlier. Hikari noticed her unease and gently squeezed her hand, offering silent reassurance. Together, they vowed to prove their strength not just in magical abilities but also in resilience and friendship. Meanwhile, Alastair remained distant, his mind preoccupied with the information he had discovered about MC's powerful magic. With tensions brewing beneath the surface and the tournament drawing near, the Doki Doki Literature Club members braced themselves for whatever challenges lay ahead, knowing that their unity would be their greatest strength. As Monica walked at the club. So what did you guys get? My name is Crystal. Continuing the conversation, the club members shared their excitement over their new magical pets. Each pet seemed to reflect its owner's personality, bringing a sense of companionship and empowerment to the group. As they bonded over their newfound connections, they felt more prepared than ever to face the challenges of the upcoming tournament. Hikari, your hydra is amazing! exclaimed Sayori, marveling at the colorful heads of Hikari's magical companion. Yeah, it's pretty cool, Hikari replied with a grin. But Luna here is special too. She may not look like much, but she's got some tricks up her sleeve. Natsuki nodded in agreement, gently stroking Luna's fur. She may be small, but she's definitely got a big heart. As they admired each other's pets, a sense of camaraderie filled the room, strengthening their bond as a team. They were ready to take on whatever challenges lay ahead, together with their magical companions by their side. Hey what do you think Alastair got? I mens what will he get? I don't know, but it's bound to be something interesting, Hikari replied, his expression serious. We should keep an eye on him and his pet. We don't know what he's capable of. Hellhound. I was with him when he summoned it. Yeah, especially with the way he's been acting, Natsuki added, glancing around the room nervously. I don't trust him. You guys are overthinking it. I mean how can he be a bad guy? Hikari sighed, I hope you're right, Monica. But something about him just feels off. So, um about my void sphere. It does more than just suck things in. What else can it do? Natsuki asked, intrigued. It's not just a vacuum, Hikari explained. I can manipulate the energy absorbed by the sphere to create various effects. For example, I can convert it into a powerful burst of energy or use it defensively to create a shield. Or just do what MC does with hollow purple. Basically, it can suck and destroy from the inside. That's true, Hikari nodded. The possibilities are vast. I just need to practice more to fully harness its potential. As the discussion continued, Hikari and the others brainstormed different ways to utilize their magical creatures and abilities. They shared ideas, joked around, and bonded over their newfound companions. I wonder if we could incorporate our pets into our Quidditch strategy, MC mused. That's a great idea, Monica agreed. Perhaps Luna could scout ahead and provide aerial support. And Sunny could use his agility to distract the opposing team, Sayori suggested enthusiastically. Meanwhile, Natsuki pondered the implications of her cat's abilities. I think Luna's cloning magic could be incredibly useful. We could create decoys to confuse the other team. As they continued to brainstorm and plan, the excitement for the upcoming tournament grew palpable. They were determined to make the most of their newfound abilities and emerge victorious. As the discussion continued, Monica shared her plans for incorporating Crystal, her magical pet, into their Quidditch strategy. 
I think crystals like magic could be quite versatile, Monica suggested. She could create blinding flashes of light to disorient the opposing team or even illuminate the field during nighttime matches. Yuri, intrigued by the possibilities, nodded in agreement. That's an excellent idea. Crystal's abilities could provide a strategic advantage, especially in low visibility conditions. Meanwhile, MC shared his thoughts on his dragon companion's role in the team. I believe my dragon's strength and aerial prowess could be valuable in both offense and defense. With proper training, it could swoop in to intercept opponents or assist with scoring goals. Natsuki, impressed by MC's dragon, nodded in approval. Having a dragon on our side could definitely intimidate the other teams. It's a formidable asset to have. With each member contributing their ideas and insights, the Doki Doki Literature Club team felt more confident than ever about their chances in the upcoming tournament. They were ready to put their plans into action and showcase the full extent of their magical abilities on the Quidditch pitch. Quick question no offense Monica but what is Crystal? I mean Luna is a cat, MC has a dragon, Sunny is a fox, I have Hydra and Yuri had an entity made out of light energy. Monica smiled at Hikari's question, appreciating his curiosity. No offense taken, Hikari. Crystal is actually a sentient crystal that I summoned as my magical pet. It's attuned to light magic, and I believe it'll be a valuable asset to our team during the Quidditch tournament. Interesting choice, Hikari remarked, nodding thoughtfully. Having a sentient crystal on our team could provide some unique strategic advantages. He turned to the others. What about you, Sayori? How's Sunny adapting to his new surroundings? Sunny's been wonderful, Sayori beamed. He's so playful and energetic. I think he's enjoying being part of our club already. Natsuki chimed in, and Luna's been her usual independent self, but I can tell she's warming up to us. She's been following me around all day. I've been experimenting with my dragon, MC added. Trying to see what kind of magic he's attuned to. It's been fascinating. Yuri, thoughtful as ever, said, my entity seems to respond to my emotions. When I'm calm, it emits a soft glow, but when I'm focused or determined, it becomes more vibrant. Monica, petting Crystal affectionately, said, Crystal's been a calming presence. She radiates a sense of clarity and focus. I think she'll be a great asset to our team. Hikari nodded, pleased with everyone's responses. With our diverse range of magical pets, I think we're well prepared for whatever challenges lie ahead in the tournament. Are you ready Prism? Hikari said to his Hydra. As they prepared for their next challenge, Hikari and Prism focused their energy, ready to demonstrate their skills to the rest of the group. With determination in their eyes, they were prepared to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Anyway why did everyone come to the club when school had not even over? Monica said confused. Well, I had some free time between classes, so I thought it would be nice to spend it here, Sayori replied cheerfully. Plus, being in the club always puts me in a good mood. Yuri nodded in agreement. I find the club environment to be quite relaxing. It's a nice break from the stress of schoolwork, and I enjoy the company of everyone here. MC chimed in, saying, I wanted to see how everyone's pets were doing. Plus, I find it helpful to unwind and chat with you all before heading home for the day. Natsuki added, honestly, I just wanted to spend some time with you guys. This club feels like a second home, and it's nice to be surrounded by friends. Hikari simply shrugged. I'm here because I enjoy the company. And besides, it's always interesting to see what new developments or challenges arise within the club. You laid. Monica said to Hikari and Natsuki. Tell me what really happened. She already knew do younger future sight she was going to make that girl pay later she just needs them to tell the truth. Hikari exchanged a knowing glance with Natsuki before sighing. All right, you got us. We actually came here because we were feeling a bit overwhelmed by some comments from other students. We needed a safe space to talk and decompress. Yeah, some of the other students were saying pretty hurtful things, and we needed to clear our heads. The club always feels like a supportive environment where we can be ourselves. Who was it? The room goes down a few degrees as everyone can swear they saw MC eyes glowing red. Who was the one? 
Natsuki hesitated, glancing at Hikari for support before speaking up. It was. A group of girls from our class. They were saying some really mean things about us, especially about me. She clenched her fists, trying to keep her voice steady. But it's fine. We're used to it. Hikari sighed, feeling a surge of anger but trying to keep his composure. Yeah, they were just being petty. But we're not going to stoop to their level. He shot a glance at MC, his expression stern. We'll handle it our way. Fine then. MC says as he looks at them. But if it happens again I will make sure to deal with them. Monica nodded, her gaze steady. We'll deal with it together. We don't need to resort to violence, but we won't let anyone bully us either. Okay, um, what do you two mean by that? Sayori said. I just felt a chill dome my back. We mean that we'll stick up for each other, Monica clarified, her tone firm yet reassuring. Nobody should feel alone or threatened in our club. We're here for each other. Meanwhile back in Hikari and Natsuki class the students and the popular girl the bullied Natsuki just felt a chill of dash zero. As the atmosphere turned cold, the popular girl and her friends exchanged uneasy glances, sensing a shift in the dynamics of the classroom. They couldn't shake the feeling that something was about to change. What was that? The popular girl said. I mean what the was that? The popular girl's confident demeanor faltered, replaced by a hint of fear in her voice. She glanced around the classroom, seeking reassurance from her friends, but they too looked unsettled. It was as if an invisible force had swept through the room, leaving them all on edge. Chapter 15 Hikari was in his room it had been a few days since he and Natsuki got their summon animal prism and Luna. As Hikari sat in his room, he couldn't shake off the feeling of unease that had settled within him since their encounter with the popular girl and her friends. He glanced over at Luna, who was curled up peacefully on his bed, seemingly unaware of the tension in the air. Natsuki, Hikari called out, hoping to find solace in her presence. Do you ever get the feeling that something's not quite right? Like there's a storm brewing just beneath the surface? Natsuki looked up from her book, concern evident in her eyes. Yeah, I know what you mean, she replied softly. Ever since that incident with the popular girl, I've had this nagging feeling that things are about to get a lot more complicated. I can't shake off the feeling that we're being watched, like there's someone or something lurking in the shadows, waiting for the right moment to strike. Just then, they heard a knock on the door, interrupting their conversation. Hikari opened it to find Sayori standing there, a worried expression on her face. Hey, guys, Sayori said, stepping into the room. I couldn't help but overhear your conversation, and I have to say, I've been feeling the same way lately. It's like there's a dark cloud hanging over us, and I don't know how to make it go away. Hikari exchanged a knowing look with Natsuki before turning back to Sayori. We'll figure this out together, he said reassuringly. Whatever's out there, we'll face it head-on and come out stronger than ever. With renewed determination, the trio made a silent vow to unravel the mysteries surrounding their newfound powers and protect each other no matter what challenges lay ahead. Little did they know, their journey was far from over, and the true test of their strength and resilience was yet to come. So, um, quick question Sayori. Hikare said. Do you normal come into people house without telling them? Sayori chuckled nervously, scratching the back of her head. Well, I guess not usually, she admitted. But I had a feeling something was off, and I wanted to make sure you guys were okay. Hikari smiled, appreciating her concern. Thanks, Sayori. We're fine, just trying to make sense of everything that's been happening lately. Yeah, it's been a lot to take in, but having you here makes it a little easier to handle. Sayori beamed at them. I'm glad I could help, she said. And hey, if you ever need someone to talk to or just hang out with, I'm always here for you. With their bond strengthened by their shared experiences, the trio settled in for the evening, knowing that no matter what challenges they faced, they would always have each other's backs. After a while Sayori left back to her house only leaving Hikari, his family and his girlfriend Natsuki in their house. As Sayori bid her goodbyes and left, Hikari turned to Natsuki with a warm smile. It's just us now, he said, pulling her into a gentle embrace. I'm grateful for every moment we have together. 
Natsuki leaned into his embrace, feeling comforted by his presence. Me too, she murmured, resting her head against his chest. Even with everything going on, being with you makes it all feel more manageable. Hikari held her close, savoring the peaceful moment they shared. We'll get through this together, he promised, pressing a kiss to her forehead. No matter what challenges come our way, I'll always be here for you. With a sense of reassurance and love enveloping them, Hikari and Natsuki settled in for the night, grateful for the strength they found in each other's arms. Get a room you too. Hikari's sister said. Even I don't flirt so much with my boyfriend. Hikari and Natsuki chuckled, feeling slightly embarrassed but also amused by his sister's comment. Sorry about that, Hikari said with a sheepish grin. We'll try to keep it down. His sister rolled her eyes playfully. Just remember, there are other people in the house too, she teased before heading to her own room. Hikari and Natsuki shared a laugh, feeling grateful for the light-hearted moment amidst the chaos of their lives. As they settled in for the night, they couldn't help but feel thankful for the love and support they found in each other and their family. As they were in the bed Natsuki asked something. Do you think someone like Lucifer exists? I mean you're a god, we have seen a devil and things like hellhound exist. Hikari pondered Natsuki's question for a moment, considering the possibilities. It's hard to say, he replied thoughtfully. In the vastness of the universe, there could be beings of immense power and influence that we can't even imagine. Whether they're like the Lucifer of legend. I'm not sure. He reached out to hold Natsuki's hand, offering her reassurance. But what I do know is that we'll face whatever challenges come our way together. And if there are beings like that out there, we'll deal with them as we always have, with courage, strength, and love. Meanwhile in a different place a man with yellow hair, red eyes and wearing a white suit as he had that of two angelic wings as he was drinking. Interesting father put a god I'm this world. The man said. I wonder what will he do once he sees me. The man's words echoed ominously in the dimly lit room, his demeanor exuding confidence and intrigue. With a sly smile, he continued to contemplate the situation, swirling the liquid in his glass thoughtfully. I must admit, this adds a fascinating twist to the game, he murmured, his voice tinged with amusement. A god among mortals. How delightful. As he took another sip of his drink, his eyes gleamed with anticipation, relishing the prospect of encountering this newly revealed god. After all why should I go and give him a visit after all the gods of this world need to meet the devil himself? The man said drink the liquid. After all I am Lucifer Morningstar. Lucifer Morningstar, the name itself carried a weight of power and intrigue, known across realms for his cunning and charisma. As he leaned back in his chair, a confident smirk played on his lips, his mind already concocting plans and schemes. Ah, Hikari, my dear god, he mused, addressing the figure he intended to meet. I wonder how you'll react when you come face to face with the Prince of Darkness himself. With a chuckle, Lucifer raised his glass in a silent toast to the unfolding drama, eager to see how the divine and the diabolic would collide in this realm of mortals. And I wonder if he will join my underground fig thing ring. He says. Lucifer's mind danced with the possibilities of recruiting a god into his clandestine activities. The idea of adding a being of divine power to his underground fighting ring thrilled him, sparking visions of exhilarating battles and untold potential. With a god on my side, the matches would reach unprecedented heights, he mused, swirling the liquid in his glass thoughtfully. Oh, the entertainment we could provide. As he contemplated the potential outcomes, a devilish grin spread across Lucifer's face, his eyes alight with the anticipation of what was to come. Meanwhile back to Hikari he hugged Natsuki tighter not knowing why. Hikari's embrace tightened around Natsuki, a subconscious reaction driven by an instinctual need for closeness and protection. Though unaware of the thoughts swirling in Lucifer's mind, Hikari's actions were driven by an underlying sense of security and affection for his girlfriend. As he held her closer, a sense of warmth enveloped them, momentarily shielding them from the uncertainties of the world beyond their embrace. Hikari awoke to the gentle rays of the morning sun filtering through the curtains, casting a warm glow across the room. Stretching out his arms, he glanced at Natsuki still peacefully asleep beside him, her form bathed in the soft light. 
A sense of contentment washed over him as he realized how fortunate he was to have her by his side. With a smile, he leaned over to gently brush a strand of hair from her face, savoring the tranquility of the moment before starting the day anew. As then Natsuki spoke in her sleep. Ah harder Hikari. It is so big. Is she having a wet dreams about me? Hikari though to himself. Feeling a mix of amusement and embarrassment, Hikari couldn't help but chuckle softly at Natsuki's dream-induced words. Must be having an interesting dream, he mused to himself, trying not to disturb her slumber. As then he turned his head only to see that his sister was recording. Feeling his cheeks flush with embarrassment, Hikari quickly reached for the nearest pillow and threw it at his sister's phone, hoping to block the view. Hey, no recording allowed in here. He exclaimed, trying to maintain some semblance of privacy. Nope I am going to show you little girlfriend this. Hikari's sister said. I mean just imagine what her reaction will be. Realizing he had to act fast, Hikari lunged for his sister's phone, attempting to snatch it away before she could do any more damage. Give that back. He exclaimed, his face turning even redder with embarrassment. Hikari's sister held the phone out of his reach, laughing mischievously. Oh, this is too good to pass up. Natsuki's going to love this. Hikari persisted, trying to grab the phone from her grasp. Come on, sis, it's not funny. Give it to me. Their scuffle continued until Hikari managed to wrestle the phone from his sister's hand. Breathing heavily, he quickly deleted the incriminating video before handing the phone back to her. There, it's gone, he said, feeling a mix of relief and annoyance. Please, don't do something like that again. His sister grinned triumphantly. All right, all right, I won't. But that was hilarious. Hikari rolled his eyes, shaking his head in disbelief. Just go back to your room, okay? As his sister left, Hikari let out a sigh of relief, glad to have prevented any further embarrassment. What is with all the noise? Can't a girl just sleep? Hikari quickly turned to face Natsuki, trying to hide his embarrassment. Oh, it's nothing, just a little morning excitement. You know how it is. Natsuki raised an eyebrow, giving him a skeptical look. Morning excitement. Aha, uh -huh, sure. Well, as long as it's nothing serious. Yeah, nothing serious at all, Hikari replied, hoping she wouldn't press the matter further. Let's just get ready for the day, okay? As she rolled her eyes pushed him down to her label Natsuki was five. For Hikari was five. Eleven as then Natsuki gave him a kiss. Hikari chuckled, enjoying the playful gesture. All right, all right, I get it. No more teasing, I promise. He returned her kiss, feeling a surge of warmth between them. Let's make today a great one, okay? Sisyrusly why are you so tall Natsuki said. Of all the boys I could date I had to chose the tallest. Hikari laughed softly. Hey, being tall has its perks. I can reach stuff on the top shelf for you, remember? He gently ruffled her hair affectionately. Besides, it's not the height that matters, it's how we fit together. Natsuki smiled, blushing slightly at his words. Yeah, I guess you're right. I wouldn't trade you for anyone else, tall or not. She snuggled closer to him, feeling content in his arms. I'm just glad I have you. Can you two love bird just stop it? Lunch is getting cold. Hikari and Natsuki chuckled, getting up from the bed and heading downstairs for lunch, leaving Hikari's sister shaking her head but smiling at their affectionate banter. Do you think my chest will grow? She says. I mean what do you think? She was a B cup which was something when Monica and Yuri were D and E and even Sayori was C. Well, everyone's body develops differently, not Suki. Your chest might change over time, but it's not something you should worry about too much. Just focus on being healthy and happy. Hikari says to his girlfriend. That's a supportive and reassuring response, Hikari. It's important to prioritize self-confidence and well-being over specific physical attributes. Natsuki says with a smile. As before going done they kissed again. Chapter 16 As Hikari woke up one morning, he felt a strange sensation coursing through his body. It was as if something inside him was changing, growing stronger. 
What's wrong? Natsuki asked, noticing the perplexed look on his face. I don't know. I just feel different somehow, Hikari replied, trying to make sense of the sensation. As he got out of bed, Hikari noticed that his movements felt more fluid, more controlled than before. It was as if his body was responding to his thoughts with newfound agility. Maybe you're just getting better at controlling your powers, Natsuki suggested, wrapping her arms around him. Yeah, maybe. Hikari murmured, still lost in thought. Throughout the day, Hikari couldn't shake the feeling that something significant had changed within him. He felt more attuned to the magic coursing through the world around him, more in tune with his own abilities. During their training session, Hikari noticed that he was able to summon his powers more effortlessly than before. His spells were more precise, more potent, as if fueled by an unseen source of energy. What's gotten into you today? Natsuki asked, impressed by Hikari's newfound prowess. I'm not sure. But I feel like I've leveled up somehow, Hikari replied, a sense of excitement building within him. As the day drew to a close, Hikari couldn't help but feel grateful for whatever had caused this change within him. He knew that he still had much to learn and master, but for now, he was content in the knowledge that he was growing stronger with each passing day. And as he drifted off to sleep that night, Hikari couldn't help but wonder what other surprises awaited him on his journey of discovery and self-improvement. As then Hikari tried something as he then he can fell everything in the house. As Hikari focused his newfound senses, he felt a wave of energy wash over him, connecting him to everything within the house. He could sense the subtle vibrations of the walls, the gentle hum of electrical currents flowing through the wires, and even the faint echoes of footsteps from the floor above. It's like I can feel everything, Hikari murmured, awestruck by the depth of his perception. Natsuki watched in amazement as Hikari's eyes lit up with excitement. She could sense the incredible potential within him, a power waiting to be unleashed. What are you feeling? She asked, curious to know more about Hikari's newfound abilities. I can feel the energy of the house, the life pulsating within it, Hikari replied, his voice filled with wonder. It's like I'm connected to everything around me. As they stood there together, enveloped in the warmth of their home, Hikari couldn't help but marvel at the boundless possibilities that lay ahead. With each passing moment, he felt more alive, more attuned to the world around him. And as he embraced this new chapter in his journey, Hikari knew that he was ready to face whatever challenges came his way, armed with the strength and wisdom that came from within. What do you feel for me? Do tell me. Love and lost. Hikari says. And a lot of it. As Hikari spoke, Natsuki's heart skipped a beat. She had always been drawn to his enigmatic aura, but hearing his words stirred something deep within her soul. Love and loss, she repeated softly, her voice barely above a whisper. I guess that's part of being human, isn't it? We experience so many emotions, so many ups and downs, but it's what makes us who we are. She reached out and gently took Hikari's hand in hers, intertwining their fingers as they stood there together, united by the bonds of their shared experiences. And even though we may face challenges and hardships along the way, she continued, her eyes sparkling with determination, as long as we have each other, we can overcome anything. Hikari gazed into Natsuki's eyes, feeling a warmth spread through him at her words. In that moment, he knew that no matter what the future held, as long as they were together, they could weather any storm. And as they stood there, hand in hand, Hikari felt a sense of peace wash over him, knowing that their love would guide them through whatever trials lay ahead. Also another thing lust. Hikari says. You really. Natsuki's cheeks flushed crimson at Hikari's blunt words, a mixture of surprise and embarrassment washing over her. H. Hikari. She stammered, her voice cracking with disbelief. You can't just say things like that out of nowhere. But despite her flustered reaction, a small smile tugged at the corners of Natsuki's lips. Deep down, she knew that Hikari's honesty was one of the things she admired most about him, even if it did catch her off guard at times. Why you're not so bad yourself, she mumbled, averting her gaze slightly to hide her growing embarrassment. I, I mean, um, thanks. I think. As their laughter filled the room, Natsuki couldn't help but feel grateful for moments like these, where she could be herself around Hikari without any pretense or inhibition. 
And as she looked into his eyes, she knew that their bond was stronger than any fleeting embarrassment or awkwardness. You know I was wondering something, I have not been in my house for one week already and yet no Pollock reborn no missing poster no noting. Natsuki says. I guess my dad really does hate well that is a good thing I don't have to deal with him. Yeah, it's strange, Hikari replied, furrowing his brow in thought. But maybe it's for the best. At least you don't have to deal with any more drama from him. He reached out to gently squeeze Natsuki's hand, offering her a reassuring smile. You're better off without someone like that in your life. You deserve to be happy and free from all that negativity. Natsuki nodded, feeling a sense of relief wash over her. Despite the absence of her father, she knew that she had found a new family with Hikari and the others in the literature club. And in that moment, surrounded by warmth and understanding, she couldn't help but feel grateful for everything she had. As if the universe wanted to say you a portla open as in a messes was shown as it says to the god of this world Hikari it is time for your level up quest. Hikari and Natsuki exchanged bewildered glances as they stared at the swirling vortex before them. The sudden appearance of the portal left them both feeling a mix of curiosity and apprehension. What is this? Natsuki stammered, her voice tinged with uncertainty. Hikari furrowed his brow, trying to make sense of the unexpected development. I'm not sure, he admitted, his gaze fixed on the swirling mass of energy. But it seems like some sort of quest or challenge. As they watched, the portal seemed to beckon to them, its hypnotic swirls pulsating with an otherworldly glow. Despite their hesitation, there was an undeniable pull, a sense of destiny urging them forward. Well, whatever it is, we're in this together, Hikari said, his voice filled with determination. Turning to Natsuki, he offered her a reassuring smile. Let's find out what awaits us on the other side. With a shared nod of agreement, they stepped forward, their hands clasped tightly together as they braced themselves for whatever lay beyond the portal's shimmering veil. As Hikari entered, Natsuki was left outside not being able to enter, as Hikari could see her through the portal. Hikari's heart sank as he realized Natsuki couldn't join him on the other side. He reached out, his hand pressing against the barrier of the portal, his fingers tingling with the strange energy emanating from it. Natsuki. He called out, his voice echoing faintly through the swirling vortex. He could see her silhouette on the other side, her expression filled with concern and frustration. I can't come with you, she said, her voice barely audible over the crackling energy of the portal. But I'll be waiting for you here. Please, be careful. Hikari nodded, his resolve hardening as he turned his attention back to the portal's interior. Despite the uncertainty of what lay ahead, he knew he had to press on, for Natsuki's sake and for his own. I'll be back before you know it, he promised, his voice carrying a note of determination. With one final glance at Natsuki, he stepped fully into the portal, disappearing into the unknown depths beyond. As a holographic image of a man is shown as he was ready to explain what this is to the god. The holographic figure addressed Hikari with a voice that resonated with wisdom and authority. Greetings, Hikari, the figure began, its form flickering slightly as if composed of ethereal light. I am the guardian of the realms, tasked with guiding and overseeing those who venture beyond the mortal realm. Hikari listened intently, his curiosity piqued by the mysterious figure's words. You have been chosen for a special quest, one that will test your strength, courage, and resolve, the guardian continued. This is your level-up quest, an opportunity to unlock new powers and abilities that will aid you in your journey as a god. Hikari's heart quickened with anticipation as he realized the significance of this moment. He was about to embark on a trial that would shape his destiny and determine the course of his future. Are you ready to accept the challenge? The guardian asked, its luminous form glowing with anticipation. Hikari took a deep breath, steeling himself for the trials that lay ahead. With a nod of determination, he replied, I am ready. Good because there is four option which one do you pick fire, water, earth or air? The guardian said. Pick wisely young god. Hikari pondered the guardian's question carefully, weighing the implications of each choice. After a moment of contemplation, he spoke with conviction. I choose fire, Hikari declared, his voice steady and resolute. Fire represents passion, strength, and transformation. 
With its power, I will forge my path and overcome any obstacle that stands in my way. As Hikari found himself engulfed in flames and surrounded by lava, he took a moment to adjust to his new environment. The intense heat washed over him, but instead of feeling discomfort, he felt a surge of energy coursing through his veins. Embracing the fire within him, he began to explore this fiery realm, eager to discover what new abilities and challenges awaited him. You already know this place it is called the Nether from Minecraft so good luck. A blue box came and explained to him. With a sense of familiarity washing over him, Hikari realized that he had indeed been transported to the Nether, a realm known to many from the game Minecraft. Surrounded by the fiery landscape, he felt a mixture of excitement and determination as he prepared to embark on his level-up quest. With a nod of determination, he set off into the blazing depths of the Nether, ready to face whatever challenges awaited him. Navigating through the treacherous terrain, Hikari encountered various obstacles, from swarms of hostile creatures to treacherous lava pools. Drawing upon his newfound powers and abilities, he deftly navigated the dangers, his senses sharpened and instincts honed by the experience. As he ventured deeper into the nether, he came across ancient ruins and mysterious structures shrouded in darkness. Each step brought him closer to his goal, his determination unwavering despite the daunting challenges ahead. Along the way, Hikari encountered other travelers, some friendly and others hostile. Through alliances and battles alike, he forged his path, gaining valuable experience and insight with each encounter. With each trial overcome, Hikari felt himself growing stronger, his connection to the world deepening as he embraced his role as a god. As he pressed onward, he knew that the journey was far from over, but with each step, he drew closer to unlocking his true potential. Void Sphere Take that skeleton god damn this thing is becoming more like a black the more I get stronger. As Hikari unleashed the power of his void sphere, the surrounding darkness seemed to bend and twist, engulfing his enemies in its inky embrace. The skeleton before him disintegrated into nothingness, its bones crumbling to dust in the wake of his newfound strength. Feeling the surge of power coursing through him, Hikari marveled at the extent of his abilities. The void sphere, once a mere tool, now pulsed with raw energy, its blackened form a testament to his growing prowess. With a newfound sense of confidence, Hikari pressed onward, his gaze fixed on the challenges that lay ahead. As he journeyed deeper into the nether, he knew that he would need to harness every ounce of his strength and cunning to overcome the trials that awaited him. But with the void sphere at his command, there was little that could stand in his way. With each victory, he drew closer to unlocking the true extent of his godly power, ready to face whatever challenges the realm of Minecraft had to offer. Alright it has been three days here I wonder if time passes the same. Or is it different? As Hikari pondered the passage of time in this strange realm, he couldn't shake the feeling of disorientation that had settled over him. In the nether, where the very fabric of reality seemed to warp and twist, the concept of time felt fluid and unpredictable. Despite spending what felt like days traversing the fiery landscapes, Hikari couldn't be certain if the passage of time here mirrored that of the world he had left behind. Minutes stretched into hours, and hours into days, but without a reliable frame of reference, it was impossible to gauge the true extent of his journey. As he pressed onward, navigating the treacherous terrain of the nether, Hikari resolved to keep a closer eye on the passage of time. In a realm where even the most basic laws of physics seemed to falter, maintaining a sense of temporal awareness would be crucial to his survival. Chapter 17 Back with Natsuki she was locking at the clock it has been three hours already. As Natsuki anxiously watched the clock tick by, each passing minute felt like an eternity. With Hikari lost in the mysterious realm of the nether, her worry grew with every passing second. I hope you're okay, she murmured, her voice tinged with concern. And don't you dare die, you idiot, she added with a hint of frustration, though her underlying fear was palpable. Despite the uncertainty of Hikari's situation, Natsuki held on to hope, praying for his safe return. She couldn't shake the feeling of unease that had settled over her since he disappeared into the portal, but she refused to give in to despair. As she waited for any sign of his return, Natsuki could only cling to the hope that he would emerge from the nether unscathed. As Hikari approached the imposing castle, his determination burned bright within him. This was the moment he had been preparing for, the culmination of his journey through the treacherous realm of the nether. Blaze King, Skeleton Queen, he declared, 
his voice echoing with newfound confidence. Your reign of terror ends here. I, a god, have come to pass judgment upon you. He couldn't help but chuckle at the dramatic proclamation, acknowledging the inherent absurdity of his words. But beneath the surface bravado, Hikari felt a surge of determination coursing through him. He was ready to confront whatever challenges awaited him within the castle walls, fueled by his unwavering resolve to emerge victorious. With a deep breath, Hikari stepped forward, his eyes fixed on the towering gates of the castle. As he approached, the gates swung open with a creak, revealing the fiery interior of the fortress. Inside, the air crackled with energy as flames danced along the walls, casting eerie shadows across the chamber. Hikari tightened his grip on his staff, readying himself for the battle ahead. Suddenly, a burst of flames erupted before him, coalescing into the form of the Blaze King, a towering figure wreathed in fire. Beside him stood the skeleton queen, her skeletal form adorned with dark armor and wielding a wicked-looking bow. Hikari wasted no time, summoning his void sphere to shield himself from the searing heat. With a determined expression, he charged forward, staff ablaze with magical energy. The Blaze King roared, unleashing torrents of fire in Hikari's direction, while the skeleton queen peppered him with arrows from afar. Dodging and weaving through the onslaught, Hikari focused his powers, channeling them into devastating attacks. Bolts of dark energy lanced out from his staff, striking the Blaze King and Skeleton Queen with precision. With each strike, their forms flickered, weakened by the force of Hikari's onslaught. But the battle was far from over. The Blaze King retaliated with a blazing inferno, engulfing the chamber in flames. Undeterred, Hikari summoned his strength, pushing forward with unwavering resolve. As the clash raged on, Hikari's powers surged, fueled by his determination to emerge victorious. With each strike, he drew closer to vanquishing the Blaze King and Skeleton Queen, bringing an end to their tyrannical rule over the Nether. Prism I summon you. Hikari called out for his baby Hydra. And tides. As he summoned a giant amount I water magic. Prism I summon you. Hikari called out for his baby Hydra. And tides. As he summoned a giant amount I water magic. As Prism, his loyal baby Hydra, materialized beside him, Hikari felt a surge of reassurance. With a flick of his wrist, he commanded tides, conjuring a deluge of water magic that crashed over the Blaze King and Skeleton Queen. Caught off guard by the sudden onslaught, the Blaze King roared in frustration, his fiery form sizzling as the water doused his flames. The Skeleton Queen struggled to maintain her footing, her bones rattling as she fought against the torrent. Seizing the opportunity, Hikari launched himself into the fray, his staff crackling with energy as he unleashed a barrage of spells. Bolts of dark energy intertwined with arcs of water, striking the Blaze King and Skeleton Queen with relentless force. Prism, with its multiple heads, snapped and lashed out, sinking its fangs into the Blaze King's fiery form. The Skeleton Queen, unable to evade the relentless assault, found herself battered by the combined might of Hikari and his magical companions. Despite their ferocity, the Blaze King and Skeleton Queen refused to yield, their determination matched only by Hikari's own resolve. The battle raged on, each side pushing themselves to the brink in a desperate bid for victory. You may have pushed us but you will be the one it die. The Blaze King said. After all you haven't seen our full power. My husband is correct. The Skeleton Queen said. It is time we turn to our second form. As the Blaze King and Skeleton Queen spoke, a surge of dark energy enveloped them, their forms contorting and shifting as they underwent a sinister transformation. Flames danced around the Blaze King, intensifying into a searing inferno, while the Skeleton Queen's bones fused together, forming a monstrous skeletal colossus. Hikari, unfazed by their transformation, braced himself for the onslaught to come. With a steely resolve, he prepared to face their newfound power head-on, determined to emerge victorious and put an end to their reign of terror once and for all. As the Blaze King unleashed torrents of scorching flames and the Skeleton Queen swung her massive skeletal limbs, Hikari countered with his own formidable magic. With swift movements, he commanded Prism, his baby Hydra, to launch barrages of elemental attacks, utilizing both fire and water to create a chaotic symphony of destruction. With each clash, the battlefield trembled under the intensity of their powers. 
Hikari danced through the flames, dodging and weaving with unparalleled agility, while his adversary struggled to keep up with his relentless assault. Despite the odds stacked against him, Hikari remained resolute, drawing upon his newfound strength and determination to press forward. With each strike, he whittled away at the Blaze King and Skeleton Queen's defenses, steadily gaining the upper hand in the fierce battle. As the conflict raged on, Hikari's resolve only grew stronger, fueled by his unwavering determination to emerge victorious and bring an end to the Blaze King and Skeleton Queen's tyranny once and for all. Prism Poison Waterlighting Fighting All of that equals a big blast. As Prism unleashed the combined might of poison, water, lightning, and fire, a massive explosion engulfed the battlefield in a blinding cascade of energy. The Blaze King and Skeleton Queen were thrown back by the force of the blast, their forms writhing in agony as they struggled to withstand the onslaught. With their defenses weakened, Hikari seized the opportunity to press his advantage. Channeling his magic to its fullest extent, he unleashed a barrage of devastating attacks, each strike landing with pinpoint precision against his adversaries. As the battle reached its climax, Hikari's determination burned brighter than ever. With a final surge of power, he unleashed a flurry of blows that struck true, bringing the Blaze King and Skeleton Queen to their knees before him. With a triumphant roar, Hikari emerged victorious, his enemies vanquished and his quest for justice fulfilled. As the dust settled, he stood tall, a beacon of hope and strength in the face of darkness. As like all bosses they had another life as both of them they combined into another form. As the Blaze King and Skeleton Queen merged together, their forms twisting and contorting into a monstrous fusion of fire and bone, a new, more formidable adversary emerged before Hikari. With each step, the ground trembled beneath its feet, and its eyes blazed with an infernal fury. Undeterred, Hikari prepared himself for the final confrontation. Calling upon the full extent of his power, he summoned Prism to his side once more, ready to face this ultimate challenge head-on. Let's finish this, Hikari declared, his voice resolute as he braced himself for the battle ahead. With a determined glint in his eyes, he charged forward, ready to confront the fiery behemoth and put an end to its reign of terror once and for all. Void Sphere Full Power as he used the full power of his magic every drop of magic was used into this one the once white orb turned pure black. Take this my final attack. As Hikari unleashed the full power of his void sphere, the air crackled with energy, and darkness swirled around him like a tempest. The black orb expanded rapidly, growing larger and more ominous with each passing moment, until it reached its maximum size. With a mighty roar, Hikari hurled the void sphere towards the monstrous fusion before him, the sheer force of his attack tearing through the fabric of reality itself. The sphere hurtled through the air, leaving a trail of destruction in its wake as it barreled towards its target with unstoppable force. The Blaze King and Skeleton Queen could only watch in horror as the void sphere collided with them, engulfing them in its all-consuming darkness. The impact sent shockwaves rippling through the battlefield, shaking the very foundations of the castle as the force of Hikari's attack unleashed its devastating power. For a moment, the world seemed to hold its breath, as if time itself had come to a standstill. Then, with a deafening explosion, the darkness erupted outward in a blinding flash of light, illuminating the battlefield with an otherworldly brilliance. When the light finally faded, all that remained was a smoldering crater ere the Blaze King and Skeleton Queen had once stood. Their forms had been obliterated by the sheer force of Hikari's attack, leaving nothing behind but scorched earth and ash. Breathing heavily, Hikari surveyed the aftermath of the battle, his heart still pounding with adrenaline. Though weary from the fight, he felt a sense of triumph wash over him, knowing that he had emerged victorious against seemingly insurmountable odds. With a satisfied nod, Hikari turned and began to make his way back through the Nether, his resolve stronger than ever as he prepared to face whatever challenges lay ahead. That was something wasn't it Prism. Hikari said to Prism. God that was still epic right? Prism let out a series of excited hisses and growls, its multiple heads bobbing up and down in agreement. It seemed to share Hikari's excitement, its eyes gleaming with pride at their victory. Yeah, that was pretty amazing, Hikari said, a grin spreading across his face as he looked at his loyal companion. We make a great team, don't we? Prism let out a low rumble, its tail swishing back and forth in approval. Together, 
they had faced down formidable foes and emerged triumphant, proving the strength of their bond and the power of their combined abilities. With a sense of accomplishment and newfound confidence, Hikari continued on his journey, knowing that whatever challenges awaited him, he would face them head-on, with Prism by his side. I, 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 it was good. Prism said. It was good master. Wow you learned to talk Prism. Congratulations. Prism's heads bobbed up and down in excitement, each one showing a hint of pride at its newfound ability. Thank you, master, Prism said, the words coming out in a series of raspy growls and hisses. I have learned much from our adventures together. Hikari grinned, feeling a surge of pride at Prism's progress. You've come a long way, Prism. I'm proud of you. With Prism by his side and their bond stronger than ever, Hikari felt ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead on their journey. Together, they would continue to grow and learn, facing each new obstacle with courage and determination. As then two weapon comes out one was a jet black bow with it shaped almost like a crow as the other one was sword as it was blazing hot, as Hikari knew what these were. Will you look at that prism? Our rewards the raven bow of the skeleton queen and the sun sword of the blaze king. Prism nodded, its head swaying with a sense of approval. Impressive treasures, master, it rasped. Hikari examined the weapons, feeling their power resonate within him. These will serve us well, he said with a determined nod. With these in hand, we'll be unstoppable. As he grasped the raven bow and sun sword, he felt a surge of energy coursing through him. With Prism by his side and these powerful weapons in his arsenal, he knew that nothing could stand in their way. Together, they would continue their journey, facing whatever challenges awaited them with courage and strength. You know I will give the bow to Natsuki. Hikari said looking at it. I mean it will be my gift and I will keep the sword. That's a great idea, Prism replied, its heads bobbing in agreement. Natsuki will appreciate the gesture, and the bow's power will be in good hands. Hikari nodded, a smile forming on his lips. Yeah, she'll love it, he said. And with her wielding the raven bow, we'll be an even stronger team. With a sense of satisfaction, Hikari tucked the sun sword at his side, ready to continue their adventures with renewed determination. As then the guardian came as looked at Hikari with a smile. Congratulations on completing your quest, Hikari, the guardian said warmly. You've shown great courage and strength. Your journey as a god is just beginning, and I have no doubt you'll continue to grow and overcome any challenges that come your way. Hikari nodded, feeling a sense of pride and accomplishment. Thank you, he said. I'll do my best to live up to your expectations. With a final nod, the guardian disappeared, leaving Hikari and Prism to continue their journey together, stronger and more determined than ever before. As then he opens a portal opens as he walked back to his room as Natsuki was waiting for him. Hikari, you're back. Natsuki exclaimed, rushing over to him. Are you okay? What happened? Did you level up? Hikari smiled and nodded. Yeah, I did, he said, holding out the raven bow and the sun sword. And I brought back some rewards too. Natsuki's eyes widened in amazement as she took the bow in her hands. Wow, this is incredible. She exclaimed. Thank you, Hikari. I love it. Hikari grinned, feeling a sense of satisfaction at seeing Natsuki's happiness. I'm glad you like it, he said. And yeah, I'm okay. It was tough, but I managed to pull through. As they talked, Hikari couldn't help but feel grateful for having Natsuki by his side. With her support, he knew he could face any challenge that came his way. Also tomorrow is the sport tournament. So yeah let's get some rest. Definitely, Hikari agreed, nodding. We'll need all the energy we can get for the tournament tomorrow. With that, they headed off to bed, eager to rest up for the upcoming competition. As they drifted off to sleep, Hikari couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement and anticipation for the challenges that lay ahead. As in a different place MC was seen to walk out of the same portal Hikari did only difference he was at his house he looked like he walked out a jungle instead of a verizon of hell. As he looked around only to find Sayori MC was at his house. MC greeted Sayori with a smile. Hey, Sayori. I'm back. Did you miss me? 
Sayori's eyes widened in surprise. MC. You're back. I was getting worried. Where did you go? And what's with the jungle vibe? MC chuckled. It's a long story. I'll tell you all about it over dinner. I have a feeling we've got a lot to catch up on. Did you bring anything for me? Sayori said. Like another weapon like you always do when go through does dungeon you player. MC grinned. Of course, Sayori. I've got something special for you this time. He reached into his backpack and pulled out a beautifully crafted bow. Here you go, the bow of verdant growth. Perfect for an adventurer like you. Sayori's eyes sparkled with excitement as she took the bow. Wow, it's amazing. Thank you so much, MC. I can't wait to try it out. MC smiled. Just be careful with it. It's got some powerful magic infused into it. Now, let's get ready for dinner and I'll tell you all about my adventure. Little did Hikari and MC knew they bought when on the same question just one was in hell the other was in a jungle what will happen once is they find out about the other. Chapter 18 As Hikari woke he saw Natsuki was not with using his power, he felt that she on the bottom floor cooking with his mom, and she was making something special her special cupcake which Hikari loves to eat when she makes them. As Hikari made his way downstairs, the aroma of freshly baked cupcakes filled the air, making his stomach rumble with anticipation. He found Natsuki and his mom in the kitchen, chatting and laughing as they worked together. Morning, you two, Hikari greeted them with a smile. Good morning, Hikari. Natsuki exclaimed, turning to him with a bright grin. I'm making your favorite cupcakes for breakfast today. Hikari's eyes lit up with delight. That's amazing. Thank you, Natsuki. You really know how to make my day special. His mom chuckled softly. You two make such a lovely pair. It's wonderful to see you so happy together. As they enjoyed their breakfast of delicious cupcakes, they discussed the upcoming sports tournament and their plans for the day. Hikari couldn't help but feel grateful for the warmth and happiness that surrounded him, especially with Natsuki by his side. Hikari's sister rolled her eyes, clearly unimpressed by their affectionate display. Can you two not do this so early in the morning, she complained, her frustration evident. Why do you always have to be so lovey-dovey? Can't you save it for later? Hikari and Natsuki exchanged a glance, both stifling a laugh at her sister's grumpy demeanor. Sorry, sis, Hikari said with a grin. We'll tone it down. Natsuki nodded, trying to suppress her amusement. Yeah, sorry about that. We'll keep it to a minimum, she promised, though a mischievous glint danced in her eyes. Hikari's sister huffed in response, but there was a hint of amusement in her own expression. You better, she said, though her tone was teasing rather than annoyed. As they finished their breakfast and prepared for the tournament, Hikari's sister couldn't help but smile at the sight of their bond, even if it did annoy her sometimes. Deep down, she was glad to see her brother and his girlfriend so happy together. Got the sun sword. Natsuki said to Hikari. I got the raven bow here in my back so yeah I am ready. That's awesome. Hikari exclaimed, his eyes lighting up with excitement. You got the raven bow, and I have the sun sword. We make a pretty formidable team, don't we? Natsuki nodded, a determined expression on her face. Definitely, she agreed. With these weapons and our skills, we're going to dominate the tournament. Hikari grinned, feeling a surge of confidence. Absolutely, he replied. Let's show them what we're made of. As they headed to the tournament grounds, they were filled with anticipation for the challenges that lay ahead. With their newfound weapons and unwavering determination, they were ready to face whatever obstacles came their way. This school is more like the more I stay here. Hikari though to himself. I am surprised no dark wiser have attacked Yustjeet. Hikari's thoughts wandered as he made his way through the bustling school corridors. The air was charged with excitement as students prepared for the upcoming tournament. Yet, beneath the surface, he couldn't shake the feeling of unease. The school seemed to be a magnet for trouble, and he couldn't help but wonder when the next threat would arise. As Hikari and Natsuki got on the bus to take them to the tournament ground a huge dome arena. The bus rumbled along, carrying Hikari, Natsuki, 
and their fellow students to the tournament grounds. Excitement buzzed through the air as they neared the colossal dome-like arena where the competition would take place. Hikari glanced out the window, watching as the familiar sights of the city gave way to the sprawling fields surrounding the arena. Anticipation built within him as he imagined the challenges and rivalries that awaited them inside. As some of the students looked at Hikari and Natsuki and noticed their unique weapons, they looked at there and wonder where did their classmates get it from as some of students started to speak about the weapons the two had. Whispers rippled through the bus as students exchanged curious glances at Hikari and Natsuki's unique weapons. Speculation swirled about where they could have obtained such powerful and unusual gear, adding an air of mystery to the already charged atmosphere. Hikari and Natsuki exchanged knowing looks, acknowledging the attention their weapons were drawing. However, they remained tight-lipped, keeping the origins of their weapons to themselves as they focused on the upcoming tournament. Would you look at that they are taking about us? I mean will they believe it I said I literally got them from the nether from Minecraft. He said to Natsuki. Natsuki chuckled softly, shaking her head. I doubt anyone would believe that, Hikari. But it's kind of fun to let them wonder, isn't it? She glanced around at the other students, noticing their curious stares. Let them speculate. It adds a bit of excitement to the tournament. Meanwhile at a different bus MC was with Sayori as he was looking at the system he had, his system was called the level up system it did as its name he compares to a menwa he read but really didn't. MC glanced at his system, pondering its capabilities. Sayori, have you seen this system before? He asked, showing her the interface. It's like something out of a memoir I used to read, but it's real. I can level up and gain new abilities with it. He tapped on a few icons, exploring its features. Nope and so far only you and I can see it. But yeah it like that memoir you used to read. Right, it's like I've become the protagonist of my own story, MC chuckled, examining the system further. I wonder what kind of abilities I'll unlock next. Maybe I'll even find a way to control this power better. He glanced out the window, lost in thought as the bus continued on its route. I mean the nickname I gave is MC. Sayori said with a smile. I mean think about it. Yeah, it's fitting, MC agreed with a grin. Like I'm the main character of a game or something. He chuckled, imagining himself in various heroic scenarios. Exactly. Sayori giggled, nudging him playfully. You're like the hero on a grand adventure. So, what's next on your adventure today? Meanwhile, in another bus Monica was there she was reading her book ready to see the future some more after all this is kind of cheating in a way. Monica flipped through her book, her eyes scanning the pages as she delved into glimpses of what lay ahead. She couldn't help but feel a twinge of guilt for using her abilities to gain an advantage, but the temptation to know the future was too strong to resist. But why can't I see you? She said as she wrote Hikari and MC name. Why are you bow blanket? Monica furrowed her brow in frustration, puzzled by the mysterious barrier that prevented her from seeing the fates of Hikari and MC. Despite her considerable powers, there seemed to be an inexplicable veil shrouding their destinies. Perhaps their destinies are entwined with forces beyond even my comprehension, Monica mused aloud, tapping her pen against her chin. Or maybe there's a glitch in the code. No, that's impossible. This is all so intriguing. She leaned back in her seat, contemplating the enigma before her. Well, whatever the reason, it seems I'll have to unravel this mystery the old-fashioned way. Meanwhile back in the bus MC and Sayori had fallen asleep as MC system had a red light, sign danger. MC, sensing the danger, woke up abruptly, his eyes scanning the surroundings with a heightened sense of alertness. Sayori, wake up, he whispered urgently, nudging her gently. We might be in trouble. As then the system said that someone was trying to see into his future, system is doing all it can to stop it. MC's heart raced as he read the warning from his system. Someone's trying to see into my future, he muttered, his mind racing. We need to be careful. Stay close to me, Sayori. Sayori's eyes widened in alarm. Who would be trying to see into your future? She asked, her voice trembling slightly. Do you think it's one of the other students? Meanwhile back at Monica she had sneezing. That was weird. 
I didn't get a cold did I? As Monica rubbed her nose, she glanced around the bus, feeling a slight sense of unease. I wonder if someone's trying to interfere with my ability to see the future, she mused to herself, her mind racing with possibilities. Meanwhile back with Hikari while he was just seeing the window and waiting for the bus to arrive to its place. As Hikari gazed out the window, his mind wandered to the upcoming tournament and the challenges that lay ahead. He couldn't shake the feeling of anticipation mixed with a hint of nervousness, wondering what kind of opponents they would face and how they would fare in the competition. Lost in thought, Hikari couldn't help but reflect on how much had changed since he first arrived in this world. From discovering his powers to meeting Natsuki in the others, his journey had been filled with unexpected twists and turns. Yet, amidst all the challenges, he found solace in the companionship of his friends and the support they offered each other. As the bus rumbled on towards the tournament grounds, Hikari felt a sense of determination wash over him, ready to face whatever trials awaited them in the arena. And we are here. Finally. As she looked at the tournament grounds. Excitement bubbled within Hikari as he and Natsuki stepped off the bus, greeted by the bustling energy of the tournament grounds. The arena loomed large before them, a sprawling expanse of activity and anticipation. Hikari couldn't help but feel a surge of adrenaline coursing through his veins as he took in the sights and sounds of the event. It was finally time to put their training to the test and showcase their skills to the world. Hey guys. MC and Sayori said. Nice to see you guys aren't late. Hey, MC, Sayori. Hikari greeted them with a smile. Yeah, we made it just in time. Looks like everyone's ready for some action. He glanced around at the other competitors, feeling a mix of excitement and nerves building within him. As they walked closer to the tournament grounds, they started to see familiar faces from their school's sports club. Hey, Hikari. Natsuki. Called out a group of their teammates from the soccer team. Glad you could make it. We're counting on you to bring some firepower to the tournament. Yeah, good luck, you too. Added another member of the club, giving them a thumbs up. Hikari and Natsuki exchanged nods of acknowledgement and appreciation before moving further into the crowd. MC, Sayori, over here. Called out Monica, waving to them from a group of students gathered around her. Looks like we're all here. Ready to show everyone what we're made of. MC and Sayori joined them, exchanging greetings with Monica and the others. Hey, guys, MC said with a grin. Looks like it's going to be an exciting tournament. Yeah, can't wait to see what kind of competition we'll face, Sayori added, her eyes sparkling with anticipation. Together, the group of friends stood tall, ready to represent their school and give it their all in the upcoming tournament. Oh my I am not late. Alastot said. I mens we aren't late are we? As Yuri was behind him. Don't worry, Alastor, you're right on time, Yuri said with a reassuring smile. We still have some time before our first match. Yeah, we're all here and ready to go, added Alastor, looking around at the team. Let's make sure we're prepared for whatever comes our way. So um what is the first match does anyone have any answer? Sayori asked the group. Does anyone know? I believe our first match is against the Shadow Academy team, Monica replied. They're known for their agility and stealth tactics, so we need to be on our toes. Indeed, we must remain vigilant, Alastor added. But with our combined skills and teamwork, we should be able to handle whatever they throw at us. Plus so we just have to wait and see after all this something not just hosted by our school but a multi-school project. I mean have you seen the other buses from other schools? Yeah, there are so many teams participating, Natsuki remarked. It's going to be quite the competition. It's a great opportunity to showcase our skills and represent our school, Monica added. Let's make sure we give it our all. As then MC gets a quest, destroyed the other team no matter what Bones quests, destroyed or accidentally eliminate Hikari. As MC faces goes white to see the Bones part. MC's expression turned grim as he read the quest prompt. Destroy the other team no matter what. And accidentally eliminate Hikari? He muttered, his voice tinged with concern. That's extreme. Sayori glanced at him, noticing the change in his demeanor. Is everything okay, MC? 
MC hesitated for a moment before responding. Yeah. It's just. This quest. It's a bit. Intense. As Sayori look at as her blood also goes cold not at the team part but the one with Hikari. Sayori's eyes widened as she read the quest prompt over MC's shoulder. Accidentally eliminate Hikari. She echoed, her voice trembling slightly. That's. That's horrible. MC nodded, his expression grave yeah, it's pretty messed up. I don't like the sound of it at all. Sayori glanced around nervously, her mind racing with worry. We have to make sure nothing happens to Hikari. We can't let this quest come true. As then he saw the system, he sees that the quest to eliminate Hikari is bonus quests it can be ignored if the used wants it is not as mandatory as the main destroy the other team one. Relief flooded through MC as he read the system's clarification. Thank goodness, he murmured, a weight lifting off his shoulders. At least it's not mandatory. We definitely won't be going after Hikari, no matter what. Sayori nodded fervently, her expression still tense with worry. Absolutely. We'll focus on winning the tournament, but we won't harm Hikari in the process. We'll have to keep an eye out for anything suspicious, though. Meanwhile, both looked at Hikari as he was glaring dagger at them. MC and Sayori exchanged nervous glances, feeling Hikari's intense gaze. Um. Should we tell him about the quest?